Uh, come on, you must get shoes. So how much will it be? Oh, not now, Gail. We can't talk now. Why not? <laughs> Sarah, have you seen Mummy's hairbrush? No. I thought I saw you playing with it. You want me to deny? Well, find me purse then. Here you go. Why can't we talk about because it? Because this is a flaming madhouse, that's why. You never stopped us talking. <laughs> come on, David, come The repayments are going to cost us about, David. I don't know. The repayments on a 30 grand mortgage are going to be. Have you had enough then, eh? Well, go on, I'm listening. <laughs> Here's your purse. Can I have 20p for Christmas? No. Everyone gets crisps. Everybody but one. Well, go. Martin. Oh, well, I'm half a million a year. That's three pounds and 20p. Right, give your arms. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'll have it back. Thanks, Jim. There you go. I need, I need. Oh, for God's sake. Right. Come on, then, upstairs. There you go. So, how much will it be? I just sold you, haven't I? I mean, you said half a million. There's no need to be stupid. But I can't talk now, Gail, even if you can. Well, just tell me what the repayment will be. Well, it be. changes all the time. It depends on what you borrow, doesn't it? <clears throat> but if you borrow £30,000 over 30 years, it's going to cost us... Well, it's going to cost us 230 a month. Well, that's it, then. Why? Well, we can't afford it. Come on, David, just one. Well, we're paying 130 now, isn't Yes, it? and look at us. Where are we going to find another 100 from? Well, there are ways, you know. Oh, yes, you get a job, so we get childminders and babysitters, no. as well as paying 230 no. a month. Oh, if we only borrow 20,000 pounds, it means we only have to pay 20 quid more than we're paying now. Buy another house, you know? No, I mean, put a bigger deposit down on this one. Oh, yeah, you've got 20 grand in an old sock somewhere, haven't you? No, I haven't, but you have. Martin, not again. That money is for the kids and it's staying for... Well, this is for the kids. But who else is it for? Look, if we spend another five years here, that's getting on for, like, 8,000 quid down the sink. It's down the sink, Gail. We've got naff all to show for it. Oh, what good's that money in the bank, eh? <laughs> but, OK, you might make a bit of interest on it over five years, but you've still lost 8,000 quid in flaming rent. You've gained nothing. You buy that house, it's doing something. It's appreciating as much as it would in the bank, but it's actually doing something for you. Listen to me, Martin. What? It's for the kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. Oh! <laughs> Make some tea? Morning. Morning. Did you do a pot? Oh, no, sorry. It was just a, a bag and a mug. Oh, it's all right. I'll have coffee. You, uh, you busy today? Why? What? I said why. Well, I just thought you might fancy a trip down to Better Buys. Well, what do we need that you can't get? Besides, I've got a class at ten. Oh, so you're busy all day, then? Well, not all day. I'm going to get some time off for my lunch and a couple of hours this half, but I don't want to make better buys. Why, anyway? Nothing, nothing. It could be to your advantage, that's all. Oh, come on, Kelly, give me a break. What are you on about? Well, we need some staff. So? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, no, no, no. I, I'm certain that you'd get the job, you know. Just a bit of a formality. Interview with Reg Holdsworth, check out, but, uh... You can have the job. It's, uh, it's yours. Oh. So not only does Mr Wonderful bail me out by paying me rent, Mr Wonderful gets me a job to be sure he gets his money back. Oh, come on, Angie. I was just trying yeah, to help well, out. don't. Don't try anything. It's only over Christmas. Listen, I'm not beholden to you. I didn't ask you to pay my rent. If you're fool enough to throw your money about, that's your lookout. You poked your nose in where it wasn't wanted and you forced me to borrow from you. I wouldn't borrow from you in a month of Sundays and I wouldn't work for you if you paid me. Well, of course we'd pay you. That's the point. Well, well, no other cat's sicked up. Morning, lady boss. Back on board, are we? I've just popped by for a social call. Oh, it's terrible, you know. It's the worst thing in the world is a glass bag. Even the doctor, he, he said I should be off for a month, but I said no, no. No, I said, I don't want to leave that girl in the lurch any longer, I said. Give you a sick note today? Well, no, because I, I knew I'd be coming into work today and I didn't want to mess him about. He's a brew on me. Ten o'clock, Jacko. You start work at ten o'clock. Yeah, well, it all looks ship shape in there as if I'd never been away, doesn't it? Time for a brew before opening. Oi, hey. oi. Oh, oh. I was hoping you'd turn in today. Well, you would, I. Smiling face, helping hand. Exactly. And as it's gone ten o'clock, you can get yourself up them stairs and shift Alex wardrobe out of my bedroom. It's the small wardrobe. I've taken the clothes out so it's not too heavy. Bang it in the guest room. Wardrobes? Bet I cannot be lifting wardrobes with my back, love. Then what are you doing back here? We've no use for a cellar man who can't carry. Get yourself back to the doctors. Get a sick note. I'll find somebody to take over from you, don't you fret. Well, what... Face it, Jack. With your back, you're not going to be up to all that Christmas overtime. Just a small wardrobe, you say? Jack, with a back like yours, it could feel like a ton. I'll tell you what. 
I'll see how I go on, eh? Look, just imagine that's what I'm saying. And why do I have to imagine? That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> you were sat in your grotto, wearing your red cloak and your whiskers, and in comes a little girl or boy and says, I want a train set, right? What do you say? I said, have you any idea how much a train set costs? No, no. You mustn't bring cost into it. Of course I must. Kid thinks money grows on trees these days. All right. Let's say something cheaper, a dollar, say. Well? No, what will you say to that? I want a little dolly. What will you say? You deserve it. Have you been good? Ah. Yes, I have been good, and I do deserve it. <laughs> eh? Oh, no, no, this isn't me now. This is a little girl, a boy. A little girl, say, right now. <clears throat> yes, I have been good, and I do deserve it. <laughs> what do you say to that? You want your bumps felt? Oh, good grief! Tis a girl to sat on your knee. Are you going to say you want your bumps felt to a six-year-old girl? Of course I'm not. Well, then. Right, and let's try it again. I'm a little girl, I'm sat on your knee, I'm six, and I want a little dolly. What do you say to me? So one thing's one thing, and it's another. I don't be surprised if you end up with out. Oh, Percy, Percy! Right there is a store full of quality merchandise. Now, admittedly, most of it's not going to end up on a letter to Father Christmas. But that doesn't mean to say there aren't at least a hundred items that would make perfectly acceptable presents, right? Look, example, a little girl comes in and she says, I want a dolly. You don't sell dollies. So you say something like, ooh, that's nice, isn't it? But have you thought about a nice tin of family selected biscuits? Or if a little lad comes in and asks for a game of dragons and castles, you say to him, hey, fantastic. But you won't go far wrong with a jar of pickles. And a can of ham, you see? Creativity, Percy, that is what we want from Father Christmas, here. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Why, what's the matter now? I'm here to bring delight and wonder to little children, and all you want to do is sell them a jar of pittles. Oh, no, not no, Percy, Percy. You've said this yourself, haven't you? Train sets and dollies, they're expensive. Now, get these kids to ask for comestibles, and you're not only doing the parents a favour, you're in line for a nice little bonus in the bargain. Father Christmas's grotto. It's Mammon's lair. It's all about money, isn't it? Well, of course it's about money. It's Christmas, isn't it? Or haven't you noticed? Ah, morning, Mr. Sugden. Morning. So you're here to amaze the kiddies, then? Well, I thought I was. Now it's seen I've got to sit them on my knee and go through their pockets. Here. Show Percy the ropes, would you please, Mr. Watts? Have you seen the magic grotto, Percy? No. Oh, well, you like the magic grotto, Percy? With a bit of luck, you might disappear in it and all. Jack, we're short on tonics. So? So, fetch some up. Do you realise what I've been doing this morning? Listen, if it's something, it'll be a miracle. You were supposed to be on my side. Anyway, I started work here as a barman. Sell the man. Same thing. But you know what she's had me out this morning? Hey, I hope it's going to be clean, Jack. Furniture removing. I've just had a week off with my bad back mm. and she's got me straight into moving flaming wardrobes. Oh, She'd be lucky I'm not looking for compensation. Yeah. Who is? Um, I mean, you, you could have crippled me, you know. It's the same wardrobe I carried through this bar up them stairs when the delivery men left it on that front step. Ah, ah not with a bad back, no. Oh, no, you've got me there, Jacko. Back were fine. Just my leg I broke. Ah, go on, Mock. It's a good job I'm looking for sympathy, isn't it? I'd feel more sympathetic if you hadn't torn the wallpaper behind it. Now, that were already done. You're going to have to redecorate anyway, because there's a big white patch where it was stood and a big black ring round it. Mm, fag smoke, is that? It soaks right into wallpaper. Oh, it's disgusting. That's my bedroom you were talking about, mm. Betty. Nate, I'm sorry, no. Yeah, but I mean, it is disgusting. We're going to have to stop fagging it in bed. Oh, I don't know. It clears the tubes before you get in bed. You Any road, who knows a good decorator? Right, mate of mine. Down at the Legion, City Franchetti. I'm telling you, Betty, when he hangs paper, it looks like Chinese silk. Who knows a decorator who's not a mate of Jacko's? Well, man died a year last week. Oh, that's very nice. It's good old yellow pages, mm. then, isn't it? Yeah. Right, Tomic, seller, you, fetch. Right, tee up. What price loyalty, eh? Oh, you've got me there. Half has it gone up? Loyalty? I mean, look at us. Three weeks to Christmas, and we've hardly taken a bean this morning. I mean, for all the good you're doing, you might as well have stopped in bed at home. Oh, ho! Now it's all. Yeah, but go in any flaming supermarket, you'll find them stuffed to the gunnels. Oh, what? Strange. Oh. Hey, give me the Oh, what are you doing with this now? Morning, Al. Oh, morning, Emily. Morning. I think you qualify for a prize, you know, first customer of the day. 
A free Swiss roll for the lucky shopper. I'm surely not the first. Of course you're not, Emily. He's just feeling gloomy. Lonely, not gloomy. Oh. Well, here's something to make you smile. Guess who's playing Father Christmas? Who? Oh. Mr. Sugden. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'd like to see that. Oh, well, I'll pity them poor reindeer if they haven't polished their hooves. <laughs> it really is the funniest thing. I can almost imagine him inspecting the line of children before he lets them into his grotto. Oh, is he wearing the white beard and the red? Well, I assume so. Oh, 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 oh well, you've really cheered me up now, Emily. Oh. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Where's he doing it? The better buys is there now discussing it. Well done, Emily. Percy Sugden's working for better buys now. Half this blooming street's working for blooming better buys. There's Vic there's Ivy, there's Curly, there's Reg Flipping Oldsworth, and now Sugden. Well, that's it. I'm going to jack it all in. I'm going to work for better buys myself. Ah, well, look here, if it's Santa. Oh, yes, I suppose I've got to contend with you every day, haven't I? I hadn't thought of that. Well, at least you can have a laugh with me, can't you, Percy? Makes a change from Frosty Vase Demley, doesn't it? I'd thank you to take that remark back. And any others you've got about Mrs Bishop? Uh, you won't be seeing a lot of her, uh, Mr Sugden, because you'll be very busy in another part of the store, like we all will be. Yeah, but I won't be so busy that I can't come down there and sit on your knee. <laughs> Here, you should have this for your reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you, in a reputable store like this, can put up with that sort of thing. Well, no, no, we don't normally. That, that's just Vera. She's like as though she'd just been let out for the weekend. Well, don't you worry, Mr Sugden. I'll have a word. Now, I do hope you can pop in the store tomorrow for your costume fitting. Oh, well, if I have to. Right, and round this corner, Mr Sutton, big surprise. I hope you like it. A lot of time and effort went into this. Cos this is, wait for it, Wonderland! What do you think? You can get somebody else to wear this red cloak. Pardon? I made it very clear that I would not portray a character of Germanic origin. I'm here to play Father Christmas. And if Father Christmas is not good enough for you, I suggest you get yourself to Berlin. Perhaps you'll see Santa Claus driving his Volkswagen. <laughs> Not my decorator, shall Oh, aye. Yellow pages, eh? Yeah, well, somebody I remembered, but that's where I got the number from, yeah. Oh, good. Well, Ali could be pleased then, won't he? Will he? Well, coming back to his bedroom decorated. Is that too much milk for you? Yeah, fat does he know? Of course it doesn't. Oh, it's a surprise, is it? <laughs> surprise a shot, one or two. Oh. There you go, love. So, uh, sudden impulse, was it, to decorate? You're digging, aren't you, Betty? Some little brain cells are working overtime, aren't they, Flower? Why did you move Alex's wardrobe out? You haven't moved yours out? Cos I'm staying in the bedroom. Way, you're not moving him out, are you? You're not as green as your cabbage looking, are you, mm. Betty? If he thinks he can swan back here with a suntan and a brace of coconuts and pick up with me like he's been round to corner shop, he can think again. Sleeping in that spare room will concentrate his mind wonderfully. I hope you know what you're doing. I do, cock. He's not going to be pleased. You in a decorated bedroom and him in that other one. He's not meant to be pleased, Betty, love. Oh. Any road he'll have now to complain of. Huh? Spare rooms being decorated and all. Oh. On the one hand, it's Christmas, and Christmas is expensive, so the problem just gets worse. And on the other hand, it's Christmas, and there's plenty of jobs about, so I'm bound to sort something. I'm sorry about this, Rita. I'm sure something will turn. Oh. Have you got black tights or just these horrible tan things? There's black there as well, if you look. As a matter of fact, I got offered a job today. Oh, oh that's nice what for you. What is it? Oh, I didn't take it. It didn't feel appropriate. Oh. Uh, 75, love. What, what job? Serving in Curly's supermarket. Oh, I should think that would be a nice job over the Christmas period. Didn't you fancy it? Oh, come on, maybe. Serving in a flipping shop. Would you fancy it? Fancy it, but some of us have it to do. Yeah, well, this is different. This isn't some great anonymous money machine. This is a nice place. Well, I'm sorry I can't offer you a job, love. I wasn't fishing. Though, to be honest, if it had been anywhere but better buys, I'd have taken it. I don't want to feel beholden to Curly. Well, I can understand that. Well, I'm sure Curly doesn't want you to feel beholden mm. to him. Well, I'm not risking it. Okay, we share a house, but apart from that, we're entirely independent. 
If he had his way, we'd be living some boring middle-class marriage with net curtains and a pond in the garden. I'll see you. And we wouldn't want that, would we? That could be the end of the world. We might have to wear tan tights as well. Do you really want to move to Coronation Street? Well, now Ivy's moving out, yeah. I mean, Hammond Road's been good, but we are stuck out on a limb there. I've been near a work, kids have been near his school, Martin been near his mates, the shops, red wreck for the kids. So what's stopping you? Can't afford it. Girl, you can, and you know you can. Ma'am, I am not touching Brian's money. Oh, do you know, you make me so cross, Gail. It's not Brian's money. I mean, he's in the one place where money's no use. And what good's it doing you, thinking about him all the time? That's the point. I hardly think about him at all. He's gone from me in a way I never thought it'd be possible. I mean, well, he's still there for Nicky, I think. Well, I know he is, because Nicky still talks about him. Apart from that, the only solid thing that's left is that money. And I promised myself, well, I promised Brian, really, that it would be there for the kids when they got older and started to need it. Now, if it's spent now, there's sort of nothing left to Brian. <coughs> That's not right, ma'am. I know it's not right. And it's not fair on Brian. Listen, now, what would be unfair on Brian if you were to stop his kiddies benefiting from the money? But you see what I mean, ma'am. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying, love. It's just... money's for the living. Anyway, now's a good time to buy houses. With prices being so low, you mean? I mean, with Ivy up in sticks. Listen, when word gets round she's going, prices round here are set to double. <laughs> oh, I wish you'd give me a break, Angie. I've had a rotten day. Well, you will be captain of industry, Curly. You know, it'd be nice, really nice. Just, just once to come home, sit down, relax and have a chat. Like a married couple? No, like two adults. Look, I I'm sorry I paid your rent, Angie, and I'm sorry I upset you, but please, please, can we now forget it? No, we can't forget it, but I accept your apology, thank you. You're welcome. So why have you had such a rotten day, then? Oh, a hundred things, but mainly Percy Sugden. He seems to think that Santa Claus was a recruiting sergeant for the Hitler Youth. We're not even allowed to mention his name. It's Father Christmas or Nout. We've had to repaint his sign. Why Reg wanted to use him, God only knows. Maybe he feels sorry for him. <laughs> Reg Holdsworth doesn't feel sorry for anybody. He's only got three emotions. Gloom, ebullience and ecstasy. Oh, and begging his pardon, lust. Well, where would we be without that? Yeah, and I, uh, um, I got this as well. I thought you might fancy a drop uh, later on. Thanks all the same, Curly, but I'm going out. <laughs> well, well. Talk of the devil. Hello, Beth. Good to see you, Des. You're looking well. I could say the same for you, but that'd be smarmy, wouldn't it? I could cope. Now, uh, can I get you a drink or shall we get right down to business? Uh, no, uh, perhaps have a drink after, eh? Show me the worst. Evening, Betty. Long time no see. You remember Des, the decorator, don't you? Evening. In the pink still? Not a manager. Right. Come on through. It's the bedrooms. How are you doing? Huh? I've seen everything now. Who is he? I'm sure I know his face. He had a fling with her years ago. Oh, yes. yes. Des Foster. Oh, ended in tears. Oh, six or seven years ago. Oh, I'm glad I come in here tonight. Mm. Yeah, I just touch up a bit. Mm. Um. Some crisp. Oh, we had a plate of spaghetti an hour ago. So it's my pudding. Yeah, pudding as well. Mm. Comfort food. Uh, poor Martin. Mm, poor Martin. Undernourished. Underprivileged. Unemployed. Unintelligent. Huh? Under the thumb. <laughs> hey, you. Never had a packet of crisp poured down your neck. Oh, you hey? chair. Yeah, come here, come here. I liked it just the way it was there. Uh, that's the one. <laughs> I've changed my mind, Martin. What you do want these crisps pouring down your neck? About the money. What about it? Brian's money. 
I think you're right. I think we should use it as a deposit on Coronation Street. Hallelujah. Well, it's right, isn't it? Money's for the living, not for the dead. Be best for all of us. I like the sound of that one. I did a couple of years scaffolding, another couple putting up suspended ceilings, and then back to what I do best. And yeah, it's okay. I make a living. Can't ask more than that, can we? Well, we can. I frequently do. But do I get it? Do I, Heckers? So, what's it like being a landlady? It's better than being a skivvy. <laughs> Come up in the world, have we? Yeah, I suppose. But I think about it. Yeah, I'm settled. What I always wanted. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing like a good marriage. Oh, no, Ralph. What about you? Did you split up with your wife or did you patch it up again? No, that finished. That's what you told me seven years ago. Did I? You know you did. <laughs> I haven't seen her in five years. Anyway, decorating. Are you on? No problem. And if you like, seeing it's you, I'll put a lad on the job I'm on now and I can start as soon as you like. Hang on, hang on. We've not talked money yet. No, we have. Um, get a piece of paper, I'll work out some figures. What are you having? Problems, problems. I'll tell you what, I'll have a glass of red wine. It's no problem, a glass of red wine. Evening, Jack. Evening, son. I'll have a pint of lager and a glass of red wine for the little lady. Little lady, eh? Don't worry, Jack, he's just trying to wind me up, pretending he's a patronising git. When really I'm a right-on liberal with a conscience. When really you're a patronising git. It's a long time since anybody called me a little lady. Well, you won't ask yourself, are you little and are you a lady? It's a little bit strong, that person. I'm just telling you to ask yourself. I'm making no comment. And it's a long time since anybody bought me a drink. And uh, one more for this little lady, Jack, please. Right. Oh, you are the charmer. Oh, hello. What are you going to have? Oh, hello. No, thanks. Won't poison you, you know. No, I've, um, uh, I, just no. All right, suit yourself. I was going anyway. Oh, well, I. Oh, by the way, I saw you going to the Barlow's last night, but you knew that, didn't you? You're glad I saw you going in, weren't you? I didn't think about it. Oh, come on, you're enjoying it. A little bit of play acting. Well, play act all you like with Barlow, my love. And when you've had enough, I'll still be here in the real world. Get your drink, Cole. And there are no hidden extras, Ben. What you see is what you pay. Looks good to me. Right, uh, square it with your husband and uh, give us a call. I don't need to, Des. Those sort of decisions are down to me. Your court looks good, so as soon as you can, you're on. Don't mess about, do you? I don't mess about, Des. I hope you don't. Tomorrow morning. How about that for no messing? Smashing. What time? Eight o'clock. Oh, warn your husband. If he has a lion, he'll get stripped and pasted. No, he won't. He's on the other side of the world, is my husband. Right. I'll see you out. Oh. Yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Right, so if sandwich in the corner. He's got it. Oh, my, you're efficient this morning, aren't you? I told you I'm am. My, you're whirling dervish. You've got my energy levels in overdrive. Oh, well, that's younger men for you. Mind you, fun, isn't it? Fun? Listen, if we get this out, he's going to have to get a job. Who is going to look after the kid? Well, you could buy me out of this place and I'll look after it. Oh, yeah, ruin your social life. Oh, don't envy me that. I mean, last night was social till Mike Baldwin chipped in with his two pennies. What's he been saying? I know. It was Ken there. Oh, no, no, it's not me. Oh, I mean, Mike Baldwin only preys on low females, doesn't he? He went on about how he'd still be there when I finished dallying with Ken. You know, he worries me, girl. Right, get your coat, Mrs. Platt. Urgent business, I'm at half an hour at the most. Where's the kids? Uh, Paulie's got her now. Come on, get your coat. Yeah. Where are you taking her? Uh, top secret. I shall give you chapter and verse when we get back. Do you promise? Uh, scouts on her. Right, get your coat. What are you up to? <laughs> Come on, I'll get a move on and you'll find out. Oh, I told you, a whirling dervish. Right, you've got half an hour and your time starts. Now. Now. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the best you can, will you? They're not sent enough. I ordered a gross. They fobbed me off with a handful. So when we're writing here about her boyfriend, he's still carrying a torch for his ex-wife. Of course, you know what they do, don't you? I mean, they supply all the bigger outlets. Small traders like me can go to the wall for all they care. I think he 
sincere, though, don't you? Who is? Ken Barlow. I'm not talking about Ken Barlow. I'm talking about mincemeat. They've not sent me enough. But she's not said that she's serious about it. Then she wouldn't, would she? She's been too hurt, to be honest, as Alma. Well, does it matter? Friends matter, Alf. Stop caring and you lose them. Well, it's the same with customers and all. You don't have filling for their mince pies, you don't see them for dust. Oh, all right, Alf. You win. Let's talk mincemeat. I thought your grand entrance wasn't till two o'clock. Preparation makes perfect, Mrs Bishop. Gotto's not to my liking. And I'd have to have a talk with young Watts regarding the presentation. Oh, I'm sure Norman won't let you down. Not a matter of letting me down. It's the children that are important. It's got to be right for them. I mean, it's not every day they meet Father Christmas. You're so right, Mr Sugden. You'll do a wonderful job. I know you will. Right. Well, I'll be off. Yes. Bye. Bye. Hey, Mrs. Bishop, have you seen this? Kids see a bit of wall, they think they have to draw on it. Well, it's only chalk. Chalk today, aerosols tomorrow, discipline. That's the word they want to bring back to our cavalry. Yes, Mr. Sugden. There's no child too young to be taught how to behave. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye now. Bye, Mr. Sugden. Merry Christmas. Hello, nice to meet you. Right, it's okay now. He's gone. I thought for a second there he spotted your car. Who's that? Neighbourhood Snoop. We don't want the people opposite to know what we're up to. I mean, it was Martin's idea to come now. I prefer to view after dark. Hey, it's a good idea, this gale. Everyone's at work, aren't they? Uh, but you are interested in buying. Yeah. Yeah? Right, we're ready then, Mr Wormsley. Hey, don't forget, uh, no noise and stay away from the windows. You're not spies, are you? Spies? Well, sidling in the back way, all this cloak and dagger. The sort of precautions you'd take if you were after a safe house. <laughs> well, we don't want it to fall down, do we? Eh? Eh? Oh, no. Take some furnishing. A bit of snip at the price, Mrs. Platt. Uh, built by Morris Jones. Excellent reputation. Very reliable. Very dependable. Mm. Mm. Said that about his daughter. What did she say? Oh, it's just a cold. Don't worry about it. Romance has been spended, Alec. Oh, yeah. Brought her back here. She'd never looked back. She's happy now, though, bless her. The yeah, adult. Brought her back? I thought Bet was always here. Oh, she is. But, I mean, this was a holiday on her own, you see. But as soon as Alec found out about it, he took the first flight out there. He proposed over a candlelit dinner up a mountain. Took off again, though, hasn't he? Ah, oh, that's business. Oh, why didn't he take Bet with him? Oh, he begged her. I mean, he pleaded, but she said, no, I'd better stop here and take care of Alex's business interests. <laughs> Doesn't sound like the Bet I know. Used to know. But she's changed. Mind you, she can still tease the odd customer, you know, still. That's the barmaid in her, isn't it? But inside, a heart belongs to Alec. And the rest of her. Uh, Morning, Betty. Oh, uh, hello, lovey. Well, I better get up before she reports me to Ali. She tells him everything, you know. <laughs> Bye, Betty. Bye. I think I'm being warned off. Warned off? From what? From decorating. What do you think I meant? Thanks. No, Derek was saying last night how drab it looks. So oh, I'm glad that Bet's brightening it up for Christmas. Oh, no, love, she's only doing the upstairs. Oh, well, that's a pity. Mind you, typical of Alec Gilroy taking off, leaving Bet to do all the work. Oh, well, I might have to take off myself. I mean, you don't want to, but if this allergy flares up again, you've got no choice, have you? What allergy is that? Don't encourage him. It's something that came to me later in life, love. I, I, I got this terrible rash when I started doing our wallpaper. What cause is it? Oh, well, the doc, he said he, he couldn't pinpoint it. But it could have been the paint, the thinners, the paste I were using. Work. Did he mention work? Oh, 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 oh. Right, Ty, I've got a seller to see to. I'll see you. Good morning, Emily. Roger. Oh, I wish he hadn't said that. Oh, are we talking allergies? No, oh, I meant his ho, ho, ho. I felt guilty letting him out of the house this morning. Jack Duckworth, what was he doing in your house? No, Percy Love. Better buy his father Christmas. Oh. oh, Emily, be optimistic. He might surprise you. No, Rita. As a cook sergeant, he won the war, and as a lollipop man, he was Minister of Transport. <laughs> well, I don't see why you should feel responsible, Emily. I seem to remember that bright suggestion coming from elsewhere. 
Well, seemed like a good idea at the time. I mean, size of this, there's no room at all, is there? There's no room to whip a cat round. Come out that way. Good gracious, I mean, it's small, this place. Look, Mr. Sumter, we're a store. We sell groceries. This Sansa, oh, sorry, this Father Christmas idea, well, it, it's just a gesture. Like these puddings, mass produced. Look, if there's no more questions, I think it's time you got ready for the two o'clock opening. And whose idea was it, the crayons? They're just a token gift. Hey, they're non toxic. Hmm, I was going to tell the parents of little Willie when he's scribbling all over the sideboard. You should have called me in earlier. Mr. Oldsworth, I don't care how you dress him up. It, it won't work. He'll be sending kids home to polish the boat. Mm. No, no, have faith in Mr. Duckworth. Mr. Sutton is used to taking orders. I'm used to giving them. I've left him in no doubt as what is expected of him. Now he's in better by his employer. I'm telling you, the produce is no good without the packaging. You should know that working in this game. Look at Curly's face, eh? Looks as if it's been dishwashed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oldsworth! Mr. Sugden, there's no real sleigh. There's no real sleigh bells. And if you want a real reindeer, I suggest you go to our cooked meats department for venison. Look, I'm sorry, but we're doing our best. The pressure's getting to you, lad. You want to ease up a bit? He'll rule the day. Give over. He loves dressing up. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't wear his medals. I'm talking about Oldsworth. Percy will destroy him. Oh, I'm on my way. I don't want to miss Percy's big moment. <laughs> Oh, any news about Alec? Ah, still cruising last night, I heard. Lucky blighter. I don't know about that, Alf. Listen, uh, you think Percy is a bad choice of Father Christmas, right? Disastrous. Oh, there's some bad choosing going on round here, mate. What's that? Decorators. Yes, lovey. Here, I didn't see anything wrong with the decor when I was staying here. Oh, liquor paint, some fresh paper. Look a lot better for it. Bedside, dear, eh? <laughs> Crafty, am I? I'd like to see Alec's face when he gets back. Why did you say that? The surprise, Betty. The shock when he sees the bill. Oh, yes. I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, hi. Oh, that was the longest half hour of my oh, life. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, it was Gail's fault. It was my idea to go and view the house. Her idea to go to the building society. You've been where? Well. <laughs> <laughs> to sort out the money. She's looking good, Alan. Oh, Congratulations, I'm delighted for both of you. What did you do to change your oh, mind? Not a lot. It was a pushover, wasn't it? Oh, I? some pushover. You should have heard a raggling mm. over the price, I'm really quite embarrassing. Well, you can take it or leave it. Oh, what were you offering? Um, 38,000. They wanted 41. Mm. It's still a lot of money, though, isn't mm. it? No sweat, though. I married well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. Three teas to celebrate. Oh, no, do you mind if I do my celebrating elsewhere? Sure. Hey, can I tell your mum? <gasps> yes, but tell her not to broadcast it. She can tell Alf. Nobody else. Right, I'll stress that, don't worry. Look, I'll be back in uh, half an hour. And if you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. <clears throat> well, here's to Christmas. Number eight, got relations oh, We hope. Mm. By the time they've published in the press, all the jobs have been snapped up, haven't they? Well, what about designing? I mean, you are qualified, aren't you? Semi-qualified. No, I'm just gonna have to lower my sights and grab what I can. If I can. I'm sure Curly could do something to help. He's done quite enough, thank you. No, uh, can't spend my life being grateful, can I? Well, you can't spend your life out of a job either. You can be too proud, you know, Angie. The place needs doing up. He's doing it up, so what? It's who's doing it I'm on about. Look, why him of all people? And I want to know the truth. He's a good decorator. You're playing a very dangerous game and you're not going to kid me otherwise. What's dangerous about it? That's not be walking under his ladders. Go on. Joke all you like, you're not going to stop the gossip. Old flame arrives to do your upstairs. Keep it clean, Betty. Oh, stop kidding. What are people going to think? I'll tell you what they're going to think. The worst. More fool them. Anyway, the only one that's been jabbering on about it's you. You'd think I'd done a streak across the Red Wrecker Summit. <laughs> not started yet, has it? Any chance for pie or something? Oh, well, uh, I'll fetch you one off. Half Roberts just caught me in the ginnel. Talk about the third degree. How, why, what? And altered much, has he? <laughs> That's Alf. You know he's right. Bet? That chap? Decorator, maybe. Seen one, you've seen them all. 
me. One minute she's saying Martin's mad, the next minute she's agreeing with him and beating the part of the building society. It's going to be smashing having her and the kids so close. I could almost kiss Ivy for moving. Mm. Was she like that when she was with Brian? Like what? Well, you know, daring, willing to take a gamble. No, oh, she was a housewife with Brian. Not that I'm knocking him, you understand. Mm. It's just that he never gave her the freedom that Martin does. Well, well he's good for her, right, you know. Oh. I suppose it all boils down to respect, you know, seeing another person as an individual in their own right. I <laughs> mm, can't say I've had much of that. Oh, listen to... You've got it now with Ken. Oh, well. He's got you going to night school, hasn't he? Could you see Mike Baldwin doing that? Oh, come on, let's change the subject. I'm getting more of Oh, now, Alma, <laughs> listen. Ken is a good bloke. Why don't you tell him about my pestering you all the time? Get him to see him all. No, no, come on, just being melodramatic. I can handle it. Hey, come on, let's have another drink. Hey, Liz, sorry. I'd better get back. Paul, we're going to be doing the fruits. Just give her a bell for us, will you, Gail? So I'm on my way. Have you finished the washing up? You've been saving this lot for me, haven't you? No, I'm going before you find me some more. Oh, Martin. What? Are we doing the right thing? Of course we are. Look, what can we lose? Well, there's curtains, carpets, everything expensive. Well, the kids all love it without carpets. They can play football. But in these curtains, I thought Ivy was moving. <laughs> We're for it. Right, see you now. See you. Hi. Alma, about? No. Tell her you called. Uh, good news for her. I'm feeling generous. Generous? When are you expecting her back? She's just gone. Could be ages. Right. Treat myself to a cup of tea then. No, you're missing the point, Emily. It's how Holdsworth dropped on Sugden that Sam I'm on about. Well, I'm telling you I don't know. Oh, now, come on, stop pressuring. I mean, you're just jealous cos better buys have got a father Christmas than you are. No, no, it just makes me laugh who they've chosen, though. I mean, the kiddies had better get in there quick cos he won't be there tomorrow. Well, that would mean a lot of disappointed children, wouldn't it? Dreams destroyed, illusions shattered. Yeah, we'll blame Holdsworth. Mm, still, if that amuses you, Alf. I'm not saying it amuses me. But you might risk a giggle or two. No. Personally, I think it's a brave thing Mr. Sugden's taken on. He's a hero in my book. Well said, Emily. We're certainly more deserving of goodwill than gossip. Who's gossiping? What's got into her today? Uh, custard cream, Alf. You know, you can't talk to some people since when has conversation been gossiping? Custard cream. Custard creams. I... There's no call for that, you know. I mean, she knows as well as I that the Percy's going to be a bloody disaster. And I care just as much about them kids as she does. Well, of course you do. That's it these days, isn't it? You take a friendly interest and you're accused of gossiping. I bet that's what he thought as well. Did you change? That fellow that's doing the decorating of a bet. I mean, I haven't seen him for ages. I passed the time of day, he gave me a right haunted look. Well, why would he do that? Well, he thought of a prying, didn't he? Prying? Who? Des Foster. You know, ages ago, he used to knock about with Bet. Alf, you're gossiping again. <sighs> but go on. No, the thing is... Well, it's all systems go, Mr Watts. Yeah, yeah, uh, Percy is in the storeroom and he's waiting for a signal and um, I've done uh, a little poem, you know, by way of introduction. Oh, <laughs> splendid, splendid. Well, zero hour, Norman. Go to it. Right. I suppose you've got an age limit. Who gets in to see him? Don't be ridiculous, Mrs. Pierce. You want to spoil the sport. <laughs> right, attention, everybody. Attention, everybody, especially the little ones. Now, if you listen very, very carefully, you might hear something. Listen. Can you hear it? Now, who is it? Who is it? That's right, it's Father Christmas! And he's here today at Better Buys, your favourite store for bargains galore. So all the little ones now, put your hands together for... Father Christmas! My trip from Snowland is complete. I'm here, the friend you want to meet. So little children, see your play. Grown-ups too, a moment, pause. It's time to visit... Father Christmas. Forgot. <laughs> that last bit didn't rhyme. <laughs> yes, we know that, Mrs. Duckworth. <laughs> so if you'll just form an orderly queue, I'll get to see you all. Ah, oh, so you're going to be the first one, are you? I think she's scared of you, Grotto. Come on, Holly. Oh, no, you're not scared of Father Christmas, though, are you? With a lovely name like Holly. Oh, it's a lovely name. Come on, Mum. Me and Holly will show you around the grotto. There's not much room. Like my council house in Snowland, where I make all my toys. Mum said she about the house. She said she'd bring you to that. You didn't see him then? See who? Mike Baldwin? Just left? Oh, no. 
I've sat here 20 minutes waiting for you. He doesn't give up, does he? I've got nothing to say to him. I've read that crystal clear over and over again. Uh, yeah, but this was a bit of good news. Oh, what do you mean he's leaving the country? <laughs> he only wants to paint the cafe, doesn't he? Outside. No, Gail. Needs a facelift, Alma. Won't cost us a penny. No, I said no. Oh, why do you have to take everything so personal? It's the landlord. He's a right to do it if he wants to do it. And what, what about my right to be left alone? Well, what do you tell him? I told him we'd talk about it. Well, you've done that now and the answer's no. Are you forgetting that I'm a partner here? And you're forgetting that I am the senior partner, Gail. No. Well, there are doubters, of course, Norman. Those who believe my uh, judgment flawed. And I've always believed my ability to pick a winner has again carried the day. What about Samora? Oh, even more successful. You've seen the smiles, Norman. You've heard the comments. And him in there is as good as the real thing. Oh, yes. We're in with the big boys now. No doubt about that. High Street Giants, who had Santa Claus parachuting in during the summer holidays. <laughs> what? Oh, what about these Christmas puddings? Here? Well, we're not shifting them. We should have done what I said, stash them outside the exit rather than the entrance. Leave them there. We'll deal with them later. Mm. Right. <clears throat> Your little name's Joseph, isn't it? Hey, you've got nice little teeth, haven't you? Aren't they lovely? This little girl, she's got two missing. Now, all you'll have to do, you have to sing all I want for Christmas in my two front teeth, won't you? Now, be a good boy for your mummy and daddy, and you'll be a good girl for your mummy and daddy. And don't forget what I told you. Fast asleep on Christmas Eve, keep your eyes closed tight. Because if you stay awake, I've got to keep going out feeding my reindeers. I do. Anyway, there you are. Back of the crowns. And the same for you, loves. And do wait for me on Christmas Eve, and do like I told you, and be good for your mummy and daddy. Away you go, then. That's the way out, darlings. Bye. 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 Next for Father Christmas. Hello. Hello, and what's your name? Look at your whole life in front of you, and I don't get depressed. Well, if nobody wants me shoveling coal, who's going to give me a job when I finish college? You've not applied to shovel coal, sure, am I? No, I haven't, not yet. <laughs> but I might, if only to show Curly I'm not completely useless. What's it to do with him? Well, he's a man, isn't he? And I'm just a scatty female student with a head full of cotton wool. Uh, you're not, um, together, are you, you and Gail? No, why? No, 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 I didn't think you were. Me and Curly share the bills, Audrey. That's all. Oh, Hi! Hey, uh, could die a thirst in there. Jack ploughing a lone furrow, doing more grumbling than pint pulling. Give us four cans of lager, please, Audrey. Oh, I believe they've got the decorators in. Yeah, whatever it is, they're short-staffed. Oh, who? The Rovers. How much? Hey! Now, get yourself down there. There could be a job going. Barney. It's better than shoveling coal, isn't it? Go on, or you'll get my boot behind you. What do you think? Oh, what does he know? He's just a man. Get off. Good luck. <laughs> right, uh, 360, oh, please. Hope you're realising you put my uh, social life in jeopardy. I didn't know you had one. Yeah, well, I won't have one if she gets herself a night job. Oh, you mean you and... Yes, we're just good friends, Audrey. Oh, just think yourself lucky. Look, girlfriend on the doorstep. No more waiting for beer. Just think of all the money you're going to save. Kid you not, Councillor. Something's a start. Ah, uh, well, it won't last. Pipe, please, Jack. Only one pair of hands, Alf. There was never any doubt in my mind, Mr Sutton. Well, I can admit it now, Mrs uh, Bishop, but I didn't share your confidence. Didn't you? No, not at first, no. And then I decided on a strategy. Make it more of a family affair. Well, whatever you did, it worked. Mr Holdsworth's never been happier. Well, giving the kids a present, I thought, that's all right. But well, what about Mum? However, it worked like a dream when I started chucking my recipes in. Recipes? Yes, you know, for Christmas puddings and mince pies, all that sort of stuff. Oh, yes. When word of mouth gets busy, you can see the queue stretching past fruit and milk. Yeah, but while he's waffling, you're not selling, are you? Come on, Jack. Oh, there you are, Clark. Look, Liz is not in, Betty's not in. Last known sighting of Madame de Pompadour, she would look at a colour chart. Pint, did you say? Ah, no, three days ago. Jack. Look, you, you, you'll have to wait, love. The donkey's busy. Can I have a word with Bet? If you've got a magic lantern, yes. Alf, the bet has gone off. Oh, what do you have to do in this place to get a drink? Just bite your lip. I'll see if we can get Bet. Look, forget the bitter. Oh, yes. Another record-breaking yule for yours truly. Hey, you've got plenty of mince meat, I suppose, have you? Yes, we have, as a matter of fact. Why do you ask? Just shut up. In the cellar, I'll keep them talking. Put you out. Yeah, bitter along in a sec. What's what yours, love? It's OK, I want to work, but forget it, bad time. Hang on, love, it's a good time, is this? I'm only studying for Jacko. I want a job. You what? I want a job. 
must be a posh do. You done up like that. Well, it's a sort of Christmas review thing, you oh. know, brass band carols, one or two sketches, and it's my turn for front of house duty. Oh, well, you have it to do, I suppose. Actually, it's a very professional show. You want to get off to bring you along. Uh, I don't think school concerts are quite half thing. So you won't be seeing Arma tonight, then? Uh, school concerts aren't quite her thing, either. Well, how do you know? She might enjoy it. Yeah, perhaps. But then again, she might not. I'm not neglecting her, you know, Audrey. You're not protecting her, either. And what should I be protecting her? Not what, who? Can't, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Forget it, it's, it's not my business. No, but you seem to think it's mine. Well, it's him, isn't it? I mean, he ditches her and then he won't leave her alone. Baldwin. She doesn't encourage him, Ken. I mean, you know that. Ta da! Ask me to start at the pub tomorrow? Oh! That's great. Thanks to a certain party threatening to put a boot behind me. Well, I told you, didn't I? I did it just like you said. Just bowled in there and blurted it out. I want a job. It's no good sitting on your backside, love. I'm telling you. Now, if you want something, you have to say so. Otherwise, somebody else will just go in there and beat you to it. Oh, thanks, Audrey. Uh, one sausage and egg, one bacon egg and two teas. Hey, you don't mind if I nip off this afternoon, do you, Alma? It's just the kids are driving us mad to see the new house. No, no, no problem. Right, one meat on toast, one tea. Do you know what I think of what you've done since last year? I mean, it makes me blush with shame, it does, really. How many teas? Two. Yeah. Well, what have I done? Well, I mean, we've had a baby, got married, nearly moved into a new house. I mean, what have I done from last Christmas to this? Got done, stayed put, added a few lines, a few wrinkles. All you've got to look forward to is your bus pass. <laughs> Have you no sympathy? Well, own boss, unattached, attractive, a couple of swains in town. No, no, love. I can. Oh. Perfect timing. Watch it with pleasure. <laughs> Give us kidneys, ketchup. Uh, no, thanks. No, I'm on my way to school. Well, it's just as well because we haven't got any. Oh, she gets carried away. Eh? She'll be wanting silver chafing dishes next. Why not? <laughs> as long as you clean. Oh, she's a bit frisky this morning. She might be getting some good news. Um, could we have a few words in private? Why, is something wrong? Uh, no, no, but I think there's something we should get straightened out. Chip, I'm sorry, I can't. Just not up to my eyes and breakfast. Uh, the bacon and egg, mm. lots of sausage, not burnt. Another Percy Sugden in the making, if you ask me. Look, can you hang on a minute? Look, I'm late already. Um, tonight. Oh, all right, lovely. Look, come around, I'll cook your meal. Mind you, I can't promise that my lasagna will be as bellissima as yours. Mm. Uh, seven o'clock? Okay? You're fine. Oops. What have you done to upset him? Do you know, I have no idea. I'm just my usual lovely self. Mind you, I suppose that's enough to upset anybody. What's up with you? Your boyfriend toddled off without cleaning his breakfast place, has he? I don't appreciate coarseness. Never have and I never shall. Oh, that's coarse. I just don't like the idea of you being on your own. Some a lovely little handful of woman like you should not go without cuddles, Betty. At least one of us shouldn't. What causes half the problems in this world? <laughs> Quiddles. Yeah, what it leads up to. What's that, Betty? Well, I mean, take him inside. Oh, Des the Demon, decorator the fastest brush in the West. Why, has he been doing a bit of stripping? There's no point in talking to you. I get more sense out of a kid of three. Now, go on, go on. I'm all ears. What has he done to you to cause you to throw such a wobbler? Eh? Oh, I'm a cup of tea. Now, Betty, you have now shocked me. How can a man be so depraved? <sighs> oh, it's his attitude towards her. I mean, well, it's just so familiar. Well, from what I can remember, they uh, are uh, familiar. I know, but the difference being, Bet was single in them days. <laughs> Last few years done you no harm at all, kid. You're looking good. Give over with your blarney. Always was your speciality, that. No ball. Manage must suit you. Does it? It has its advantages. One of them being a husband who takes long leaves of absence. The better I knew wasn't a sort of girl like being tied down. <laughs> that was Miss Lynch. This is Mrs Gilroy. Sisters under the skin, though. We've got a lot in common, they and me, lass. Always did have. I didn't know whether to knock on the front or come on the back. Oh, you can drop down the chimney as long as you turn in, Flower. Go on through. Betty will put you in the picture. Oh, I'll be through in a couple of takes, and if Jack tries to give you any advice, ignore him. OK. You barmaid. No experience, but she'll catch on. She's a bright kid. Well, another pair of hands means you'll have more spare time, then. I shall still have plenty to do. The holidays are coming up. That's not for three weeks yet. How would you feel about coming to my Christmas staff outing tonight? 
How many flipping staff have you got? I'll have two. That's why I'd appreciate your company. I'm sure you'll find somebody to help you out, Sunshine. Just dust off your little black book. No, seriously, Beth. No strings. I'm only suggesting I drop this up and a bite to eat for old times' sake. Forget it, Foster. I can remember them old times. Thank you. Now, I fancy a goose this Christmas, just for a change. You know, but Derek's not keen. Mind you, he's only ever had it once before, and that was when Angela made an attempt. Now, I'm not being bitchy, but I suspect she was somewhat lacking in the culinary department. Well, you've come to the right man. It can be a very greasy bird, can goose. Unless you know how to handle it, which of course I do. Yes, well, I'm not exactly a novice myself, Mr. Sugden. No, you've, but you've not cooked Christmas dinner for 500 troops in the middle of the Western Desert, have you? How are you liking your new job, Percy? It must be wonderful making all those little eyes shine. The only thing to shine with is greed. The age of childhood innocence is long gone. Oh, I can't believe that, Mr. Sutton. It's a magical time for kiddies. You want to do a stint in my grotto? Soon wipe that soppy grin off your face, because I started out like that, but it's gimme, gimme, gimme. That's if you can understand what they're talking about. Cow blooming bunga. Turtle language or something. Do you know half of them come with a the shopping list made out, ready? Oh, I bet the parents do all. I bet they're raking it over there. Oh, I am. I admit that. I am an attraction, yes. It's a pity you haven't got one in here, but what can you do with the shop side of a cupboard? Yeah, well, I'd never find another Father Christmas like you, would I, Percy? You've got a point there, Councillor. I'll not deny. Alma, it's me. Listen, Bob, any chance of you going out for a quick break at dinner time? Hey, listen. It's your lovely mamma. She wants to have me for half an hour at lunch now. What do you think? She does pick her moments. Can't you make it tonight? No, I'm seeing Ken tonight. She says it's important. She sounds very mysterious. Oh, important, yeah. She'll probably want your opinion on the latest nail polish, yeah? Uh, yes, go on, seeing as I'm popping off this afternoon, but try and make it half an hour, eh? Not the usual three and a half. I know you two when you get together. Hi, Mike. You girls made a decision what colours you want yet? Uh, no, we've not had time to discuss it yet. Uh, no, and we don't intend to. Well, I don't know about that. Look, girl, this has got nothing to do with you. So I did disagree, but she's a partner, which in my book does give her a say. Yeah, that's right. And the outside is looking tatty, and if Mike's prepared to do it for us, then I don't see any good reason to refuse. See, as it's part and parcel, my obligation as the landlord. Oh, yes, we all know how serious you take your obligations, don't we, Michael? I'm talking about business, Alma, your business. I take it you own it to make a profit, or don't you mind if this place turns into a dosser oh. stump just to spite me? Yeah, I think you better leave us to sort this out between us, Mike. Point taken, only hurry up, will you? I want to get things started. Gosh, you talk about my mother being pig-headed. You can outclass her any day. I don't want anything to do with him, Gail. He frightens me. Why? Well, I told you what he said the other night. Oh, it's just Mike. He likes to put on the big act. You should know that by no, now. No, no, no. It's not just that. I mean, when he's around, I mean, everything just turns upside down. I mean, nothing's simple anymore. I mean, this isn't about paint. It's a power struggle. He wants to control me again. I know him and his little games. Um, nobody knows better than me what he's put me through. But don't you think you're getting paranoid? Well, if trying to protect myself is being paranoid, then maybe I am, but... You know, what I want in my life right now is it's a bit of stability. I mean, with Ken, everything's just straightforward. I feel safe with him. I mean, the last thing I need in my life right now is Mike Baldwin rocking the boat. <laughs> now then, the trick is, Shorthouse, you've got to know your regulars. You've got to know their likes and dislikes. They are out now, now Rita, you see. She is a vodka and tonic. Reg, he likes nothing better than a wee dram of the malt. Is that right, Cliff? Bottle of Muscadet, 84, if you've got it, and a uh, chill, please, dear. On the other hand, you've got to be ready to accommodate their little quirks and foibles. You look, you'll just have to make do with Newton and Ridley Plonk, 91, semi-warm, all right? I can see he's not the only little quirk and foible I'm going to have to get used to around here. You've got it. Hey, a full bottle? That's pushing the boat out a bit, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. To uh, cement the re-establishment of our friendship. Eh? The Santa Sugden Saga. Oh, that. It were only a little favour. We're more for Emily Bishop's sanity, really. 
And, of course, I thought he'd be just a job. Oh, I'm sure he will be. And I always trust your judgment, as ever. Hence the uh, bottle of vino. We don't have to drink it all at once. But I always think men who order half bottles. Well, they sure certain like a style reader. Next bar. <laughs> now, then, how's my Percy going on? I bet he makes a cracking little Santa. Yes, yes, well, it's just a matter of time, Mrs Pierce. I'm sure he will shape up eventually. Get and away I'm... with you. He'd charm the birds out the trees with that twinkle in his eye. <laughs> Oh, celebrating, eh? Bottle of wine. <laughs> Would you care for a glass, Mrs Pierce? Oh, I'm not hinting. Of course not. Uh, another glass, please, dear. Thank you. Oh, I hate being called dear. It's better than some of the names you get called in this job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got no flaming right. I know. I'm sorry, love. I... I thought I was doing it for the best. No, all you've done is stir things up. I mean, no wonder Ken came round in such a state this morning. You know, I just wish you'd keep your mouth shut. I do. <sighs> oh, my listen. I know I was the one that said it can be fun having two fellas on a string. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a game I've played myself a time or two, but, you know, if you're not careful, you're going to lose both of them. And of the pair, I'd hate to see you lose Ken because I think he's the best thing that's happened to you in a long while. I'm aware of that. And I haven't got Mike on a string. And even if I did have, I wouldn't want him. I mean, what do I have to do to convince you? No, oh, it's not me. It's... Hiya, Bert. I'm not stopping. I've got to get back to the shop. Only I found this when I went home for my dinner. The postman's put it through wrong door for a change. I wouldn't care if you gave them my bill. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you Is it uh, from Sir? How is he? Is he having a lovely time? I would think the chances are he is, Phyllis. Weather wonderful. Wish you were here, love, Alec. Well, your husband's nothing if not original. I'll tell you something, kid. If I was there, it wouldn't be coconuts swinging from them flaming palm trees. So, that's where you've got to. Oh, keeping tabs on me, are you? No. I just wanted a word in private. That offer of a jar and a chinwag tonight, still on? As far as I'm concerned. I thought you weren't too interested. I'm exercising a woman's prerogative. Any objections? <laughs> no. Can I ask you what changed your mind? Well, let's just say... I reckon if a girl can't have her pina coladas on a sun-kissed beach, I reckon she's entitled to have them where she can. Jules with talk about a poser. The Muscaday 84, if you've got it, dear. <laughs> Still, it's all good for trade. What do you think about young Angie, then? Do you reckon she's got the makings? Yeah, I don't see why not. She's quick to learn. She's got a nice manner. Hmm. Well, if she's shaping up that well, how do you feel about coping without me tonight? No problem. So long as Jacko's around to do the heavy stuff. Why? You have somewhere nice. Depends where he takes me. Not got a date. Well, why not? You don't think Alec's going to be sat there with his hands clapped over his eyes every time one of those hula-hula girls goes <laughs> slinking by? I can't see Alec with any hula-hula girls. Anyway, it's not a date. It's just a drink and a laugh for old time's sake. Des Foster. Look, I've worked hard behind that bar every night since his little fat lordship swanned off. I'm entitled to a night out. I'm not saying you're not, love. But, uh, is it ever wise rekindling old flames? <laughs> To be out like that. Trouble is, how can you be sure? Because I know me, that's why. I thought I knew me. But I must say, I didn't find it so easy. I don't want to go into details, but, uh, well, I uh, strayed from the straight and narrow once. Oh, long time ago. I'm not making excuses for myself, but I was lonely. On my own all day, with two young kids, husband, who were never there. What happened? I came to my senses and ended it. I never had any regrets. But he turned up again a few years later, just after we'd moved here, in fact. To cause bother? Oh, no, no, nothing like that, no. He were a decent bloke with Johnny. Pal of Jim's as well, which didn't help. Whew. I bet it didn't. 
But are you saying the old magic was still there? It could have been if I'd let it. But thank God Jim were around then and the lads were a bit older. All I'm saying is, if he'd turned up when I were on my own, who knows what damage I might have done. Yes. Right, me up in the big bedroom. You've had that sunshine. I've got my train set, my Lego set, No, my space no, 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 this is the deal. Me and your mum get the biggest bedroom on account that we're the biggest. You and the Duchess will have the middle one and little chubby chops here. I'll have the little back one, won't you? Is that fair enough? <laughs> Don't show her again, do Yes, I? you do. So what's the point of moving, then? Well, we all have a lot more room and Davey gets his own room. Mm. That's not fair. He's only a baby. Why can't I have my own room? Because. You always say because. Yeah, and you always say it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'll dig you a big swimming pool if you like. Would he want? No, he won't. But we might buy one of those blow-up paddling pools in the spring. If you're a good girl. Yeah. Hey, and I can just see a barbecue here as well. I don't know, Gail. It's going to be great, this, inviting all the neighbours round for a Sunday lunch on the patio. Shopping the gun aren't you? Jones hasn't even accepted the offer it's yet. Very true. Hey, hey, listen. Shh. Not a word to anybody Hello. until he does. Okay. Hi, hi. Who's this now? Uh, uh, oh, hello. Oh, God. So please, I'm sure there's somebody in the garden of number eight. <laughs> I never dreamed it would be you. <laughs> yes, Your Royal Kerliness, what is your pleasure? Well, that depends whether I get it in a glass or on my head. In a glass and on me. Oh, no, there's no need for that. Don't worry, I'm not going to make a habit of it. And I've drawn up a schedule, you know, to pay your money back. Uh, well, we don't have to discuss that now. Uh-oh, not playing protector of the helpless female again, are we? Heaven forbid. I shall expect to each week in full, on the dot, and no excuses. Done. I still think you're a nutter, though. There he is, the lad himself. Go on, give us a sample of you. You ho ho. <laughs> I have been hearing some good reports about you from your boss, my little flower. I'll thank you not to go snooping behind my back, Mrs. Pierce, and I am not your little flower. I've not been snooping, my lovely. I asked Mr. Holdsworth what kind of a daddy Christmas you made. Daddy Christmas? Where have you got an expression like that from, woman? Have you no respect for the English language? Hey, if you're not careful, I'll come to that grotto and pull all of your whiskers out. So where's she middling off to her ladyship, then? Don't look like three pound a tripe. Gets entitled to a night off, same as the rest of us. Aye. I expect she'll be on the razzle with Rita. They go way back, you know. I bet there were a pair of ravers in their day, you know. Ooh. He has. <laughs> That's wonderful. I didn't think you'd be so quick. Well, um, where do we go from here? Look, um, I've got to go, Martin. We'll, uh, we'll talk when I get home, all right? Yeah, me too. I'll see you then. Bye. Maurice Jones has accepted our offer. Oh, oh, oh that is a great <laughs> kid. Oh. Oh, listen, will you do, do me a favour and lock up for me? Because I want to get the veg ready, having a quick bath before Ken gets oh, here. Have you decided what you're going to tell him now? My mother has opened her dainty little gob. Well, the truth, I mean, I've got nothing to hide, no matter what he may think. I mean, Mike Baldwin and me are history. Oh, it's no use pushing, Mike. We haven't got time to spend a penny today, let alone anything else. No, I've had an idea. Why, well, they paint the front, they can change the name. What for? Well, Jim's calf. Who the hell's Jim? Alma's husband. Yeah, I know that, but who else does? I mean, people around here know it as Alma and Gales. Bit of a mouthful, that, Mike. All right, well, then, the Alma's place. Uh, Sedgwick's sandwiches. Platt's platter, anything. Surely it can come up with something a bit more interesting than Jim's. Yes, we might. But why the concern? I thought your department was the maintenance of the property. I know how much hard work you put into this place. If I could do anything to help, I want to. Look, you're a sensible girl. You've got your head screwed on. Can't you make Alma see that this isn't some sort of wicked Machiavellian ploy on my part? Isn't it? Well, the bottom line is, yeah, I'm a businessman. I'm looking after my business. I mean, I don't want to see this place go to rack and ruin just because she's got the needle at me. It wouldn't be in my best interest. Won't be in yours either, can't you? You're not going to swarm. We've got so much to suck. I'll see you doing here. I've always said there is nothing like a warm welcome. And that definitely was not a warm welcome. You, know, you got hired like a rhinoceros, you, haven't you? Well, that's me. Rhino Baldwin. That's what they call me. Yeah, I think you better go, Mike. All right, but let me have your decision as soon as you can, will you? I'll leave it to the lads. They're painted day glow orange with purple spots. You've not booked somebody already. Oh, you know me, darling. 
If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Thought you knew that. See ya. Alma, um, this is getting silly, and I am sick of being pig in the middle. Now, will you do something about it, if only to save my sanity? I know what I'd like to do, but unfortunately, put you away for life for it. Here we are. Oh, dress. I'm gone, Rita. I'll tell you here. Who? Our esteemed man lady. Oh, listen, I don't want any red carpet treatment. I just want you to treat me as if I'm no better than the rest of your customers, even though I am. Uh, Jack, that's not going out with Rita. Well, you said she was. No, you said she was. No. And you. Just want to work. I couldn't say anything this afternoon with him sort of breathing down my ear all, but I'm glad to see you've got fixed up. Well, at least it'll help stop me getting in arrears again. Oh, it's not that that concerns me. But when people get into debt, I mean, it can often lead to other troubles as well, you know. Not me, Rita. For one thing, I'm too law-abiding, even if I do wear mad hats. And for another, I'd have a right job to kick over the traces living under the same roof as his holiness. Oh, he's a good lad. I know. <laughs> Boring, oh, hiya, girls. On your own. <laughs> what can I get you? Uh, no, I'm waiting for Alfie, actually. And I'm waiting for me. We're going to pictures. We're going to see a weepy. But I'll have a vodka and tonic if you're offering. Right, large scotch, vodka and tonic, and you sure I can't persuade you? I'm not easily persuadable, actually. Not every woman could be twisted round a fella's little thing, you know. Actually, Rita, Alma and I were thinking of going to the pictures, but uh, she's got Ken coming round to dinner. Oh, that's nice. Yes, you know, they're seeing so much of each other. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't settle down together once Ken's divorce comes through. Well, they could do worse. They seem well suited. Oh, they are. Perfectly. To be honest, I've never known Alma so happy. Something smells good. You know, I never used to like cooking. <laughs> so I'd me ended up running a cafe, didn't it? You know, I'd always see myself running one of those classy little boutiques, all uh, silk undies and designer labels. <laughs> well, that certainly sounds like you. Why, well, it's more flipping me than frying chips, kiddo. Oh, funny the strokes life plays on you, isn't it? <laughs> oh, funny is not a word that I would use. Neither of us had an easy time of it, have we? You know, I think you and I deserve a bit of peace and quiet in our old age. Well, I don't know as much about our old age, but I certainly think we could do without any more hassle. Well, if you're referring to Mike Baldwin, I know what Audrey said to you. Oh, I see. Well, is there any truth in it? Well, not in her interpretation, no. I mean, he comes round to mind him about painting the front. Well, so why didn't you mention it? Because it's no big deal. I mean, he's our landlord, unfortunately. I mean, that's something oh. I'm just stuck with. You can't honestly believe that that's the only reason he's been crawling out of the woodwork at every opportunity. Well, that is a bit of an exaggeration. And even if he did have any other ideas, I have made it crystal clear to him he can forget it. I mean, I'm absolutely amazed that the man could believe that you two could get back together after everything he's done. Well, I don't know what goes on in his twisted little mind, and I don't flame him well care. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Ken, I'm with you, and Mike Baldwin can go to hell. Well, I mean, that's if you want me. Come here. Mm. You know, I mean, the thing is, I've always had this fantasy about a female chip fryer. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Cinders, your carriage awaits. Or a rather clapped out deranged Capri in this case, but I've valeted the inside in your honour. I'm sorry, Des, it's off. Oh, I thought you said the girl seemed reliable. What girl? Well, the new barmaid, she's not showing up. Oh, Angie, yeah, she's turned in. Then what's the problem? Me. I'm the problem. I've decided it to be a mistake. I don't believe this. I'm sorry to mess you around. Oh, that's the understatement of the year, that is. Why should you give me the big come on? I did no such thing. No. It was just an amazing coincidence that out of all the decorators in Weatherfield, you call me. Oh. And then you won't go out with me. A couple of hours later, you will, and now you won't. What kind of a mug do you take me for? Come on, love. You're gonna have me late. Oh. Gushing me. 
I'm not short for five minutes, for goodness sake. Look, when I say I'm going to be down there for half past eight, they've every right to expect me to be behind the counter, not stood here talking to you. Right. Oh, unlock the door properly, will you? I have. No, you haven't. You've just dropped the latch again. What is the point of paying for a I mean, deadlock if we never use it? Do you know, for somebody who leaves his car parked in the driveway all night because he is too lazy to tidy out his garage, you've got a cheat to complain about security. Yeah, well, the car may be in the drive, yes, but it is securely locked up. Oh, well, come on, then. If you're in such a rush, let us in. What's up? They've taken me radio cassette. I mean, would you believe it? In my own blooming drive, Gordon Bennett. Go. Oh. The theatre. <laughs> we don't have to go. Oh, what is it? It's the uh, miser by Molière. Oh, that sounds a barrel of laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> yeah, well, it is. It's supposed to be a comedy, or to be precise, a French satire. Is it in French? Well, I hope not. It should be as hard put to to understand it as you. Oh, okay. Then I'll give it another go. Look, I don't want to force you. Well, if you think I'm intelligent enough to oh, take it all in. Hey, spare me the ordinary working girl bit. I thought you liked ordinary working girls. I do. <laughs> and I like being taken seriously. So you go? Yeah, go on, it could be a change. Oh, great, great, good. <laughs> right, now, I'm just done. Oh, what did you see at lunchtime? Oh, on duty, sorry. Well, I'll tell you what, pop into the cafe after school and I will seduce you with a toasted tea cake. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm always game for a new experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye there. Bye bye. Oh, we might be a bit late, though. Kevin's got a car to show me first. Oh, OK, I can wait. Hey, good luck with the car. Daughters living under the same roof with three blokes can get a bit much sometimes. Hey, to think there was a time when the idea of living with three blokes sounded like <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah, well, we were all young and daft ones. In some cases, not so young. I wanted to thank you for our little chat. You know your secrets there for me. I know. You're not regretting it then? Oh, not regretting staying in, no. I'm a bit worried I might have upset his ego a bit. Oh, what took him long to get over that? It was a bit brutal, this. He's a grown lad, he knows the score. I know, I just don't want him thinking that I was trying to get my own back on him for last time, that's all. Well, get in there and explain things to him. I might if he'd turned in. Ah. Absolutely. Well, you know, tradesmen, he'll be buying paint or sussing out the next job somewhere. Yeah, probably. He'll turn up before long, don't worry. He's got to finish the job, hasn't he? Let's make a start. Sitting around here all day won't pay solicitors' fees. Oh, we've definitely found something. Yeah, we think so. It's, um, it's pretty much the same as what we've got now, but there's a bit of garden out back in Sedgwick. And uh, what about your place? Mm, well, we've had a fair few people around viewing. It's just a matter of waiting to see now. You? Good luck. <laughs> yeah, all right. See you later. Why didn't you say out about number eight? Why should I? Well, I'll just find out sooner or later. So what when you do with the do? <laughs> Ivy's not going to be very pleased when she hears. Well, you leave me to worry about that. You've got to decide about the colours and the name on the camera. No, I've told you I'm not interested. It's just his way of getting back in. So what if it is? The outside needs doing it. Something to do. Well, if you want him to do it, well, you choose. All right. How about black and pink? You've got to be joking. We weren't interested. I'm not. I'll tell you one thing. We are not changing the name. Is this right, Betty? 48 quid for pies? Oh, I don't know, love. I mean, I only serve them. Well, is there any way of checking? Well, we get through about 100 nod each week, so, yeah, it sounds about right. Oh, no, no, it goes swanning off like Christopher Columbus in search of the new world. Never a word or a note about the bills. <laughs> yeah. Bet, decorator's arrived. Right, show him in, will you, Liz? Uh, I like a word. Well, I'll get on then. Okay. 
Now then, love, saw him a bit late, but if you'll just show me where the action's at, I'll get cracking. And who are you like? Like she said, I'm decorator. I've already got a decorator, thank you. Hey, don't let the baby face fill you. I know what I'm doing, you know. And where is Mr Foster? Des. Well, let's put it like this, love. When the job gets too much for Des to cope with, he sends me in to sort it out. And what exactly is that supposed to mean? No, just a joke. Oh, yes. I'm not very keen on jokes like that. Hey, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean out by it. I'm just trying to be friendly. What's he been saying to you? Just get in there and finish job off while he starts this other he's got. I see. He did say you were an old mate and had to do a good job for you. Did he? Look, I'm sorry about being a bit mouthy. No problem, love. What's your name? Greg. Right, Greg, you'd better get upstairs and I'll organise your cuppa. Oh, cheers. You said I'd get on with you. Uh, will you be seeing him at all tonight, love? Yeah, should do. Would you ask him to pop and see me if he's got time? OK. Ta. Special, was it? No, I was just on the way to Rovers. I thought I'd pop in. Oh, you just caught me. I was going to go for my dinner any minute. Oh, oh you look busy. <sighs> Truck of luck. Book's full. Now I've got health care to fix. Well, what happened then? Oh, someone wanted his radio. Couldn't wait to ask him. But still, nice little profit for us, eh? Yeah, I suppose so. What's this money in it? Oh, uh, this one's not ours. That's this across from Ledbetter's. You know, for someone to look it over. Sounds very enterprising. Not in it for me. Just a favour for a mate. On the firm's time? I'll make it up. Don't worry about that. I wasn't. What does concern me is you're doing favours for mates when you should be working for me. I mean, all this should be going for the business, shouldn't it? Look, I've told you, it's just a favour for a mate. Oh. Curly? Martin? I mean, who? Ken Marlow, if you must know. He's been asking me for ages to keep an eye out for a decent car. Oh, has he? Well, you've done him proud, haven't you? How much are Lev Bitters asking for it? Two, three. Two, three. Well, I'll tell you what. Call it two, five and put it through the books, all right? Well, I don't know. It's supposed to be between me and him. When it should have been between you and me. Look, I didn't think he was doing anything wrong. You haven't. Like I said, you've done him proud. Now, to keep it all nice and above board, put it through the books. Does he know how much Lev Bitters are asking for it? No, not yet. Right. We'll call it 2-5 then, eh? He's got a nice little car. We've made a nice little profit. It's what called good business boy. Tell you what. If it makes you feel any better, I'll split the 200 with you. How does that sound? Yeah, OK. Right. I'll make a businessman of you yet. You made that yourself, did you? Uh, no, talented as I am, Jack, I think Newton and Riddle can claim most of the credit for that. No, not the beer, the gear. Do you know, being with you is like being in a time war. All these quaint historical expressions you keep coming out with. Eh? Fab gear, man. That's not historical. That's a 60s, isn't it? Yeah, well, that is historical to me. Oh, well, come on, you make me feel like an old man. Do I? I'm sure it's intentional. It's like... Now, Luke. Look, I'm only doing this for your own good. I mean, the, the, the gear, the clothes, where's the tips in that, then? What? I mean, all this covering up, all this unnecessary modesty. What about it? Well, if you've got it, flaunt it. Show the punters a little bit of what you want to see, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, like, look, if a fella comes in to buy a pint and he gets served by a good-looking girl like yourself, showing a, a little bit of doings, you know, well, he's more inclined to give you the tip, isn't he? Oh, you mean like this? What? What are you... What are you doing? Tipping the glass. Well, oh, you can see everything the glass has got, can't you? I'm sorry, sir. I'll just tip it up for you. Right, top it up. I'd change your trousers if I were you, Jack. Things have been known to shrink when they get wet. Hey, while I remember, that lad on the decorator. Oh, does he want a pint and all? I'll make him a cup of tea. Looks too young to be drinking. Hey, what happened to the other one? What other one? The one that was here yesterday, you know. Love the boy. Oh, I think he had to go look at another job, so I sent the lad to finish off here. Just as well, if you ask me. I'm not doing a good job, though, isn't he? Yeah, smashing. Uh, oh, I tell you, ask for a job. Large Scotch, please, Angie. There's a lad. Right. Having a problem there, Jack? 
No, mate, just just a little accident, you know. <laughs> Verbal incontinence. One eighty-four, please. Take one yourself, mate. Ah, oh, thanks. I'll have a lemonade. It's a bit modest, isn't it? Yes, well, I am. Isn't that right, Jack? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but I hate working late. I mean, you know, sooner get home and you're in bed, then you're getting up and you're back in here again. Well, you don't have to go straight back to bed, love, do you? I mean, you could always go to the Rovers with your Jack. No, he's out gadding tonight, love. Still... Yeah, going to the snooker do, you know, at Legion in Manchester. But coming home with his bright ideas, trying to tap me up at midnight. Well, listen, why don't you bring your bed down here and you can kill two birds with one stone? <laughs> yeah, could I spend all my time in here? So how are you going on with this house business then? Hey, you think I've had a lot of interest, love. I had a lovely young couple come round last week and, uh, well, they seem quite taken with it. So you're definitely going then? Well, I hope they could give us a reasonable offer, love. Oh, do you know, the street's not going to be the same without you and Don. Yeah, well, oh, if you go yeah, you'll still get used to it. No, do you know, I'm going to really miss you. Well, you'll see me here, you daft bat, won't you? Yeah, you're right, That's I will. Still, uh, and I'll tell you what, it's funny how life works out, isn't it? I mean, you and Don are moving out of the street just as Gail and Martin are moving in. <laughs> Gail and Martin? Yeah, they're moving into number eight. Gail and Martin are not moving into number eight, Vera. So what's Rita Faircliffe on about then? What do you mean Rita Faircliffe's told you that Gail and Martin are moving into number eight? Yeah, I heard it as clear as day. I mean, oh, I thought you would have been the first one to know. Well, you'd be wrong there, wouldn't you, Vera? Nobody's breathed a word about this to me. Oh, don't worry. Both my fancies have gone down already. Right, come on, sit yourself down. So, what can I do for you? I just wanted to tell you that uh, me and Martin have put an offer in for number eight and it's been accepted. What? Our road? Yes. Well, that's great. Hey, give you a bit more space. Well, I should have told you sooner, but uh, I was a bit worried about Ivy. Oh, Ivy would be delighted. Well, I didn't want her to think that we were waiting for you to move out before we moved in. Oh, don't be daft. Well, it could look a bit like that. But the fact is, they've knocked so much off the original price, we'd be daft to pass it up. Of course you would. Listen, you've no need to explain now. What you do is your business. I know. Yeah. I just wanted to make it clear. Yeah. Well, don't worry, I'll tell her. Hey, and while we're at it, we've had a firm offer for this place. So, it won't be long before we're not moving on. So, you'd recommend it? If we had the cash, I'd be tempted myself. Great, great. Uh, what was the asking price? Uh, 2,500. Yeah, well, touch more than I had in mind, but uh, if you think that's fair... Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's fair. Good. That's all I need to know. I'll have the cheque to you tomorrow. Great. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate what you've done. Good to know there are people around that you can trust. Here, have a drink on me. <laughs> no, 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 I don't need that, Ken, thanks. Don't be daft. You've done me a big favour. It's the least I can do in return. Cheers. <laughs> Right then, what's it to be? Baked bean brown, uh, carrot red, pea soup green? No, or... we toyed with pink and black, but we've decided on brown and green. Good. I'll get my little man and his mate and his ladders to get round here and start over the weekend. What about the name now? Stays the same. Well, I think you're making a mistake, but if that's what you want... That's what we want. Two teas, two toes coming up. No problem. And what about the flat? Shall I get my little man and his mate to give it a lick of paint while he's here, eh? Save yourself a few, Bob. No, thank you. Well, you should never pass up a free offer. You never did anything for anybody unless you was somebody did it for yourself. Well, not exactly the response I expected, but at least you're talking to me again. So I'll get things moving. Good idea. Why don't you start with yourself? Right. Finished? Yeah. Hey, that's great. How much do I owe you? Well, I haven't had a chance to work it out yet. I'll drop a bill in tomorrow, OK? Oh, fair enough, yeah. Listen, I'll, uh, I'll let you do the radio. 
Not my favourite taking that to a car radio place. It cost me an arm and a leg going there. It might work out cheaper in the long run. No, I'd sooner you did it. Suit yourself. You best have a look around and see what you fancy then. Bring it for me to fix. Smash it. Right, the uh, keys are in it. I'll go and get tidied up before I go for a pint before we take. Hey, and I'm very grateful, Kevin. Thank you. It does a nice job, does Kev? Ah, uh, you carry on like Kevin, you'll do all right. Nah, not when it comes to motors. Mind is uh, a bit over the top with his radio prices. Oh? Yeah, well, I won't pay more than 40 for a cassette player. Yeah, well, I want a decent one. I'm talking about a good one. Oh? Programmable, portable, full track stereo, FM, AM, long wave. Is it fitted? Only the price. Why are you interested? Well, I might be at that price. What's all this? We've had an offer. So I thought, I'll make tea and then we'll go out and celebrate. Oh. Yeah, a couple of came last week, you know. Uh, they haven't offered what we wanted, but it's as near as maximum difference. Oh, so we can go ahead and make a definite offer on that uh, house we saw then? Yeah, first thing tomorrow. Right. I thought you'd be pleased. I am. I am done. Yeah. Hey, we're not the only ones moving. Gail came round this afternoon. They bought number eight. Yes, I know. Vera Duckworth told me. Vera Duckworth? Yes. I'd rather Gail had man. Yeah, well, I mean, at least she came round and explained. Yes. Anyway, uh, I think we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Well, I'm pleased that you're in favour. Of course I'm in favour. I mean, if we're making a fresh start, why shouldn't they? Thought you were watching a film on telly. Yeah, well, I was, love, but I got a wee bit slow, so I thought to myself, well, I've got a very beautiful wife and not a stone's throw away from here, so why am I sitting here watching second-class rubbish? When you could be drinking a first-class pint. Mm, first-class company. Yeah, well, flattery doesn't get over the fact that you're drinking it as fast as I'm earning it. Now, would you stop your husband having a couple of pints, or would you rather I stayed at home and moped? So, where's the lads? That is like asking, where's the third man? Mm. Well, I just wish they'd keep a bit better company. I'm not sure I like the look of this crowd how Steve's hanging around with. Come on, it's just because they wear baseball caps that doesn't make them criminals. Besides, he's calmed down a lot since he's come to work with me. Well, must be my sober and influence. <laughs> Thank you. You know, give me a right turn when I found out you were starting here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, I know how, Jack. Anybody under 30 wearing a short skirt is straight in, like a bull terrier sniffing round a bowl of offal. Well, I think I can put your mind at rest on that score, Vera. I'm not exactly Jack's type, am I? Well, you know, page three. If you'll go out, out with all him, giving half a chance, it's like a rattle for dream time. Well, I'll certainly bear that in mind the next time we're on together. Although, I do find it difficult to resist a mature, attractive man. Mm, quite right, yeah. It's just as well Jack's neither attractive nor mature, isn't it? Hey, that was a nice trick, girl. Yeah, but man, ignore the woman. Ignore, I ignore mine, don't I? Feels like a bit of rain here, that one. Yeah. Hey, how is the bus? You don't try, good. And there's an old miller by the string. And then we clean. I'll get the bad lad, sir. Where are you? It's a whip. Takes you back, doesn't it? Oh, that was a great film, that wasn't it? You know, I love my socks off. Oh, you know, I'd love to see you in socks. Well, it could be arranged. <laughs> Did you enjoy the play? <laughs> it was great. Yeah. It was something different. Do you know, that's what I like about you. What's that, then? Well, you're always introducing me to something different. Well, you know, I could repay the compliment. What do you mean? Well, I learned one or two things I didn't know before, thanks to you. Well, like what? Do you really want me to tell you in the middle of Manchester on a Monday night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That's one thing I'd really like to change. What? Christmas. I've had two lousy ones in a row. Yeah, it can be a real drag on your own. That's what we ought to do, you know. Take one of them, get right away, soak up the sun on a beach somewhere. Oh, do you know, I would really love that. Would you? Mm, just you and me together all day. <laughs> well, why don't we, then? What do you mean it? Well, why not? I think we both deserve a break. Sorry, 
late. Uh, uh, tomorrow. I didn't know whether you could resolve. I was a bit upset last night. Yeah, I sort of gathered that when young Greg turned in this morning. Oh, he's a good lad, Deal. Do your first class job. I won't argue with that. Look, uh, will you have a drink? Uh, no, I'd better not. I've got a car outside. You don't mind if I do? Not at all. I. I was offering you a drink. By way of an apology, really. For messing you round. It was wrong of me. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have lost my temper either. Makes no odds. I mean, I wasn't exactly fair to you last time, was I? No. But I don't want you to think I was seeking revenge, Des. Because I wasn't. At least, not against you. No. It was just a daft attempt to get back at Alec for upping and offing the way he did. I wanted to hit back, have a good time, set a few tongues wagging. So that's why you picked me out of Yellow Pages? Sort of. But when the chips were down, I chickened out. I, I couldn't go through with it. Well, thanks for telling us. Uh, I appreciate your honesty. Huh. The least I could do after the way I behaved. Well, perhaps just as well you did, eh? Oh, there's no doubt about it in my mind. I mean, play with fire. We could both have gotten burned. Mm. We could, yes. <laughs> Two people our age messing about like young kids. I mean, it doesn't take much to get carried away, and then where we'd be. <laughs> You're right. Look, one of the reasons why I sent young Greg in. What? Well, it wasn't just because you blew me out, Bet. Having seen you again, I didn't think it was such a good idea to tempt fate quite so much. Still, in and out the front door within five minutes, you'd put pay to any rumours. Good night, Bet. Myself. It's all down there. I've written it all down. What is it? It's the Inbound Solicitors. Oh, God, Ivy, you're not taking me to court for possession of your grandchildren. Now, listen, if I didn't know your sense of humour, I would take exception to that. So what's all the solicitor business? Well, you won't want your moving house, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Well, I did tell Don. Oh, don't worry. There's plenty of other folk can tell me about that lover. I'm not bothered. They said you needed to say yes in hurry, so all right. Um, I'm just glad you've got it. Thanks very much, I. Right, well, as for Mr. Kenny, he's a nice man, he's well educated, but he's not snooty and poor to you know. And you know what? I think you'll be really happy now, ask I do. To do. Toast! Do you know I cannot fathom that woman? Well, she's probably just trying to be helpful. Exactly. It's not what I was expecting. I was dreading the task of telling her. <laughs> Something's happened to the woman. Why are they moving? Oh, I think Don's got fed up of living in a shrine, reading between the lines. Still, as long as they're moving. <laughs> Double egg, bacon and beans. Does anybody want this? Or shall I give it to the cat? <laughs> Any chance you can get it to me today? Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Well, not with a card, anyway. Oh, if you could. Yeah, all I've got to do is pick up the documents and that, and I'll uh, have it to you for time. Yeah, well, if you do it by five, well, then I can phone and get it uncovered. No problem. Good. Okay. I'll sort that. Are you cute? Uh, Give it here, Chuck. They're wheeling and dealing, although I don't know why they've got to do it in here. Sorry about that. Right. And uh, the check will do. Well, we know where you live. Okay, bye. See you now. Come on, Audrey. Oh, okay. not, not all day. Well, I've, uh, I've got something for you. Oh, yeah. You. There you go. Oh, now that looks all right. How practically new it is. Yeah, it's all right, is it? You know, it's, uh, it's all right. Oh, it's all legit, yeah. Me mate's dad owns a breaker's yard, he gets wrecked off the motorway and all that. Yeah, well, I don't want to oh, dodge you, you know. Well, it's not dodgy, mind you, if you want to buy a new one. No, enough. no, no, as long as it's all right. Sign of scurvy up to present. 
We never stop. I've not seen the sea for three days. We'll tell you what the weather here is like if I ever get a chance to go up on deck again. Tell Jacko I know what he's up to, because he's always up to something. Checky is not breeding whippets in the cellar. Missing you, love Alec. Ah. Oh. What do you mean? Ah. Uh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Yeah. He's out there, all supposed to be wonderful, and there he is, missing you. <laughs> there he is, leading the life of Riley. Well, like he said, working all hours, I bet they do. Boozing all hours. Boozing and God knows what else. Of course, they do say, you know, a guilty mind is a suspicious mind. And what's that supposed to I'm mean? I'm saying nothing, it's not my place. Come on, Betty, something to say, feel free. No, I'm not one to stick my nose in. I'm not one to gossip either. Anybody else is making comments. It's not me. Kind of comments? Well, about you being very, very friendly with a certain uh, decorator. And are they passing comments? Well, I don't know. I don't listen. <laughs> well, let them, because there's no it in it. All right. If you say so, love. Killed the service on that car for Ken before dinner time. Only said he could have it for tea time. Whenever you like. Well, I was going to do it on my own time, wasn't I? But, well, seeing as. Seeing as what? Well, the firm's getting a cut. Firm's cut, firm's time. Well, you told me it was a nice little car. Oh, is you? Then you shouldn't have to spend much time on it, should you? Brake linings, oil filter. Well, it shouldn't take long. Good. The oil and the bits and pieces, tell them they're all on top, all right? I can feel bad about this as it is. You know, I was supposed to be doing someone a favour. I wasn't doing it to line me pockets. I did someone a favour once. Little thing cost me next to nothing at the time. Do you know what? All came back at me in the end. Damn near wiped me out. Taught me a lot about favours. We don't do them. I don't want to be a misery old boss, but when exactly are you thinking of flitting off? Well, give me the chance. I haven't even got the brochures yet. Why don't we pop out and pick them all? Oh, excuse me, since when have you been involved? Oh, now don't be cruel, Chuck. I only live through other people these days. If it wasn't for her, I would have no romance, no excitement. I would have nothing in my life. Never mind romance and excitement. But Ashley, you're a daughter of mine, say things like that. It's just that Christmas Eve is very busy in here. Now, if she's on a plane to Istanbul, where does that leave me? She's on the jealous. Yeah, well, maybe oh. I <laughs> no, she's not. She'll have them all them kids, all wide-eyed with their stockings and their presents and Christmas trees and a proper father Christmas. Just be a proper Christmas for you. I mean, all I want is one that's a bit better than last year. I mean, you let me out. Oh, you? you're breaking me out. Take uh -huh. the floor. night. Well, I think when it's a bit quiet, I'll go down to the precinct and get the brochures. Look, why don't I go? I've stopped out the shop so long. I dare go back. He'll hit the roof. I can go now. No, no, no. I want to go myself. Why? Because, well, because I do. Anyway, it's only a suggestion. I don't want you saying anything to Ken. Uh, what? Uh, well, I know you. I don't want to think that I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> You're making a good job of that. No one does it better. We are number one. Uh, you could polish it all you like. You'd never get me on one of those things. I wasn't planning on that, Mrs. Wilton. They're far too dangerous. Not as dangerous as cars, then. Are they not? Well, they say the back seat of a car is the most dangerous place on the road. But don't you think with these rear seat belts, they're a lot safer now? Well, you can't on a dark night. What can I do for you? Oh, well, I believe you've got a, a new car radio for Mr. Roberts. It wasn't a new one, second hand. Oh, well, a radio anyway, about £40, pounds, was it? Right. Uh, and it was um, with a sort of cassette thing. Never. All the twiddly bits, yeah. Uh, well, I wondered if you could get one for Derek. Well, they're all the same to fit any car. Oh, well, could you? I should think. Oh, good. I mean, I'd, I'd like a, a good one, you know, with the stereo. No, all the twiddly bits, yeah. Yes, one like Mr. Roberts has got. Oh, I'll see what I can do. Oh, God, it's a sort of present for him, really, because the one he's got's gone on the blink. In fact, it's got so bad now, it's chewed up one of his Pavarotti's. And now you go to a garage and they don't want to know. I'm just interested in selling you a fancy new one. No, it makes such a difference with all the driving it has to do. Anyway, if you come across a decent one, you know where to find me. I've just got what you mean about the back seat. You cheeky article. What do she want, then? I'm not sure it's meant to fit a radio or something in Derek's car. Well, we all know you're the big expert in radios, son, eh? <laughs> See you later. 
Everything all right, Betty, love? Oh, well, it's, it's a bit quiet, but it's early, mind. There's a shout when he gets busy. I will. <laughs> Looking a bit more cheerful, isn't she? Well, she had a card from his highness. Oh, card from his highness. You reckon that's what's doing it, do you? What's that supposed to mean? What do you think of this decorator, though? I think he's a bit of a cowboy myself. Do you? In fact, I think he's a bit of a midnight cowboy, if you get my meaning, Betty. You ought to be very, very careful what you're saying. I spy with my little eye, Betty, coming home from town last night. My lad sneaking in the door. It's a good minute. Yeah. <coughs> mm. Any chance anyone pulling a paint for a working man here? Yeah, sure. Are you sure about this? Or, uh, or were you K-line, as per usual? Well, it looked like my lad to me, but it wasn't him, it was another fella. Betty was a fella. <laughs> Well, I don't see why. You don't have to say. Because he threw a couple of tenors at me. Makes me feel guilty. Well, is it a good car for the sort of money he's paying? Oh, yeah. Well, he could have always paid that and got a rotten car, couldn't he? <sighs> Without a doubt. Of course, because I don't know anything about cars. So as long as he's getting a good car for the right sort of money, you shouldn't feel bad. Yeah, but taking another cut out of it, it's... Well, you could always spend that 20 quid on a car, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. Bits and pieces for the middling service comes to more than 20 quid. There you go, we'll do that then and keep the other that you split with Mike. You're entitled to a bit of a profit, Kev. £100 goes quite a long way. Yeah. Suppose it's a good idea, as long as I can live with my conscience. It's good to have a conscience. It'd be good to have an holiday and all. Come on, Rosie. Come on. I was just saying we'll make a barmaid of her yet, won't we? I very <laughs> much doubt that, Betty, love. I'm doing my best. Oh, I thought you were really picking it up. Love, do you know what you come across as? A student doing a bit of part-time work behind that bar because you skint. Oh, don't be hard on that. Me and Betty are barmaids, love. Mother Nature and something or somebody said when we were born, there you go, here's a couple of barmaids. But nature's cut you out for something else, something better. So I'm not going to waste my time teaching you to be the world's greatest barmaid. Get off home. Do you not want me to come back? Of course I do, Carl. Everybody seems to be telling me to make some of myself today. Well, if I don't hear from Hollywood in the course of the afternoon, I'll see you tonight. Bye. Bye, Hey. What are you fiddling <laughs> about, Betty? You get off on. Hey, we've been a couple of barmaids for a long time, haven't we? Long enough, Betty. <sighs> you were only my junior when Mrs Walker first took you on, and now look. You've really done something with your life. Oh, I'm glad you think so. I do. I've been lucky. No, it's not all luck. You had more to you than I thought when you first came here. And I'm being honest now. I've never known you to be dishonest, Betty. Mm. As it turned out, you got a lot more sense than I thought. Well, at least you used to have. Don't start again, Betty. Listen, don't go throwing it all away. I mean, I know you feel umpty about Alec and about him going like that, but oh, don't go throwing it all away, love. I told you this morning there's nought going on. Listen, if you were still my junior, I'd flaming well give you what for for your own good. But seeing as you're not and you're, you're my boss... <laughs> Well, I'm speaking out of turn. But you're still going to give me what for? Yes, I am. Because, in the end, I was very proud of you. I don't know why, but I was proud that you didn't end up on the streets. And you're risking all that, lovey. What for? I mean, is it just to get one back at Alec or what? It's daft. I've told you, there's now going on. What was you doing coming in here in the middle of the night, then? The middle of the night? Well, I've gone 11 o'clock to call that in the middle of the night round here. Who calls it, too? It doesn't matter. You can't go on like that without people knowing. Now, you know you can't. All right. So he called. But he didn't stop. Now, you can believe that or believe it not. Look, would he have called if he'd not been... if he'd not, um... Giving him some encouragement. Mm. All right, maybe I do. All right. But there's not going on, and there's not going to. 
Oh, well. I've said my piece. If I've said too much, well. Oh, well, you have. But I suppose you do have that privilege. Listen, lovey. If I'm saying anything, I'll say it to you and to nobody else. Others might be different. Now, come on. Think on. I'm going home. But we can't go, and that's that. You know what it's like at Christmas. Exactly. Well, that's what I was thinking. I mean, you drive yourself too hard. You should give yourself little breaks, you know. You've been bad. Yeah, I might get a bit of a break if certain people around here would start pulling the weight. Oh, you're still going on. Look, it's all right propping up other people's counters, and all this Christmas in the Seychelles nonsense. Who's going to the Seychelles oh. for Christmas? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Would I? Well, it's not the Seychelles, actually. I mean, that's just him exaggerating. But uh, certain people are going away for Christmas. Mm -hmm. The owner of a certain local cafe, for one. Oh, well, I hope she has a good time. Mm, I'll give her your regards. I'm sure she'll be very grateful. You do that because I mean it. She deserves to have a good time. It's not easy being on your own at Christmas. I happen to know that. Oh, who says she'll be on her own? I mean, just because you and Alfie and all you businessmen can't find the time. That is the advantage, you see, of being a school teacher. You get your holidays. It seems that your ex and my ex are going somewhere nice to fill each other's stockings. Well, I still hope she has a good time. Despite the handicap. So, you've, uh, you've had it serviced and all that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all sorted. Good, good. Oh, do I owe you anything for that, by the way, the service? No, no, that's all included. Sure. I'm sure. Look, I've, uh, filled Oh, it. no, hang on, hang on, hang on. First things first. Now, uh, two five was there, didn't we? Yeah, that's right, two five. Made out to... Uh, MVV Mulches, please. Thought it was just you. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. The boss just wants it to go through the box. I'm sorry, it's just what he said. It's funny that way, you know? Yes, yes, I do know. Well, I'm sorry for all your trouble, Kevin, but you can tell your mate that it's not quite what I'm looking for. Oh, hey, come on. You... No, I'm sorry, I just don't make out any checks to Mike Baldwin. Look, it's just what he said. I'm sorry, I don't care how big or small his percentage is, he's not getting it's it. It's nothing like... I'm sorry. I suppose you better take this back then, haven't you? Oh, no, 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 that was for your trouble. You can't keep that if you're not keeping the car. Kevin, I've got nothing against you, that's for your trouble. Ken, I'm sorry, but I can't keep it. You went for a lot of trouble for me. So buy us a drink sometime, all right? Yeah, well, OK, if that's what you want. Lucky, he had a real good in. Just come in. Oh, you've got one already. Forty-five and a real bargain. Him out of a very high-class wreck. What are you on about? Oh, Steve's got me a radio for Derek's car. Auto reverse cassette, self-seeking the lot. How do you mean out of a wreck? Do you mean out of a crash car? That's right. That's why they're so cheap. Well, they'd have to be for me and all. I mean, I wouldn't want a radio somebody kill themselves on motorway trying to tune. Oh, well, that's right, Rita. Go and put me off. Well, I mean, suppose it's been damaged in the accident. All it's in, it's mangled. Well, if it don't work, you have my no quibble money back guarantee. But it does work. I've tried it. And Derek can fit one of these, can he? I mean, connect it up and everything. Oh, you have to be careful. Tell him get the polarity right, it'll just blow the transistors. That's it, it's just gash then. It's negative earth, but he probably knows that. Oh, well, I I'm not sure Derek's that well up on all that sort of thing. Could you fit it? I think that's what he's trying to tell you, maybe. Yes. And my charges are very reasonable. It's going back to lead better, isn't it? Why? What's wrong with it? Nothing's wrong with it. You just don't want it, does it? I don't know. Some people just seem to want to mess you about, don't they, Kev? Well, he was writing a flaming cheque out till I told him. And so? So he said, who shall I make it payable to? I said, MVB Motors, please. He said, right, I don't want it. I said, he's got to go through you. He said, stuff it. There's something going on between you two, isn't there? Well, if there is. It was a bargain at 2 5. Yeah, well, I reckon he wouldn't have it if he was giving it him. Maybe not. That's his problem, though, isn't it? Yep, that's his problem. So, shall I whip it back then, or what? What if they won't fit 2 3? Yeah. Well, if I can knock them down a bit, we might keep it ourselves. Make a few bob. Don't rush. So, what exactly is it then? The needle between you two? You better ask him. He's the one that's bothered. 
I mean, look at the flowers. They don't hang about waiting for the better class of bee. They just spread the petals and get on with it, don't they? Well, if I wake up in the morning and find I've turned into a chrysanthemum, I'll definitely take your advice. Right, I shall tell you something now I have noticed over Oh, the years. here we go. The great philosopher speaks. Rochdale's answer to Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's got nothing to do with football, you see, clever clubs. See, listen. Now, most old maids, feature for feature, and more often than not, are good looking. Or have been, like yourself. But because they didn't get out there right away and click at the right time, something funny happens. It, it is chemical. The, the, the retraction goes and they find they can't click anymore. Oh, and what's this, another of Duckworth's great theories, is it? No, no. There is nought as attractive as knowing you're attractive. You find this, do you, Jack? Well, yes, I am not being begetted when I say, yes, I am speaking from experience, yes. You're speaking from a very peculiar part of your anatomy, if you ask me. Hey, yes, Ken. Hey, hey. I've obviously got an emergency, Jack. So what do I do? Just pick a name out the phone book. Well, I'd try the yellow pages if I was you, Luke, under painters and decorators. And come on at any time, you know. Mm. Jacko, I'd like a word with you in the back. Now. Is it, is it something I've, 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 um... What have you been putting round about me, Jacko? No. Let me hear you say that again. No. And again. No. That's a very wise answer, Jack. Because if I hear you putting two and two together again, I don't care what you think it comes to. You'll be out of here very fast. And you might just find you've got two missing when you go. <laughs> Oh, hi. Hey. Hey, you might have mentioned it. Uh, mentioned what? What you're about to mention. Oh, God. Well, it comes to taking up with somebody who's got Audrey Roberts for a best friend. So, uh, what do you want to do? I mean, do you want me to give Tracy your present? Or do you want to give it to yourself before you go? I have no skin off my nose either way. <laughs> might be off Tracy's, though. Look, this is ridiculous. So far, it's no more than a nice idea. <laughs> and yes, I was going to mention Tracy. I mean, what do you think? Oh, Never mind. I honestly don't know. I mean, she's at that age where there's no telling. She might cry her eyes out, or she might not even notice. Well, I could give her a present before and then spend some time with it New Year. That's OK with you. <laughs> You'd better take it up with Tracy. I mean, it's all parties at New Year. Yeah, anyway, I mean, it's not definite I'll be away. There's nothing fixed at all. Just a mad impulse, was it? Well, an impulse. I don't think it's mad exactly. I have had worse impulses at this time of the year. You know, it was a very nice idea, that Mavis. It's been driving me mad, that thing. Well, I, I know you like it for company on the motorway and everything. Oh, yes. There's nothing like a blast to Luciano when you're caught up in a contraflow. <laughs> right now, the pirates were having fun. There you go. Oh, snapshots of each other, relaxing on their voyage of crime. One even brought his girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> hey, the silver man under a variety Which of fictitious one? names, um, Luciano. had become a ghost ship. Abandoning the original crew on an island, it plied the China Sea, masquerading. Ah, magnificent! Well, I must say you're improving in your old age. Well, what do you mean? We never went away. Oh no. Yeah. But then, uh, well, I mean, you were never a creature of impulse, were you? Me. I wasn't. Well, you're not. <laughs> Ken, you are the only bloke I know who irons a crease in his pullovers. You are not a creature of impulse. <laughs> yeah, well, let's better let this drop. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. Uh, do you fancy another? Uh, no, no, honestly, I've got a lot of marbles. But look, uh, oh, did you see young Steve? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's done it. What, the radio, you mean? Oh, yes, it's very good. It's in. Can you get one for you as well, then? Well, Audra mentioned it, and I just said, and it's turned up with one. Auto reverse, self-seeking. It's very flash. Mm. What do you pay for that, then? Well, uh, strictly speaking, it was a present from Mavis, but I happen to know it was 45. Well, you did very well, then. I paid him 40. Man, I've got auto reverse and self-seeking up like that. It's very, very basic. Look at the brand tub, I suppose. Or Mavis's charm. <laughs> I mean... There's one. Did she uh, have something to say to you? Yes, I think you would call it 
the riot act. What's all this about a decorator? I am saying nothing. I've got a cellar to see to. I'll be at periscope depth the rest of the evening. Is that what he's saying behind the decorator? I think that's what he's saying. But when you start believing hope, Jack says. Oh. Cheers, thanks. Ah, oh, Mr. Barlow. Thanks very much. You did me a favour there. Well, if not doing business with you is a favour, my pleasure. Passed up a nice little bargain there. I thought to myself, right, if Barlow's not having it, I will. Make myself a nice little profit, thanks. As long as it's not from me. I looked at that car and I thought, too good for Barlow, this. I'll have it off him. Really? My word, aren't you clever? Clever enough to know a bargain when I see it. And I'm also clever enough to get my hands on it. Mind, the last good thing threw you out, didn't she? Maybe you're slipping. I wouldn't bet on it. See, I've decided there's something else that's too good for you, Barlow. And I'll have her off you as well. And you can bet on that. Oh, morning, Al. How do? Hey, I can save you one of these, you know. No, uh, no, I don't think I'll bother. Well, it'll have gone by the end of next week. I might have gone myself by then. Oh, hey! Hello, Al. You know you were saying about uh, McDonald Boy putting a radio in for you? A radio cassette, yes. Very good it is, too. Yeah, I was wondering if I could have a look at it. Well, of course. Yeah, only one is fixed in mind. It's a bit basic, you know. I was uh, hoping he'd swap it for something a bit cleverer. Oh, nothing cleverer than mine, I can tell you. High tech and no mistake. <laughs> mind you, I haven't really got to grips with it yet. I just wanted to say I'm sorry for the way I messed you about. Customer's privilege. Well, not really, is it? I mean, I came around asking a favour, then I threw it back in your face. Well, was it the car you didn't like, or what? So? You don't have to give any explanation. I know, I'm only asking him. The car was fine. Well, you've still got it, haven't you? Yeah. So, I mean, you could still have that car if you want it. Yeah, well, I just hadn't reckoned on doing business with Mr. Baldwin, which was stupid of me, really, if you'd have seen that coming. Well, you don't have to do business with Mr. Baldwin, because Kevin will sort it all out for you, won't you, Kev? Sally. Well, you won't. Don't leave it, eh? Look, uh, I don't suppose this makes much sense. It was, um... Well, it was a personal thing, and all I can say is I'm sorry you landed up in the middle. It's OK. Right, well, I'd better go. Sorry I interrupted your breakfast. No problem. Thanks right. for coming round, anyway. Would have been much better if he'd bought that car, wouldn't it? Yes, it would, because then we could have had some money, couldn't we? Well, I've never heard anything so pathetic. What? Doesn't want to do business with Baldwin. What does it matter as long as he gets the car well, he don't wants? Don't ask me. No, and I wasn't allowed to ask him either, were I? That's your trouble, Kevin. You let people walk all over you. Probably, yeah. It's the same. The same mate, you mean? It's the same mate, same everything. Well, it would be the same everything if it's the same mate. I mean, it's even got the same scratches. It was made, though, at the same time as mine. So what are you saying? Well, I don't know what I'm saying. I can't say it to him, though, can I? I mean, I can't say, Oi, that's my radio you've got in your car. Who else? Terry. Well, I don't know that. I can't say for definite. But it looks the same. Exactly the same, yeah. And do you know when he got it? Yesterday. Mine disappeared the day before. He gets his yesterday. And where did he get it from? Steve McDonald. Oh, hey, that's getting a bit close to home, isn't it? Well, exactly. I mean, I can't go accusing anybody till I'm sure. And you didn't have it marked or anything? No, no. Hey, there weren't any... There weren't any distinguishing marks, could there? I mean, you didn't mark it out, did you? No, someone you could point at. Listen, I was afraid to look at it in case I disturbed all them push buttons that you drove it. I was never, never... Well, I don't know what to do. 240, please, love. Thank you. Well, if it were me... What? I'd have a see if the preset buttons on this radio are set to the same stations as you'd set yours. If they are, then bingo. Yeah! Hi. Ta-da, ah. love. Well, now, there you are. She's given me the answer. Yeah, what were the set to? I mean, oh. um... One was Radio 2, 2 was Radio 4, Complicated. 3 was Weatherfield, 4 was Radio Piccadilly. How many of these preset thingies are there? Eight? Yeah, but I only managed to set four of them. But Exactly. Now, so, when Derek comes home tonight, you go straight over there and you ask him if you can have another look at the radio. Well, there's no need to wait. He's working there now. Oh, well, come on. Let's get over hey, there. Hey, listen. Leave all the talking to me. Of course I will. So long as you're saying the right thing. Morning. Morning. 
I do. I get finished today with a bit of look. Oh, very good. <laughs> Pleased with your work, is she? I haven't had any complaints. I bet. You do start sometime, then? I had to pick up some gloves. I'd say them of the morning. Cup of tea on if you want one. Yeah, I'll be right down. All right, Jack. I'm just buffling up, boss. I'm... <laughs> she gave me a right roasting the other day about spreading rumours. I should think so, and all. Betty, I saw what I saw with my own eyes. Mm. Now, the more the lady protests, the more I know the lady has some tied. Subsequently arrested, along with several other people. Now, then, having that's been number four. Radio Piccadilly. Yeah. And that's number five. Oh. So what's that? Exactly. That's now, because you never got round to setting that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, you see. I mean, that set is exactly like mine, and it's set like mine was set, and you got that the day after mine was pinched. It's ours. Come on, now, let's not mince words. That's our radio. We're pinched from our car. I can only say I bought it in good faith. Yeah, from Steve McDonald. Yes, or rather Mavis did. Uh, we're not accusing you, Derek. I mean, we're not saying you pinched it. Well, I'm relieved to hear that. Mm. Listen, I think the best thing we can do is go around and see the lad. Yeah. See what he's got to say about it. Yes, maybe that would be best. Mm. Yeah, well, Derek and me can handle this on our own, love. I mean, if you've got something better to do. Mm. Well, you and Derek handle it, then. But you don't seem to have handled it very well so far. Oh, he'll, uh, he'll be in his dad's garage. Uh, yes. Well, you, you lead the way. No, no, you know, after no, you. No, 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 please. Uh, well, uh, after you. When you called the other night... Yeah? Jacko saw you arrive, but he never saw you leave. Give him something to think about that, Will. One of nature's romantics is, Jack. He sees a man and a woman together after lighting up time. They must be up to no good. Yeah, well, we proved him wrong, didn't we? It's not proving him wrong. It's shutting him up that's the problem. Oh, I see. You think there may be a certain amount of speculation going on? <laughs> I'm damn sure there is. Well, I hope that doesn't mean you're regretting calling me in. Well, why should I? You do a good job. You tidy up after yourself. Your rates are reasonable. I'm not regretting out. But what happens when I've finished? Give me your bill and I'll pay it. Simple as that. As simple as that. Hang on. What exactly are you fellas saying? Well, what I'm saying is that he's got my radio, which my wife bought in good faith. Yeah, and the one I've got, well, Lord alone knows where that came from. No, and they were both supplied by your son. All right, all right, look, I understand. Look, let's just not go jumping to conclusions, OK? Let's keep calm and see if we can't get this sorted out, all right? I think we're being very calm. There's a lot would have gone straight to the police and let them sort it out. Yes, I know. I'm grateful. Believe me, I'm grateful. Look, uh, Steve's out on an errand at the moment, but I swear the minute he gets back, I'll have words with him. See if I can't get this squared away, all right? Well, I suppose it'll have to be. Trust me, man, all right? Leave this with me and I'll get back to you. Well, I hope you will. It'll all be sorted out. Uh, <sighs> the stupid wee... I thank you. Hi. Time that well, didn't you? What you can have? Shandy, please. And one of them. It's coming out. So then, how's the motor trainer? Busy. Eh? Good. Except I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with that cow we got for Ken Barlow. Only you said hang on to it and we'll try and sell it. I know I did, but I was lying, wasn't I? Hey? Barlow's benefit. I wanted to make him think he was missing something. Oh, so what am I supposed to do with it now then, eh? Well, bang it back to the bloke you got it off. There's something else I want you to do as well. What? If Barlow asks your advice about a car again, I want you to buy him the biggest heap of rust you can. Something that'll break down on him in the middle of nowhere and possibly... Uh, and some red cabbage, love, and all. OK, lovey. Is it all right if I see through? Certainly. Well, because he's nowhere on, stopping you. Well, we've got a buyer for the house, and uh, Ivy seems well suited with this one in Fletcher Street, so... But, I mean, they're just terraces down there, aren't they, like they are here? Yeah, very similar. Yeah. I mean, I don't see the point. Oh, it felt like a change, you know, fresh start. You do sometimes, yeah. do you? Fine, when you're ready. Hey, somebody wants serving. Yes, yes, I heard him, yes. Pint of bitter, please. I thought you had it served in the living room when I saw the plate. No, no, I'm quite happy here. 
Anyway, I expect Bert has to be a bit careful, husband being away. I mean, she won't want folk gossiping, will she? It's a pound. But you're not telling me that Steve MacDonald is a thief. Maybe. I think we should be careful not to say things like that. I'd never have bought it from him if I'd known. No, I know you wouldn't. You see, I, I knew it was cheap, £45, but it wasn't new. He admitted it wasn't new. Maybe you've nothing to blame yourself for. None of us have. It's between the boy and his father now. We must just let them sort it out. Get in there. Right. I want to know, and I want to know now. Where did you get those radios from? From a mate. From a mate? Just a mate. Oh, come on, Steve. His dad owns a breaker's yard. That's where he gets them from. Oh, he does, does he? Well, that's what he told me. Well, I'm going to tell you something now. They're nicked. They're hot. They're stolen property. And that means you've been handling stolen property. And you know what that means? He said it means you could end up in court. It means you could end up with a criminal record. Now, what are you going to do with the rest of your life with that saddled around your neck, eh? I didn't know. Honest. You swear you're telling the truth? Yes. Because, by God, if I find out you've been lying. I didn't know. All right. You're not a criminal. You're just a wee bit thick. Right. Number one. I don't want to ever see a second-hand radio in your hand ever again, no matter where it comes from. And number well, two. Huh. I'll try and satisfy them two fellas, Alf and Derek. Persuade them to not make a federal case out of this. Right. In the meantime, I'll go and switch Al's car radio back. Get you into town, buy a new one to replace Derek's. And bring it here. Don't bring it to him. I'd rather you didn't see either of them. As a matter of fact, the best thing you can do is make yourself scarce for the rest of the day. Yeah, well. And you swear to me you didn't know those radios were nicked? No. All right, well, I'll believe you. Mind you, no court in the land would. OK. Let's go and see if we can satisfy Alf and Derek. Maybe we can persuade them to keep their mouths shut. Come on, son. I understand. Where were you? <laughs> Her husband's away and she's got a fancy morning. Supposed to be decorating the bedroom. Yeah, and then our Jack gets fed with a sack if he so much as opens his mouth. Well, I don't want to think about it, really. In fact, I prefer not to think about the whole subject. Yeah, well, I told him. I said, if she sacks you, you're straight round to that tribunal. Yeah, let it out. I'll come out in the open, see what she has to say about that. I don't know how people get married if they don't intend to stick to the vows that they made to one another. Well, exactly. At least you'll use a bit of discretion. She has him in and out of that door. Well, rubbing folks' nose in it. Vera, there's as much sin in mm. spreading scandal as there is causing it, you know. Oh. I'm only talking, me, aren't I? I'm just taking a, a normal human interest. Even so, I don't want to discuss it. Well. Look, they're boring all the world if everybody took that attitude, wouldn't it? You might think so. I happen to think it'd be a better world. Mm, better for Beth Gilroy, wouldn't it? Yeah, if nobody said so, it makes it easy for her, doesn't it? Oh, well, I don't say I agree with that, no. No, but it's folk like you that aid and are better, isn't it? Folk that don't want to know that makes it easy for her. Thank you, love, to that. <laughs> Right, well, radio's back in. I think you'll find she's working a treat. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. Right, now, there's also the little matter of the 40 quid yeah. you fed Steve for the radio. Oh, well, thank you, Jim. I think that's us all square. I just wanted to pop round and make sure you'd no grievances. I'll be going round to Derek's, make sure he feels the same way. Well, look, there is just a little matter of how your lad happened to have my radio in the first place. He got it from a mate. A mate? Of... Yeah, which mate was that? Listen, I'll... Can I please ask you to leave this? I said I would sort it, and it's cost me time and money to sort, but I've done it. Now, you've got your radio back, and I promise nothing like this will ever happen again, all right? Yeah, it's a serious Excuse matter, you me, know. please. Look, I know. Don't you think I know how serious it is? And I'll tell you another thing. Young Steve knows as well, and it'll be a long time before he's allowed to forget it. I can guarantee that. So, listen, if you're happy, I'll say cheerio, then. See you, dear girl. See you, Jim. Well, I'm glad that's sorted out. It could have turned nasty. Yeah, well, you know all he's doing. All he's doing is covering up for his son. He can hardly blame him for that. Yeah, but while he's covering for his son, he's also covering up for whoever's doing the thieving. Steve's mate. Steve's mate. I don't think I can go along with that. Well, Alf, 
If you go to the police, Steve will be in it up to his neck. Well, whose fault's that? That's not my fault, is it? I mean, it's all right for you. Everything in your life straightforward. <laughs> what, moving into a new house just before Christmas? Well, at least you know who you're moving in with. I mean, look at me. I thought you were going away for Christmas with Ken. Yeah, well, that's if we can escape the spirit of Christmas past. Mike. <laughs> I keep looking over my shoulder and wondering where he's going to pop up next. Well, just tell him straight. You don't want him and he's got to leave you alone. Do you think? Yes. Yeah, that's what I think. Then do it. And then I think, no, that could just provoke mm. him. I mean, just, just do nothing. Just treat him with contempt. You see, I'm not good at tactics. I never have been. Ah, why did I go back to teaching? <laughs> Big salary? High lifestyle? Executive car? That's it. I knew there was a reason. Oh, nice. yeah, hard day. <laughs> oh, I never thought I'd say this, but Christmas can't come soon enough. Hey, listen, I've got them brochures. Oh. Can I show you what's yeah, yeah, go on. I'll finish off down here. Ah, oh, have them kids been picking on you then? Come on. Oh. Mavis. Oh, hello. One car radio cassette to replace the one I took out of Derek's to put back in the house. But you've heard all about that, I dare say. Uh, yes, well, I, I did gather there was something. She knows, and so do I, because she spent almost the entire afternoon telling me about it. Well, look, here's a brand new one with my compliments, all right? I'll leave it with you. Do you want me to pop back later to fix it or what? Well, I shall have to ask Derek. Ask Derek what? Well, whether he wants to fit it himself. Does a lot of that sort of thing, does he? Look, I'll tell you what, I'll pop round later, and if he wants me to fit it, well, he's only got to ask me, eh? Bring your screwdriver. I will do. See you now. Well, excuse me, excuse me, but you are quite sure this is a new one this time? Yes, I'm sure, Mavis. Well, I just wouldn't want us to have another mistake. <laughs> oh, neither would I, love. So shall I tell you how I know it's a brand new one? Yes. Well, you see, it's in this cardboard box, right? And you open it up, and it's all wrapped in polythene. There's your instructions, and you get a wee guarantee card, right? That's how I know it's a brand new one, Mavis. All right? Yes, thank you. Good. I don't want him messing us about again. He would dare. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, oh, uh, wonderful. Yeah, well, I marked a few out because I thought my suit. So I thought we could just... Go. Oma. What? i got to tell you, uh, I was in the Rovers last night and I came across our mutual friend. Mike? Yeah, yeah, he, um... Well, it was a bit strange, really. He said something about you. Of course, he was his usual bumptious self, but, uh... Well, he said that I should enjoy myself when I could. Because he was planning on you and him getting back together again. <laughs> oh, made me wonder. Oh, well, he uh, keeps letting me know he's around, but that I mean he is our landlord, so he's got a built-in excuse. Yeah, yeah, but nothing um, unpleasant. No, no. I'm going to see him though. I mean, I'm going to see him, and I'm going to spell it out that he's um, wasting his time, and he might just as well get lost. Oh, if you think that's best. Oh, I do, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't sure. I kept changing my mind, but... Um, I'm going to see him. One minute he says, keep the car, we'll try and sell it. Next minute he says, no, don't. I'm lying. Lying? What, he actually... Lying, saying? yes. For Barlow's benefit. You know what I reckon? I reckon he's gone mad. Oh, come on, Ken. No, I do, seriously. I reckon all this stuff with his marriage falling through and that, it's finally sent him down the twist. Well, at least he's given you a job. Exactly. So what does that make me, eh? He might be a madman, but I'm the bloke who works for a madman. Stop it, Kevin. You need that job. We've got this house and we've got Rosie to look after. You frighten me when you talk like that. I frighten myself. Fancy popping down to the Rovers for now? No, I don't think so, no, thank you very much. Oh? Any particular reason? Well, I just don't want to join all them gorping crowds. What gorping crowds? It's not a darts match, is it? No, but according to Veer, Bet is having an affair with the decorator that's doing living quarters, and, well, they're all talking about it, you know. Ah, uh, uh, I see. Yeah. Well, I don't see, really. 
Why does that stop us going for a drink? It's not turning beer off, is it? Oh, of course it's not turning beer off. It's just that I don't want to be in a place like that where all everybody's thinking about is carnality. Oh, right. Yeah. I get it now. You know, I'll tell you what, it might have detained them, Don, but it doesn't mean... This is for my benefit, isn't it? Sorry? I'll come off it, Ivy. All this talk about carnality affairs. <laughs> it's just to remind me, isn't it? Just to let me know. No! Just to let me know that it hasn't been forgotten, that I'm still on probation, I've still got to behave myself. It's nothing like that, Don, honestly. It never crossed my mind. No? No, I swear, love. And you think that moving out shall solve everything? Well, I think it'll help, yeah. Yeah. I hope you're all right, Ivy. I do. I know, I know, I know. Hey, 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 he's crossing over. Yes? Can I have a quick word with Bet, please, if she's available? Available? <laughs> I shall inquire. Please. Is Bet available, please? Hang on. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's all right. Don't stop. Ah, oh, I thought I might find you in here. Alma, my love, what can I get you? Oh, nothing, nothing. I haven't come for a drink. Uh, give her a gin and... No, no, don't bother. Uh, make it a large one, will you? Look. Can I get it into your head once and for all that Ken and I have got a steady relationship and I'm just not interested in you? And you're wasting your time with all these silly little tricks you're trying on me. Why don't I take you out to dinner? No, somewhere? no. I'm not going out to dinner. I'm not even having a meal with you. Are you listening to me when I'm telling you? I have some lemon. Uh, yes, please, yes. Look, I just don't want any more of this. And I don't know what you think you're doing telling Ken that you and me are going back together again. And I would be very much obliged if you didn't go around saying anything like that to anybody. Look, let's sit down over No! The... No, I am not sitting down. Look, you've got to believe me, Mike. We're finished. I mean, you and I have been finished for a long time. I just don't intend going through any of that again. 229, please. There you go. Are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm listening. Am all... I getting through? Yeah, I'm listening. All I hear is someone telling themselves something that they don't really believe. Well, what do I have to do? Would you just would you just tell me what I've got to do to convince you? Nothing, because you never will. Look, just just get lost, right? I mean, can you understand that? Hmm? Just Get lost. Can't keep away, can you? Uh, perhaps you wish I had after you've seen this, Bill. Oh, I like that, is it? Well, you best come through. We'll see if Alex left his check boot behind. She's got a nerve. I'll give her yeah. that. Yeah, well, I saw nothing. I don't saw nobody arrive and I saw nobody taking through to the back. Well, I did. Let's see how long it takes us to write a check, eh? Uh... Hiya. Well, I'll just have the usual, love, please. There I'll you go. Oh, for me? Bought and paid for. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> How did he manage that? Don't ask me. Mike, cheers. Oh, cheers. So, is all this radio business sorted out now, then? Radio? Mm. Oh, with Steve and Andy, you mean? Well, Steve, anyway. That's all well behind us. I don't think we'll be having any more of them fun and games. <laughs> Only Mavis was going to get Derek to fit his own. I mean, Lord knows what sort of a job he'd have made of it. Fit his own? Yeah, the one that Jim bought him. Steve, oh, I don't know, anyway, to replace the one in Alf's car. I'm sorry, I'm not with you. I thought you were talking about this pirate radio, you know, with Steve and Andy. Oh, no. Oh, I've opened my mouth when I shouldn't have to. Well, now that you have, do you think you could open it again and just tell me what on earth this is all about? And I'm surprised that if you're just going to let it go like that. Well, I'm not just going to let it go, am I? Sounds like you're already hard. Well, that's what he like, isn't it, Jim? I mean, that's why he's been so nice to everybody. But no, a man in my position, a counsellor, I can't be seen to be turning a blind eye to thievery. Well, you go on to the police, have I? Well, I've got no choice, have I? And can I say, it's been a pleasure working here again. Yeah, well, it's been nice seeing you and all. Makes me wonder why I was so stupid to let you go the first time. Well, that's nice. A lot nicer than hearing you say what a, a close escape you had. No, I'm serious. Look, a lot of folks saw you coming here tonight. And they'll be waiting out there to see how long it is before you go. So I go. But what happens if I come back? Come back in the new year when my Alex here. I'll introduce you. It's not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> Don't spoil it, eh? So, you'll be all on your own over Christmas then, eh? Oh, you're never on your own in a pub, are you? I think that's exactly what you are. Very much on your own. I'll see you later. <laughs> I 
I'm your mother, Steve. I have a right to know what's going on. Look, love, we were just protecting you, all right? But you didn't, though, did you? Rita Fairclough hit me with it over the bar. It's sorted, Mum. You sorted nothing. Your dad did it. Look, right, I apologise. I should boots. have told you, all right? Oh, and that's an end of it, is it? An apology from you. Mum, have you seen any football Like boots? I said, it's sorted. Look, Alf's happy, so's Derek, all right? But I'm not. You have been handling stolen goods. Well, he knows that. Then he's a criminal. Well, I mean, he knows the implications. I've already told him. Look, has didn't anybody know seen... they were nicked. Oh, don't be stupid, Well, Steve. he is stupid. I've told him that as well. Look, you're not bringing any new to this conversation, love. Look, we've got a garage to open up. It's all right. Stay where you are. Don't worry. Where did I'll you get him from? And don't look at your father. I'm asking. Off of me. Which mate? I met his dad. Shut gonna... it, Jim. You're talking like his solicitor. I'm having no more of this, do you understand? I'm already embarrassed. Don't you make me ashamed. Oh, look, sorry. Lee. Oh. Shopping. You've only just got here five yeah. minutes ago. Well, next door I've bought us something, so it's only fair I get that in summit as well. Well, you've got the rest of the week, you know. No, no, they're going away tomorrow, aren't they? Look, don't worry. I won't break the bank. I'll get him some gloves and she can have an umbrella. Why? Well, she snagged her old one on the privet, didn't she? No, I mean, why all this tit-for-tat expense? I mean, you know, it's going to get so that everybody in the world is buying everybody else a flaming present for Christmas. Oh, listen to it. The milk of human kindness, well, curdling. Morning, Mr Roberts. Morning, lad. Mr Roberts. You've got your priorities all wrong, haven't you? Give her you something and you resent it. Rob you blind and you can't do enough for him. I only said good morning to the lad, that's all I said. I'll... Al, that family is a bunch of thieves. That's not fair, Audrey. Pinching your car radio and flogging it to Derek isn't fair. Look, we don't know that Steve did pinch it. And I bet he knows who did. Anyway, Jim's right, hasn't he? He's put mine back and he's bought Derek a new one. You're backtracking, aren't you, about calling the police? Look, it's Christmas, Audrey. Milk of human kindness, remember? I thought so. And what about that 40 quid that Jim McDonald bunged you, eh? Hush money, I suppose. He was reimbursing me, that's all. He knew I got to pay... Oh, oh, by the air, Cal, what's going on? Oh, it's just Audrey having a go. What can I do for you? Having a go about what? <sighs> Christmas. Gloves. Umbrellas. Mm. You mention it. Car radios. Aye, that and all. Do you know, the older they get, the after they become. Stop worrying. Steve won't make the same mistake twice. I meant Jim. Tells me nothing. It's like living with a spy. <laughs> Don't knock it, cock. At least you're living with somebody. I've started talking to myself. Did I tell you? <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm answering myself back. Now, it's bad news, is that? You miss him, don't you? Alec. I want him back. So I can kill him. <laughs> well, I can't blame you for that. If Jim suddenly took off on a cruise... No, it's more than that, Liz. He's exposed me to something I haven't felt for a long time. Loneliness. Oh, it's not clairvoyance. I had my share of it when Jim were in the army. Even when we were in quarters, I didn't see that much of him. At least you had the kids to keep you occupied. To stop you from going balmy. When I lock up here at night, there's just me. I'm not much company. Des Foster wouldn't the answer, Bet. He made a good job at decorating, though. Didn't do much for your reputation. Do you know, I was tempted. I don't mind telling you. I nearly talked myself into it more than once. But you didn't? Oh, no. no. I talked myself out of it again, didn't I? I've told you. It's a chat show. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> love. Weren't you after leaving once, I remember? Oh, I had a lot of personal problems at the time. I wasn't thinking straight. I don't regret not going. Eh, uh, there's a good lot round here, aren't there? I bet Ivy will miss him more than you will. You should have been round here a few years as Ivy. Ah, well, let's hope folk are as good where we end up, eh? See ya. See ya, Don. I mean, I've been round here longer than Audrey, you know. It's a community, is this, you see, and I'm part of it. It's easy doing what's right, Alf. What's right isn't always what's fair, though. Oh, you try telling that to Audrey. You see, a man in my position, I've got to gauge the atmosphere, sum up the, uh, the pros and cons. So you won't be going to the police, then? Well, I won't be steamrolled into doing something against my instinct. I don't suppose Audrey's considered the wider implications of all this. Like what? 
Well, the embarrassment, for a start. Embarrassment? Yeah, for Liz. I mean, she's pregnant, isn't she? Well, exactly, yes. Look, Audrey is going to have to go along with my instinct this time. So what did Ken say about you going abroad for Christmas? Not much. But you showed him brochures. I think I was just being over-optimistic. <laughs> What's the problem? You sorted my account. What, report back to Ken now, do I? Uh, I've sorted my account, so please will you take me away for Christmas? Oh, come off it, Gail. So, you're happy to let Ken do all the deciding? Well, short of begging, I haven't got much choice. Oh, pin him down now on the talk holidays. Well, what if he says no? I mean, that'll do a hell of a lot of my self-confidence, won't it? I mean, Mike's got to just laugh his socks off. Too well with Mike. You do what you want to do. I want Ken to take me away for Christmas. Then tell him. Oh, just a progress report. Oh, hey, I thought you were helping Martin sort the house out. Yeah, well, we've achieved quite a lot this morning, haven't we, Sarah? Hey? Yeah, I haven't finished packing, have you? Have we, eh? No, but I have sorted out the van for tomorrow and I've worked it out. Well, we'll probably need about four trips. Four trips? Are you taking the garden? Hey, you know, that's a thought. I just need a bigger van, won't I? <laughs> well, do it yourself. Move this, Alma. I huh? reckon it's cheap. But <laughs> on your own while who's helping you? Hey, hey, thanks a lot, Alma. I'll see you around our house about 8 o'clock in the morning, yeah, okay? Just get this. Uh, <laughs> Sure, you can manage it all by tomorrow. Uh, well, we nearly had it all managed by today, didn't we? If it wasn't for a certain young lady giving her orders, huh? <laughs> Come on, tell your man well, I've got to tell you. To see Santa Claus. Yay! <laughs> and her wish <laughs> is my command, is it not? <laughs> you see, that's how you do it. You know, she's got youth on her side, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Look, he knows he's done wrong. That's enough, love. But why did he do it? It's not as if we keep him short of money. Just leave it, love. You'll worry yourself sick. Listen, we didn't keep Andy short either, but that didn't stop him running a school sweepstake and printing his own pop posters, did it? Where have we gone wrong? Well, we haven't. Just thank your lucky stars we caught this when we did. All right, sweetie? Now, see you later, all right? Chin up. See you, love. See you, Deirdre. You know, Jim's right. Yeah. Anyway, Alf won't take it any further. He daren't. You don't know that for sure. Let's just say it's in his best interest to keep the lid on this. What's he said? Um, full of community spirit is Alf when it suits him, and believe me, it suits him. Now, relax. I've I I told you. The, I could put the clock back, you know. I'd go to college and university and get some qualifications. Well, it's never too late, right? No, no, it's too late. You've got to do it early in life. I mean, it's like an investment. You work hard at the beginning so you can play hard later on. Yeah, well, I think you're confusing me with somebody else. Yeah, well, you get more holidays than George Bush. <laughs> I wish I got his salary. How long are you having off for Christmas? Barely two weeks. You lucky devil. Holidays are not always synonymous with happiness, Jack. Take it from somebody who knows. Tracy's not even mentioned Christmas this year. Now that she's not looking forward to it, she's trying to soften me up for something. Well, I wish my two were as honest as Tracy. <laughs> she's not bad at nicking me perfume. Sure, you've got good taste? True. <laughs> Sorry, dear, do you mind if I join you for a minute? Why? Well, it seems that Jack's in a philosophical mood and I need a bolt hole. Oh, sorry, Ken. You'll have to find a bolt somewhere else. Alf's expecting me back. Oh. Oh, I'll see you, love. See you, uh, Deirdre. Thanks for the uh, reassurance, you know, about the other. See you, love. See you bye. later. Bye, bye. There you are, oh. Ken. Better than school dinners, eh? Oh, thanks, Ben. It's all paid for. OK, love it. <laughs> you know, Madeline's not done a thing this morning. She sat back there painting her toenails. She always does that when she's in a... Mm, I'm surprised she didn't get there spot to defend them for her. Well, Derek's going back on his word. Yes, but only after careful thought and consideration. In my opinion... Your opinion? My opinion, yes. A crime has been committed and it's somebody's duty to report it to the proper authorities. Yes, that's somebody being me, I suppose. Well, this car radio business did start with you. Yeah, because I committed the unforgivable sin of having my radio pinched. Yeah, my point exactly, then it turns up in Derek's car. Now, I'm sorry, Alf, but... Leaving it to the McDonald's to sort out is no good at all, not in my book. Now, listen, maybe there's pros and cons in this. It's like I said to Derek, you can't turn a blind eye to theft. Oh, Steve's not a thief, I'm sure of it. How can you be certain? Well, I can't be certain as such. No, so it's better left to the police to decide. So can I tell Derek that you're going to report it? Aye. Hmm? Aye. <laughs> Boss you about. Just tell her her mummy wants to see Santa Claus as well, will you? 
<laughs> sure you don't mind? No, honestly. Um, Ken didn't say he'd come. He's probably got held up at school. No, he's avoiding me, girl. He's got no reason to avoid you. Hey, come on, enough of this. You get going, you've got to date with Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see Sarah's face when she taps eyes on Percy's beard. <laughs> You're not taking it to better buys, I Take her somewhere posh. Oh, the parking's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoon, ladies. Oh, I'm in dire no. need of a cup of tea. I don't know how Kevin stands that place. I can taste the oil as soon as I walk in that place. Well, some tongues don't need lubricating, do they? Sit down. I'll bring it over. Do you mind if I linger a bit? Got some paperwork to do. I'll ring Martin. Cancel Santa Claus. Sorry, Gail. <laughs> Out in a cleft stick, love. Mavis has come on all holier than that when she's got Derek jumping through hoops. So I can expect to knock on the door then, can I? I knew it had happened, I knew it. Look, tell Jim. Maybe he can have a word with Derek. Oh, and make things worse, you mean? I know Jim's words. Well, you'll have to tell him, love. I'm sorry. Where is he? <gasps> and as if by magic! Oh, ho! <laughs> hey! Now then, come on, Sarah. Tell Santa what you want for Christmas. Uh, yes. You'll have to speak up. You get to my age, you're getting a bit mutton, Jeff. <laughs> you did say a bike, didn't you? Well, we'll have to see whether you're big enough for a bike. Just stand there, stand All up right. straight, put All your right. shoulders back. What do you think, Dad? I don't know. She looks tall enough for me, Santa. I agree with you, yes. Right then, it's a bike for you. And what about him? Uh, he's on a push-along truck, Santa. And a push-along truck for young David. Yes, and why does he need a push-along truck, eh? To make him learn to walk. That's right. Oh, that's very good. Right, now be good, won't you? Now see you on Christmas Eve. You won't see me because you've been fast asleep. Why, well, fat chance, Santa, fat chance. Here are your presents. Thank you. I thought you'd got a job. Tea break. Right, let her at home. I'm not popular. Tracy, have you got a minute? How many teas in Carberry? Um, two. <laughs> I thought so. One of Kevin's estimates. Looks like Rosie's done it. <laughs> Straight up, I mean, you look at that. Listen, sit down, do me a favour. Just uh, read it through for me, will you? No. That's it, Cab. Retta. Rest of care. Thought so. Education, it's a wonderful thing. Shame I didn't have one. You don't mean that. But education? Don't quote me. But I wish your dad had taught me. My dad? I said, don't quote me. Well, you're richer than my dad and he went to university. It's more the wealth than money. Your dad's better off than me. He's got you. And then there's your mum. Oh, come off it. You know they're getting a divorce. Get in. Not got. Not yet, anyway. Well, they won't change their minds. Well, maybe not, but I mean, uh, how do you feel? I mean, what do you want? Well, it's not a question of what I want, is it? Why not? You love them both enough to know that they're making a big mistake. Now, you sit them down at Christmas and you tell them. Christmas? Yeah. Good time there. Listen, believe you me. My dad's not coming at Christmas. So, make it happen. You miss this moment and it's curtains for all three of you. You're not a kid anymore. You're an adult, capable of making a few decisions of your own. If you want them together this Christmas, you fix it. Listen, I'm going. Are you coming? Um, yeah. Why are you saying all this? Oh, I don't know. Probably mellowing in me old age. Besides, you did me a favor. I'll see ya. Yeah, oh, and uh, remember what I said. Don't quote me. No, well. Still here, is he? An hour and a quarter. I timed it. I'm running out of things to do back there. I've nearly rubbed the enamel off that freezer. Can't throw him out. He's the landlord. Mm. Hey. You'd have thought she'd have come with him, wouldn't you? Who? Gail. Let Martin bring kids on his own. I mean, it's not natural, is it? Oh, I hope Martin hasn't upset him. Hey, oh, Curly. Hey, you didn't call him Santa Claus, did you? <laughs> I might have done, I? A little septin. <laughs> What's he want, Percy? <laughs> <laughs> I still thought you'd have brought Gail with you. She's too busy earning money, I it. Someone's got to, the way things are. Ah, so when are you moving, then? Uh, well, we start shifting the stuff tomorrow, and I've got the champ here to help me, haven't what I? What do you mean? Start shifting stuff, are you moving her, aren't you? Yeah, but we're doing it all in shifts, you know. You shift a bit here, you shift a bit there. Oh. Right, come on, Sarah, let's get some cardboard boxes, shall we? 
can see what he likes when not joined at the hip. What time did you go shopping? This morning. Oh, the minute out left it shots when she's finished. I thought him a very posh pullover, actually. Does it match his trail a bit? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's Alma doing for Christmas? Well, she was talking about going away with Ken, but I don't think they've decided anything. Well, if Alma doesn't fancy it, I'll go. Hey, you're pushing it, lady. Alec could just turn up unexpected. I would not go swanning off without leaving him a note. Gone away with Ken Barlow, make yourself some chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it. I would. <laughs> Ignore her, maybe she's got a pub to run. <laughs> and Alf's got a shop to run, haven't he? What's that supposed to mean? Well, it means that profit sometimes transcends principles. What did you say? Well, the McDonald's, I suppose, are customers. And it seems clear that Alf doesn't want to lose that custom by bringing Steve's shady dealings to the attention of the police. Who says he's not? Well, it's patently obvious. I've just spoken to him earlier. Oh, we'll see about that. I heck, maybe she you want your pound of flesh, don't you? Steve MacDonald was in receipt of stolen goods, Rita. Right, love, I'll get the door for you. Ta-da. Oh, am I glad to see you. But well, he won't be. Where is he? Tracy will be home, and I'm past my time already. Where's Al? He's gone home. Nerves are playing him up. He said I was to hang on till you got here. Failing that, I was to get Sally in early. You what? Al's instructions. See you tomorrow, love. You coward. It smells a bit off to me. Can I change it? <sighs> He's gone to ground. He's hiding. You know, I was thinking of taking driving lessons. What do you think, Mum? What? Driving lessons. Me. Hey, should I get teacher? No, I want proper ones, you know, in a driving school. Listen, Doughhead, I took a driver's instructor's course when I was in the army, you know? Yeah, but I want to drive a car, Dad, not a tank. So what do you think, Mum? Why ask me? Because it's expensive, and he's skimp. Well, how are your brother's right? It's expensive, you know, so. Well, he's never wrong, is he? But if he wanted the lessons, he'd sell the furniture. Well, here we go again. He doesn't want a car, he wants a violin. Hey, hey, hang on, you two. Come on, hey, Andrew. There's no favourites in this house, you know. No, well, you could have fooled me. It's not hard. Shut it! The lot of you, shut it! Stop staring it right! Uh, yeah, you see, And you! Trouble. Stop kidding yourself because your son here is in terrible trouble. I am sick to death of the lot of you! So what's happened? What the. Of course I am, love. I'm over the moon, kid. I can't wait to see you. Look. Let me know when you've made your arrangements. Yeah. Take care, won't you, love? Bye now. Uh, Till needs some silver. Do you want me to do it or shall you? What's up? Christmas. Looks like I won't be on my own after all. Alec. Vicky. She should have been going away with her mate for the holidays, but there's illness, measles. Victoria? Susan, her <gasps> mate. Changed, did you say? Hi. Be out in a minute. She said she'd do this till herself in a minute. Didn't she trust us or what? No, no, she just had a phone call. Uh, good news, I think. Young Victoria's coming for Christmas. Oh, that is good news. Isn't it? Uh -huh. Look, it's disrupting my family and I don't like my wife being upset. You keep your temper, you promise. Look, you don't understand my position. I can't understand very well. Jim. Look, it's all right. Look, I held my hand up and went to time and expense to sort this out. Now you're stabbing me in the back. No, I keep telling you it's not me. So Martin's definitely moving tomorrow, then? There's no definite about clever old is, and couldn't give me a straight answer. I bet he turns up with Ancart tomorrow. First time me and our Jack moved down, she know, it right back of the call, Laura. Do him moving himself. Makes sense, I think. He doesn't make sense. Hardly civil. He's like talking to one of them answer machines. That, that wardrobe fell off. You know, at the corner of Chapman Street. Happy days. <laughs> eh? Eh? 
Oh, Derek Club, Mavis. Uh, can I get you a drink? Well, that's very kind. Uh, half, please, uh, Mavis. Well, sweet Sharon. Oh. Angie. Yes. Keep your hands in your pockets and your big mouth shut. All right, all right. Did uh, Audrey manage to find you? She was trying to ring you from the shop. Yes, I saw. Yeah, not pleasant. Will you bring them over? Yeah. Shall we? Uh, like... Well, I got my information from a very reliable source. Audrey Robert. Oh, well, you know what she's like for embellishing a tale. I mean, well, we did talk about it, but, well, that's as far as it went. So what are your plans, then? I'm open to offers. How about you? Same boat as you, but looks of it. <laughs> Mavis is right, Alf. We could be accused of condoning a felony. Accessories ignoring the fact. Yes, but as you so rightly say, Mavis, it all started with me. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, the onus is on me, isn't it? You know, as the injured party. Yep. That's why we so saw it. So, if I you... decide to be magnanimous, that's the end of the argument. But you're a councillor, for heaven's sake, upholder of civic pride and dignity. <sighs> Where's the dignity in, in upsetting a pregnant young woman, eh? Where's the pride in giving a young lad a criminal record, eh? Go on, tell me, Derry. Mavis, I would appreciate your advice. Well, we don't want to cause unnecessary hardship. No, and just think on this, Mavis. Derek and me carry a lot of clout round here, don't we, Derek? A lot of clout. Oh, a lot of clout. Yeah. So what's the point of taking a sledgehammer to crack a walnut? He has got a point, you know, Mavis. Yeah, well, see it my way, will you? Come on, sup up and we'll have another. Oh. <sighs> You're being ridiculous. Look, you asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I told you. It just means setting one extra place at the table. Oh, come off it, Tracy. You know how your dad would see it. Wouldn't so much be a Christmas dinner or as a re-engagement party. Now he's being ridiculous. I know you, Tracy. If I say no, you'll sulk. Make me feel guilty so you can get your own way over something. Don't be childish, Mum. Look, if you say no, it's an opportunity miss, that's all. Opportunity for what? To get together on the one day of the year when past troubles can be forgotten. It won't mean nothing unless you want it to. But if you're too frightened to risk it, then forget I ever spoke. I'm going ringing Debbie. She's after Florida for Christmas. Tracy! <sighs> All right, you can ask him. Just make it clear it was your idea, OK? Thanks, Mum. Oh. And stop pinching my perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Now then, you know what they say about long drinkers? What? Hey, you, listen, I've only had the three. Anyway, it's more than enough for a working girl, so, hey. I'll see you, Jack. See you, Al. Mm. Tell our love. Bye. Can you imagine? Ah! Oh. Oh. Cherchez La Femme, and she's here all the time. Oh, well, I, I was uh, just I, going. I could have phoned, I suppose, but I wanted to tell you in person, and when there was no reply from your flat, what, well... Tell me what? Well, bad news, I'm afraid. We can't get a flight. Oh. I tried, believe me. Oh, solid for Christmas. However, I took a chance. Opted for a hotel in the Cotswolds. That's the good news, I hope. The Cotswolds? Oh, that is good news. You know, that is very good news. <laughs> <laughs> well, phew! Right, well, this calls for a celebratory drink, I think. Great! Are we ready, then? Or do you want to rip the kitchen sink out? You know, tonight? you brought all these tins home with you. You've never used them. I've got to make a chinny cam cam. Yeah, never materialised though, did it? They've been in that cupboard for months. Come Weeks. on. That's the whole point of tins, isn't it? You use them when you need them. Yeah, well, next time you want one, let me know and I will bring you one. Honestly, I think you're getting worse. I don't believe it. Alf! What? Phone the police. Alf! Right, that's the bed taken apart. I can tell us exactly what you don't need, because anything that can go today, will go today. Ah, uh, leave us a mattress, won't you? Uh, do you have them boxes upstairs with the kiddies' toys? Well, I'll take them up. Uh, that old baby stuff, we don't need that. Um, we can do without that little wardrobe, can't we? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but what else? I don't need stereo. Hey, of course we do. I'm in the house all day, remember? <laughs> Gee, hey, what's she like? And all this stuff here under kitchen sink, well, that's not even seen daylight, has it? Um Listen, are you sure you want to do all this, moving all this stuff to Coronation Street? Uh, the alternative being, eh? Oh, come on, Gail, we try and do this in one day. We'll break us backs. Come on, I just want to get moving. I just feel guilty you're doing it all on your own. Well, I've told you, leave it to me. It's a doddle, all right? I want to come with you. Uh, well, you've got to go to Pauline, sweetheart. I want to see the world. Oh, but you're just going to be in my way, that's all. And listen, Pauline's going to bring you up to the cafe later on to see me. 
Right. And we're all going to be moving to the new house in a couple of days, aren't we? And do you know who's more excited than anybody? Martin! <laughs> Martin! Oh, no. I've no idea how much he charges for them. I think he just usually guesses. 5p either way, as long as he's in pocket, you know. <laughs> you ready for the end of term? Oh, yeah, it's Santa fat. <laughs> yeah, it's been a real toughie, this one. No thanks to... Well, no offence. Mr. Barlow, Ken. yeah. <laughs> oh, Alf, have you any idea? Audrey, uh, do you know how much... And what did I do? Have you got him? I don't know whether that meant of Alex not passing messages on or Alex just ignoring them. Why well, can't you ring the ship? I mean, you can do it these days, you know. I'll wring his neck if I find out he's dodging me. Listen, you're in trouble if Victoria turns up here without Alec. She was a big enough handful the last time she was here with the two of you. Tell me about it. Well, more to the point, love. Look, it's it's her first Christmas since she lost her mum and dad. I know that. Well, did you tell him it were urgent? Oh, come on, Betty. Do me a favour. Stop stating the obvious. Of course I oh, have. Pardon me. I thought it was helping. Yeah, well, you're not. You're just winding me up. I'm sorry, love. You're right, of course, yeah. Christmas. Come here, come here, come here, David. Something like this for you. Watch yourself in there, David. Right. <coughs> well, Martin, what, I love? don't like this. Well, you won't have to for much longer, will you, Poppy? Right, you think we need that? Nah. Nah. Uh, Martin, you made a mess. I know. Think we need that? Nah. It's empty, isn't it? Right, fair enough. I can't be I know you, that. Sick. you shouldn't have moved the car. We had to get to work. You destroyed the evidence. You did it deliberately, didn't oh, you? Oh, don't Listen, talk so daft. You know it's a police job. Look, all I'm saying... You are waffling because you're frightened of Jim McDonald. I am not. Look, if you weren't, you'd have phoned the police straight away. Well, it might have nothing to do with the McDonald's. In that case, there's no harm in phoning them, is there? Yeah, then again, it... They might, which I think is nearer the truth, and that's why you're bottling out. Look, just calm down, sure. will you? We've got to think this thing through. <sighs> if we don't report it, Alf, we can't claim for it, can we? Huh? Oh, well, so what? Let's foot the bill for yet another winder. Look, that radio was stolen twice. Yeah. Well, how do we account for that without going into the other business? Mm. The other business? Meaning the fact that you bought a knocked-off radio <sighs> to replace the one that you got next? Yes, 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 yes. All right, I'll go see Jim. But I can't go accusing. Mm. Alf, what's happened to your car window? <laughs> oh, Sarah, no, what are you doing? Oh, you're not helping at all. It's all supposed to be back in the box. I know I've made a mess. I was going to clear it. All right! <sighs> Who's this at the door? Yes. Hello. Uh, I saw a girl in cap. She right, said no. you were trying to race Titanic single handed. Right, well, come in, will you? Everything's not as straight as it should be, like, but oh, you know. Right, you say that. Oh, uh, look, Martin, be serious. You can't start moving out with two kids under your feet. Well, they Paul these, aren't they? All right, then, what's the game plan? You're shifting boxes. Look, Don, everything's fine. It's all in hand, OK? Well, what about feeding kids? Well, we're going to get him down chippy or something like that. Is that before or after you've changed his nappy? Well, well, afterwards, I suppose, thinking about it. Yeah, all right, look, about the afternoon off, I'll give you hand, we'll use my cab. Oh, don't know, I've told you, everything's sorted. Of course it is, of course it is. Shall me and Sarah nip down to chippy? <sighs> yeah, and then we go to Pauline's, and then I'll box Martin's ears for not asking me to give him a lift at first place, right? Yes. Come on. Yes, right. right. Thanks, Don. <sighs> well, come on, champ. Let's get that bed down from upstairs, eh? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hey, hey. What's going on? How do you mean? Well, according to Betty, Betty's trying to get Alec back. Only because Victoria's coming. Well, is it? What? Coming. I've no idea. You do, sir, for Bet's sake. Well, I was looking forward to a good Christmas. It's been lovely and quiet since Phileas Fogg's been gone. No, Jack. You need a leader. You look lost without him, I, I do swear. not need a leader. I do not need a leader. <sighs> you mind if I join you? What's your problem, Alfie? Well, it's not pleasant, Jim. Look, I thought we'd had all this out. I thought you'd sorted it out. Yeah, well, my car's been broken into again. And? Look, I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just telling you because it's happened. Oh, you think my Steve might have something to do with it, no, yeah? No, no, but I would like you to have a word with him. I mean, those lads he's running about with. 
to make a career out of it, you know. They were responsible last time. Alf, will you catch yourself on? If you think there's just one gang of yobbles running around pinching radios, you want your eyes tested. Now, just hang on a minute. I've been very good about this so far. I've been very patient. I mean, if I'd have said anything in the first place, your Steve would have been in deep trouble. Well, I didn't, so just hear me out. Yeah, right. Well, you got your radio back, and I've had words with Steve about his so-called mates. Well, it's not just as simple as that, is it? I mean, I've got to go out and get another plumbing window now, and that's where the money comes in. Now, if I don't report to the police, the insurance people will, and they're going to start asking why it wasn't reported in the first place. I mean, I'm ducking and diving to save other people's skin. And I won't placate Audrey again, not this time. So, come on, tell me, what do I say to him? All right, all right, Alf. Look, I'll phone round and I'll get you a replacement window, all right? And what about my radio? I'll find you one. Yeah. Well, I'm not blaming Steve, you know. Oh, no, 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 of course you're not. Hello. Hey, hello, Emily. How's business? Oh, same Christmas rush as anyone else, I expect. Quite a few donations, actually. Cash, you mean? Yes, we usually put on a bit of a Christmas party at the children's ward at Weatherfield. Oh, Emily, you're a saint. Don't you just want to put your feet up at Christmas? I do. Is that all you're doing for Christmas Day? Oh, are you push for helpers? Oh, not at the hospital. That's all organised. I thought you might like to come for your Christmas dinner. With you and Santa Sugden? <laughs> I'm sorry, I led you into that. Oh, Emily, I do sympathise, and I'm not trying to dodge it. But I think Mavis is working up to asking me there. Oh, I see. Still, she might just turn turtle and just want to twosome, you know, just her and Derek. If that happens, have her to give you a shout. Mm, please. Brown is on. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, yes, she is. Hello, Bobby. Oh, Big oh, how are you? Oh, oh, come on through, you must be exhausted. Hi, hello. Uh, you all right, sweetheart? Eh? You all right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, you see, what it is, if Alec gets dragged back off his ocean voyage, he isn't going to be a pleased man, is he? And who's going to get the stick? Us. You. Yes, me. <laughs> so, no holiday. No holiday. Susan got the measles and the parents, well, they didn't want to take the risk. Oh, well, she couldn't help the measles. Her dad's a doctor, isn't he? Yes. Oh, but if you knew Susan, I mean, this is going to sound awful, but she didn't have late on when she knew the holiday was cancelled. I'd have gone round the bend staying there, honestly. Anyway, I'm sorry if it messed up your plans. Hey, come on, it's you that's got the rough end. Meant to be abroad. Well, I'm trying not to think about that. Where's Grandad? I'm trying to reach him. Reach him? He's not still on the cruise. Barbados, or thereabouts, I think. Well, that's miles away, isn't it? Oh, but once they get the message through, well, I mean, there's plenty of flights back. Touch wood, we'll have your granddad home for Christmas. You mean he wasn't due back yet? Betty's going to hate me. Hey, now listen. He'll probably be glad of the excuse to get home, knowing him. And I'm sure he couldn't come up with a better excuse than you. There were glass all over the passenger oh. seat again. Oh. This goes better with this. Yes, yes, it does, it? actually. Right. Yeah. So I It's settled. Oh. Jim's foot in the bill, so say no more about it. And I gave him a hard time, so don't go ladly it on. I mean, it's best this way. What was a messy? Messy meaning dealt with. Yeah, well, we'll get compensated. Oh, never mind compensation. I phoned the police. Uh, what? You don't understand, do you, Alfie? You've got yourself into such a mess. Your car has been smashed into twice, and you dare not report it. Where's it all going to end? Hmm? I'll tell you. Here. They're sending someone round. Did I didn't know you'd start chemistry. Uh, neither did I, but Mr. Johnson went off sick. It's all striving off in. Ah, 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 staff maxim, the God shall form allegiance in the face of demons. Well, third year, isn't it, anyway? Listen, I've been thinking about Christmas. Oh? I wondered if you'd come, if you'd want to. Well, uh, I don't know if I'd be... I'll be doing most of the cooking to give me mum a rest. No, that's wrong. I'll be doing most of the cooking because I said I wanted to. It's just as easy to do for three as two. What's brought all this on? He just wouldn't listen, would you? No, because I keep hearing the same old thing. Cop out, Alf. You've got your reputation to think about. Now, this has gone on long enough. I'll be with you in a minute, love. 
Do you know what you've done? Now, listen, that young lad is ferrying knocked-off radios about like they were handbags. Everybody's turning a blind eye. He makes me sick. Second only to them daft enough to go and buy them off him. I had it all sorted. You had it all shushed up again. Now, what kind of lesson is that going to teach him, eh? Audrey, he didn't break into the car. Maybe not, but it's odds on he knows who does, whoever he's getting those radios from. Oh. Yes, love, what can I get for you? Detective Constable Chapman, auto theft liaison. My job's basically to advise you how it could have been avoided, but it seems you may know more than me about that. Well, uh... It's Councillor Roberts, isn't it? Mm. Yes, I thought that's what the phone call said. Alec, what's kept you? Vicky's home. For Christmas. He's been called off. Susan's sick. You'll have to come back, love. What? No, I'm not asking. I don't know what to talk about. No, she's fine. I just don't know how to keep things going, that's all. You could get a flight. All right. Talk to them about it. But you will ring me, won't you? Please. I've had a hell of a job getting a message through to you. All right. Just explain to them. It's family love. Try then. Ring. Hello, love. You've had my room redecorated. Oh, it looks well for it, doesn't it? Much brighter. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Listen, what are we going to get up to before your granddad comes back? Well, I wouldn't mind going shopping. I've got your present, but I'm struggling for his. I was going to post him before I got my flight. Oh, there's no need to do that, love. Oh, of course there is. I'd feel embarrassed opening presents in front of you both if I hadn't got you anything. We don't have to go today, just before he gets back. Of course we can. Is that him? He's going to get a flight as soon as possible. He'll ring me in the morning. But there you are. Now, what did I tell you? All right, mate. Finish then. Yeah, I'll sign for you. Woo! Just at the bottom here. All right, thanks again. Chill out. There you go, mate. Ah, oh, Don. Hey, you're oh. the same. Good health. Yeah. <clears throat> no thanks to you. <laughs> oh. Hey. What do you think's going on over there, then? It's probably half the invitation to the Freemasons come through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Don. Thanks again for the graft. I don't think I'll manage without you. No, neither do I. You no. wasted already and you haven't finished yet. All you had to do was pick up phone. Well, oh, I know that. What could I do? It's so okay, I could get it sorted with a good pair of biceps. How do you feel about moving? Oh, I feel very good about it, Don. No, it's good, moving house together. I mean, you know, I mean, I moved in Gales, fair enough, but I couldn't get shot of the idea that Brian was breathing down my neck, you know. Nothing spooky like, it's just, well, you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah, good one. Right. Cheers again. Hey up, hey up. Some action over there. Ooh, the temperature's dropped suddenly, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I'm looking for a Mrs. Wilton. Listen, you want to be upside down till you get sorted out. You want to know which cupboard to look in for what. The kids will be away because don't like the new wallpaper, but it'll be yours. New house, new move, new start. Do you think we've done the right thing? Well, you signed for the mortgage, you know. Haven't that you? wasn't the question. Do you know what? All the blokes I ever had, I either moved in with them or they moved in with me. Never a joint decision. Don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> lucky. <laughs> we'll still be moving in in 1993 at this rate. <laughs> anyway, you could too. You're off to the Cotswolds. Oh, don't make it sound so grand. I mean, we've planned to Spain on Christmas Eve. It had me own way. It's still not bad, though, is it? Well, you can Hot buttered toast without the fingerprints. Coming up. And a cup of tea without the moat. Oh, thank you. Pardon. Well, it should be in the cup, not in the sauce, eh? Oh, Santa Claus, aren't you? A Father Christmas. But if I buy you a nice sticky bun, can it just be our secret? The train was late, but it wasn't a bad journey. Oh, well. Never mind. If it can't be helped, Merry Christmas anyway, Grandad. Is that Alec? He sounds very well, but, um... He's not coming home for Christmas. Hey? They need him on the cruise or something. Oh. 
Alec. What do you mean? And what am I supposed to do? Pig. He's on his way, apparently. Look, Mrs Wilton, this is not an interrogation. I just want a little chat with you on the strength of what your neighbour, Mrs Roberts, told me. Your husband doesn't need to be here. Oh, well, I'd rather you talk to him, really. It's a very simple question. The radio you bought had belonged to someone else, hadn't it? Yes. Who? Well, Mr Roberts. But you bought it from who? Look, Mavis, traffic's bad from Saddleworth at this time. If you're waiting for dirt, I'd rather you do it round at your house, OK? Thanks, love. Steve MacDonald. I'm sorry? Steve MacDonald. You sure about that? Well, I'm sure that's what I was told. Thank you. You'll be around if we need to take a statement. Yes. I'll be in touch. Oh, Rita, this... Oh, Alf's right. We are all accomplices. Hey, you didn't stove anybody's car windows in. I couldn't bear it if I have to go to court. Oh, now, calm down. Nobody's asking you to. No, but she wants me to make a statement and look at me. I couldn't look a judge in the eye and tell a lie. Well, Mavis, that says more in your favour than it does Steve McDonald's. I should never have mentioned his name. Well, he was the one that got you all in this mess. <clears throat> oh, Martin, that's fabulous. Oh, thank you very much. I never thought you'd do it all on your own. Well, what did I say? Two good biceps, better knives, no sweat. Martin? Yes? Where's the cooker? Oh, aye. Uh, well, the guy from Lecky Board said today was the only day he could reconnect it. Well, we'd have been, we'd have been without anything for Christmas otherwise. Well, that's great. Yeah. But what do we do for now? Um, you see that thing over there? <laughs> Martin! <laughs> <laughs> for heaven's sake! <laughs> I didn't know what to get that. Yeah, come on through. Tracy's just nipped round to Nicholas, but she shouldn't be long. Oh, I came to see you, actually. Christmas. Yes, I, uh, I gather Tracy's mentioned that to you. Is she all right? Well, she's clearly feeling it, us being divided at Christmas. And she obviously wants something to happen. She's not in the infant's can. She knows you've got your life to get on with. Mm, granted, but not at any cost. I'd hate to think I was letting her down. She's very special to me. Well, how would you feel about it? Really? Really? I'd sooner never have been asked. Well, if I vote for... I could be misread, and if I voted against, I'd be making a point. And really, I have no feelings about it. Except to say we could probably make a decent day of it. Do you understand? Yeah. And uh, Tracy is insisting on being head chef this year, so if you do decide to come, I take no responsibility for the entertainment. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Any decisions? Oh, who said that? I had nothing to do with our property's car. I had nothing to do with smashing any cars. Steve, sit down. Those stolen radios must have come from somewhere. I bought them. So you did know they were stolen? Your name has come up in not one, but two conversations. It can't be coincidence, can it? Hey, hold on a minute now. Listen, my lad's no thief, you know. There were somebody's radios to begin with, Mr MacDonald. Yeah, but he didn't nick them, did he? He bought them. Fair enough, I'll accept that, but I want to know where from. I think we'd better discuss this down at the station, haven't we? Come on, Steve, don't be such a buck agent. Do you want to get roped in for the lot of this or what? Your dad's right. And I'm innocent. You've admitted to more than innocent. Just tell me who you bought them from. You're 17, so you're old enough to be questioned without your parents. Hey, wait a minute, lady. I'm down the station with him, aren't I? Tell your mother when she comes back from shopping where we are. Gently. You know, my wife's pregnant. This isn't doing her a lot of good, you know. I'm sure Steve knows that already. You'll need your coat. Come on, sir. Because you break up at weekends, don't you? Well, I don't get that many favours. I'm sure she'll give me a day off. And Audrey can stand in for me. Alma. What? Look, I, uh... I really don't know how to tell you this, but, uh... Well, Tracy's invited me around for Christmas Day. I wasn't desperate or anything. There weren't any tears, but... Well, I feel it's a fairly pointed reminder that she's missing out. 
and that's not fair. I, uh, I really don't think it's fair on her, on her, not after last Christmas. You've not said yes. Oh, Ken. I'm so sorry. the latest news bulletin, Mrs. Roberts. My son was lifted last night, accused of having a stolen radio. He's got you to thank for that, hasn't he? You blew the whistle on him, conveniently forgetting to mention that your husband bought the radio off him. Right and wrong, you wouldn't know the difference, would you? You just use whatever word happens to suit you at the time. You make me sick, Audrey. the matter? They'll be coming for me next. There'll be a knock on that door. I know they will. No, no, no. Just pull yourself together and tell me very slowly what's happened. Steve MacDonald's been arrested for, well, you know what for. And I bought a car radio from him, so I'm an accomplice. I'm a receiver of stolen property, Rita. And what are we always reading in those papers we sell? What? Well, if there were no receivers, there'd be no thieves. Oh, it's obvious, isn't it? At night follows day. They'll be coming for me next. The police, the will. Oh, dear. Right, Mum, anything you want doing? Any errands you want running or anything? Yeah, right. Well, I've got a couple of things that can be doing anyway. You've got to tell them, Steve. You've got to. I can't. You'd rather go to prison, would you? It'll not come to that, Mum. It won't if you tell them. You know, I don't understand you and my dad's logic. I mean, what good will it do me if I tell the police who else is involved? It'll put you in the good books. That's what it'll do. They might even let you off. Oh, you don't know that, Mum. Well, let's give it a try. For God's sake, Steve, please. Oh, I can't. I can't shop me mates. Oh, some mates. How can you be mates with thieves? They're the lowest of the low. They're not worth being mates with. And they're certainly not worth protecting. I don't know what you were doing, getting mixed up with them in the first place. I wish that... I wish I'd never mess around with them. But I did. I can't split on a mum. I just can't. Good morning, ladies. Or should I say a Merry Christmas to one and all? I mean, when do you start saying Merry Christmas? Now, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, when? Well, I wouldn't mind if I never heard it said. I mean, it's a fallacy, isn't it? Merry Christmas? Do me a favour. Remember last year? Listen to her complaining. Christmas in a cosy little hotel with Barlow? Well, it's helpless bothering, eh? Near it gets the worse of prospect. Mind you, can't say I blame her. I'd rather spend Christmas with a roll of lino than Barlow. Yes, that's the problem. She's not spending Christmas with him anymore. Oh, why? What's happening? Uh, you better ask her. I think I've said enough as it is. I wouldn't say that, darling. I'll have a copy, please. You can say if you breath. What have I said? Mum sent you to talk to me, hasn't she? No. However, I am going to talk. We can say if you breath. I agree with you, mate. It probably wouldn't make much difference to the police, I mean, if you did split. But do it for her, eh? Do it for Mum. Do anything that's going to make her feel a little bit better, Steve, because she's going out of her mind with worry. Can't you see that? I'm not blind. Of course I can see. Well, then. Well, it'd just be a waste of time. It wouldn't accomplish anything. The cops are still doing me, except I'd... Well, I'd be a graft. Um, can I get you something? And a Merry Christmas to you, too. You are, I love. It's a serious question. Yes, yes it is. Well, how can somebody who should be whizzing down a mountain over pure white snow, under a clear blue sky, how can they be all right, when instead they're sat in the rovers, 
thumbing through a boring magazine. Yes, well, I do see your point, love. But look at it this way. While you're sitting there, you'll have missed that lump of rock that you'd have skied slap bang into and broke your leg. Very funny. Well, I do my best, love. Sometimes in very trying circumstances. No, if you're bored, why don't you tidy the room up a bit? I'm joking. No. I could always join Grandad on the cruise. That's what I told him. Don't worry, it got me. No sign of Liz. She's gone flaming here, well, hasn't she? Oh, well, I suppose she has got good reason. Unlike you and your phantom bad back. My back is never the same two days of trot. Mm, bit like your fairy stories. Look, if you're not happy, Jack, you can always go to that other pub that offered you a better job. You're never going to let that drop, are you? No, no, well, Alec, when he gets back. Bar me when he gets back. What was that? Never said a word. Do you know, you don't know how lucky you are standing there, supping vodka, not a care in the world. Oh, I suppose you think you've got problems. I'm, I'm damn sure I have. Roving husband, sassy kid, surly staff. And this is where folk are supposed to be coming next week to have a good time. Oh, well, I've only got a fugitive from the law in the cabin. You what? Mavis. She thinks she's going to be arrested over these car radios. She bought one off Steve McDonald for Derek. Uh, and will she? Will she, egg? Please have better things to do than arrest Mavis. Now, come on, have you ever seen anybody who looks less like a criminal than Mavis? Except a koala bear. But she's refusing to leave the shop in case they've got squad cars out looking for her. Mavis, I know, Ma Baker will. Do you know, we shouldn't laugh, because Vicky could have got mixed up in all that. She was very pally with the McDonald boys. Oh, and some Christmas they're going to have. Do you know, Rita, you're dead right. I've not got any problems at all. Chop, chop, ladies. The faster these shells are filled, the faster they'll be empty again. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Mm. See the store, strip burke on Christmas, strip bear. What an achievement that would be. What a sight. What a feather in my cap. <laughs> hey, are we getting a bonus for this? What? What bonus? Well, an extra bonus for that extra work we've done. Mrs. Duckworth, what you call extra work merely brings your productivity up to the normal level here. Yes. And just remember, there are two million unemployed out there, you know, right? Me. Hey, well, I just knew you were going to threaten us with that. Well, I'm going to have to stick a stuffed turkey up my coat when I go out of here tonight. Don't be daft, fear. Well, I don't care. I just remembered another problem for you to add to your list, Mr. Watts. My ever-growing list. Can't you deal with it, whatever it is? No, I don't deal with specifics. Mine is the overview, the grand plan. Can I ask you something, Mr. Holdsworth? What? Why isn't your nose completely flat? Hey, you threatening me again. What is it? What is the problem? Mr. Sugden, I want him monitored. Why, has he got a dicky ticker or something? No, no. I want him observed doing his job as Santa. He seems to be doing all right to me. Yeah, on the surface, maybe. Lots of ho ho hoing. I think he's putting out the wrong vibes. I mean, he's raw. It's subliminal, isn't it? Is it? Well, of course it is. Santa, Rezis, get your hands in your pocket. That's the message he should be giving to the punters, not bemoaning the old Christmas ethos like he seems to be doing. So monitor him, right? And while I'm at it, you seem to be more than a little hang dog of late. Push yourself up a bit, Mr. Watts. Come on, dance to the music of the dill like me. <laughs> Sorry, madam. Oh, Mr. Steve? Mum? Hello, love. Why haven't you gone to work? Oh, I couldn't face it. They'll all be talking about it. Hey, Mum, come on, don't they? Oh, I'm sorry. Why won't he see sense, Andy? Oh, are these mates if he'll do us so much to... Just a bunch of slime balls, Mum. Don't use that sort of language. Oh, I'm sorry. Yobs. You know who they are, don't you? No. Oh, well, I'm not sure. You do know, Andy. It's nothing to do with me, really, is it? Of course it is. You're Steve's brother. If he's too stupid to help himself, then you should help him. Oh, are these lads? It's up to Steve to tell you, Mum. Steve won't tell me. He'd rather stew in his own juice. God knows why. He owes these lads nothing. Nothing! Be scared. He'll go to prison. I know he will. No, he won't. 
His whole life will be ruined. He'll not be able to get a job. Something like this sticks with you forever. It'll be like it's been branded. Branded a thief. Mum. Mum. What? I'll tell you who they are. Well. What are you going to do if I do tell you? I'll give the names to the police. That's what I'll do. <sighs> well, who are they? Redfern. One of them's called Carl Redfern. Carl Redfern. Who else? Stuart Cunliffe. Go on. Scott Mason, Mickey Robinson, Craig Wilson. Thanks very much, Mrs. Earnshaw. Bye, love. How did I do? Very good, very professional. Oh, yes, Mike. I'll serve him. Oh, competition. Only because she's got nothing better to do. <laughs> right, I'll have a pack of those cigars here, please, love. Certainly, sir. Um, could I interest you in a plum pudding? Now, what the heck would I be doing with plum pudding? They're not selling very well. Or I'll have one on one condition. You come round and cook it, and the turkey, and all the trimmings. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm having a party. My dad's coming round for Christmas dinner. Ken. That's right. Well, I'm very pleased to hear that. I mean, that's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? Families getting together, pulling a few crackers, eh, Tracy? Right, I bet you're pleased about it, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. Good! Happy Christmas! <laughs> Tell me, the spirit of Christmas has even got to Mike Baldwin. Looks like it. Oh. Hello, Mavis. It's Alpin. I uh, know he's not coming in today. Oh, why not? Well, he's just taking things a bit easy. It's been a bit hectic of late, and it'll get worse. The police haven't been round, have they? The police? No. Why should they? <laughs> what is the matter with everybody today? Hey, Alf. Yeah. He's here. And he's gone straight upstairs. Yeah, they'll have to come straight down again. Steve, down here now. I did do it for the best. Yeah, of course you did, love. You know what to run of. What? Police want to see you again. When? Seven o'clock down the station. Right. Oi. Do you want to know why? Would well, you know why? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we do, yeah. Well, aren't you going to enlighten me? I've told them who your mates are. I've given them all the names. Carl Redfern, Stuart Cunliffe, Craig Wilson. You what? Look. She was only doing what you should have done. Well, oh, there was no point. No point at all. Well, they might let you off now. Now they've got somebody else to blame. The real culprit. Oh, well, you don't know what you've done. The police will not drop it. No way. Hey, you don't know. They just might. I suppose you gave them the names, didn't you? Hey, listen, lay off your brother. You might have to thank him, you know. Oh, yeah. He knows what I might have to thank him for, don't you, Andy? He knows Carl Redfern and Stuart Cunliffe. He knows them very well. And he knows exactly what they'll do when the police find out where they get their info from. Well, thanks, Andy. Thanks a lot. At least Mum did what she did out of ignorance. You didn't. What are you on about? What are these lads likely to do? Well, I'd just very likely give him a good kick in. <sighs> oh, oh, come on in, come on in, don't be frightened. Father Christmas is your friend. A bit like your granddad, you know. What's your name, then? His name's Carlton. Carlton? What do you want for Christmas, Carlton? Missed. You don't want much, do you, Carlton? Electric bike? Do you realise how much this lot's going to cost? I mean, Father Christmas brings them, but your mother still has to pay for them. Hang on a minute. What business is it of yours who pays? I'm trying to protect your love from yourself. Going overboard just because it's Christmas, this all costs cost only pound and more. Can you afford that sort of money? Or are you going to put yourself in debt for the biggest part of next year? I mean, is it worth it? Especially if you're one parent family. 
For your information, Grandad, I'm not a flaming one pair of family. And what I buy my kids for Christmas is my business. It's got nothing to do with you, you silly old fool. What sort of father Christmas are you anyway? Telling kids they can't have a good time. Come on, Carlton, I'll take you to see father Christmas at another shop. That's what you get for trying to help some folk. You know what I used to get when I was a lad? Hey, a jigsaw, a yo-yo and a bag of nuts. And I weren't unhappy. You can spoil some children, you know. Next. Oh, nice one, Percy. Well, if you could just put her mind at rest a bit, I mean, I'd be very grateful. You know what she's like. She can make a drama out of a dropped stitch, never mind a crisis. Well, Alf is still a bit worried himself. Well, you know? if you could just tell her what you told me. Uh, Mavis? Yeah? Uh, Audrey would like a word with you. What? Audrey. Uh, Mavis, I just thought I'd tell you, Alf's very worried like you are, cos he brought a radio from young Steve oh, too. I know just how he feels, Audrey. It's like having a big stone slab poised over your head, just waiting to fall and crush you. Yeah, well, anyway, um, Alf's had a word with this policeman pal of his, and this pal says he doesn't think he's got anything to worry about because he bought that radio in good faith, just like you. Doesn't think, only doesn't think with nothing to worry about. Yeah, well, that was the best he could say, sorry. Oh. Only thinks with nothing to worry about. What comforts that he doesn't know with nothing to worry about? Hey, now that's enough. There's about as much chance of you going to clink over this as me going off with John Major. <sighs> do you know, I sometimes think you enjoy frightening yourself to death. You get a kick out of it. I do not. Well, then stop worrying over this, cos there's nothing to worry about. <sighs> right? Mavis? Oh, all right. But even if the police don't take any action, Rita, I think I should give myself up. You what? Well, I'm just as guilty as Steve MacDonald is. I should have known that car radio was stolen at that price, but no! I was too interested in getting a bargain. I was motivated by money just like Steve MacDonald was. We were both of us on the fiddle. All right, then. What's stopping you? Get down to the police station now. And confess. Spare your soul if it'll make you feel better. Now? Well, it's as good a time as any. Well, it's a bit late now. Perhaps tomorrow. <laughs> Don't I always, even in the face of grace adversity? Yeah, try and do it with a smile, eh? And I mean, if you find it hard, <coughs> think of all the Christmas tips. k customers pressing hot and sticky spondulics on you. There you are. <laughs> Evening, Michael. Good evening. And what have you got planned for next week? Something expensive and exciting, like my husband's probably got up his sleeve in Barbados or wherever he decides to drop anchor. I will be around. Hmm. Well, you must be balmy with your brass and fancy free. Or are you going old? Opportunities can crop up anywhere. Is that supposed to sound highly mysterious? Yeah. You know, we're going to have to come to a different arrangement next year, no fear. I mean, all he does is give me the crummy jobs, all of them. My working hours are just one long, crummy job. I mean, what kind of working conditions are them, eh? Hey, Curly, I've warned you about this. What? Bringing your work home to me. All you finish up doing is depressing me, like I'm your wife or something. Only without the wifely perks, which I am not going into. Just complaining to your beer of why do you really enjoy yourself and spend the evening planning the perfect murder. Well, that's not very compassionate, is it? You're supposed to be a barmaid, the font of all wisdom and understanding. I can't stop, Mum. Look, you've got time for a drink with the Majors in need of a bit of company. Listen, we've got loads of packing up to do for the movie. Oh, Martin will have done it by now. How do you know that? Well, tell yourself he has, and he wants down there twitching. <laughs> Hi, girls, what you gonna have? Oh, we're all right, thank you. And if I start twitching, that's the reason. You know, wherever I go, whatever I do, he seems to be there lurking like a spider. Ah, uh, gin and tonic, please, love, and a uh, uh, white wine. And a white wine. Nice. Be in touch, Carl. Don't run away. Right. You've had it, mate. You're dead. What did that lad say to Steve? Don't know, love, I didn't quite catch it. We should have gone in with him. He's an adult, not a child. We should have got him a solicitor then. Yeah, well, at least they know we're here. You do not have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but what you say may be given in evidence. 
Right, Steve. Have you got anything to tell me tonight? No. You saw your mate then, did you? Yeah. We've recovered a dozen car radios from him and some others. Have you? All stolen, like the one you sold. I didn't know it was stolen. That's if it was stolen. Selling a radio as cheap as you sold that one. What do you think a court's going to think about that, eh, Steve? Don't know. They'll think what any reasonable person would think. It were nicked. So why didn't you think that? I don't know. You don't know much, do you? Bright lad like you. Didn't think that a dirt cheap car radio were probably stolen. Did you ask who you got it from, where he got it from? No. Who did you get it from? I told you yesterday, a scrapyard. I go to a lot of scrapyards in my job, Steve. But I never see good quality car radios lying about. Which of your mates did you buy it off? I got it from a scrapyard. Carl Redfern is your mate, isn't he? <sighs> sort of. Only sort of. Not definitely. I don't know why you didn't think that radio was stolen, Steve. You do seem to go through life in a bit of a dream, don't you? Either that or you're telling me a pack of lies. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. Yeah. Oh, hi. Right, what are you going to have, then? Oh, not for me, thanks. I should be here as it is. Martin will be sending me to bed without my supper. Oh, well, I haven't got a husband and kids to go home to, so I'll have a gin and tonic, if you don't mind. Of course you don't. Have a, have a double, if you like. <laughs> it's Christmas. I tend to get very generous at Christmas. Uh, it means death. <laughs> I'll tell you what, love, I'm glad I've seen you, because, um... Oh? Yeah. You know, with you moving and all that, I've been thinking that you won't have had time to prepare Christmas dinner and that, will well, you? Well, I was thinking on the lines of bread and water. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, why don't you come to us? Yeah, well, if you're sure. I'll guarantee yeah. that Brussels sprouts will melt in your mouth. Why don't you come to them? <laughs> oh, no, I'm fixed, thanks, Don. I'm, uh, I'm going to order his. Oh, smile when you say that, strange. <laughs> I thought I was doing. <laughs> Watch your back. Well, well. Yeah. In time to join you, am I? No, just too late. Oh, I see. Well, that's where the chimney falls. Fine, please. You cut and ran with indecent alacrity tonight, didn't you? I don't think so. I was there until the appointed second. Oh? Uh -huh. And wasn't there some matter we had to discuss before you left? What matter? Percival Sugden Esquire. The only Santa Claus known to man with the scruples of Scrooge. Well, there was nothing to discuss. I monitored him and, well, there was nothing to discuss. Oh, really? Well, two things make me think you would be hard-pressed to add honour bright to that statement. First, your attempts to avoid me. And second, a little bird at better buys what tells me that there was an incident involving Percival and a customer this afternoon. Yes? You see? I do have my teacher's pets. Not everybody hates me. I'm surprised. What was that? Yeah. Nothing. There was nothing to discuss. Not according to my information. Serious enough to have a word with Percival. Hmm? Put him wise to what is expected from a better by Santa. He'll be turning up in sackcloth and ashes, having not curl for you know, reciting it was Christmas Day at the workhouse. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, darling. What are they doing with him? Well, how do I know? Stephen MacDonald. You were charged that you, on December 4th at Weatherfield, in Greater Manchester, did dishonestly handle stolen goods, namely a car radio, knowing or believing it to be stolen. Do you understand? Yeah. Hey. All right. Yeah, no, I have no problem. Uh, there's no problem with the kids. Paul, he says, slow as long as we want. Oh, good. Have you started upstairs yet? Yeah? Uh, I've got to strip the bed, but you can start bringing stuff down. All right. Well, I'll get it. All right, guys. Good morning, sir. Uh, Good morning, by any chance of it yet? On jobs you want doing? Removal's a speciality. Yeah, well, we might just be able to help you there. Weren't expecting you for another half hour? Yeah, at least. Uh, Managed to get the van early. Still, if it's a problem, I can always take it back. Uh, uh, you uh, try. And thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. Well, don't thank me. I'm always glad of a chance to skive off work for a day. <laughs> right, what's to go? Oh, a bit, you clown. <laughs> All of it. 
You never said anything about oh, that. Oh, yeah, when we finished this, I said we'll do it next door as well. You know, see if we got the van. <laughs> well, I hope you know how serious this is. You know, the courts might just throw the book at you. Jim, please, I can't take much more of this. I'm just trying to make the lads see sense, that's all. I mean, we are on your side, Stephen, you know? Oh, yeah, right. Phoning the police, giving the names of me mates. Mates? That bunch of tow rags. And you can shut up an old brother. A great mate you turn out to be, All right, you? all right. They That's are enough. no mates of yours, Steve, believe me. Yeah, well, not any more than us. So what have you got to lose? Look, Steve, the police know who they are. All you got to do is tell them exactly what happened. I'm not saying it'll get you off the hook, but it'll make things go a lot easier for just you. Just leave me alone, will you? Yeah, but look, can you see you're just digging yourself deeper into a pit? Here now. Steve! What's up? That's what's up. Stephen, get out here now! What on earth's the matter? I just want Steve to see what his mates are capable of, eh? How well worth protecting they are. Stephen, get out no. here now! Look, you, take a look at that, eh? Grand bunch of lads, eh? Well worth sticking your neck on the block for. Are you still going to protect them after that, eh? Dad's right, Steve. You can't let them get away with this. Yeah, well, that's nothing to what they could do. That's just a warning. Perhaps now you see why I can't grass on them. Well, I hope you two would have chuffed with yourselves. So what are you saying? That I shouldn't have called the police in the first place? Is that it? We should have just let them get away with it? What I'm saying is that if they so much as show one sign of daubing their graffiti on my premises, they'll have a sight more to worry about than Nick Radio. They're not going to touch your premises. It's Steve McDonald they're getting out. Yeah, well, I'm just saying it's a sight too close for comfort, is that? I mean, once you get jobs like that displaying their artistic ability, well, you never know where it's going to stop. Now, can we please change the subject? Because I'd rather not think about well, it. Well, I second that. Now, about Christmas dinner... Oh, yeah, that's I... another thing. What can I say? This is not going to have you jumping down my throat this morning. Well, I don't see what's wrong with me expecting my wife to at least discuss Christmas Day, especially when she's taking on herself to invite Elma Sidgwick round. I am not having Alma spending Christmas on her own. She's had enough knocks for one year. Hello, Ken. Up. Oh, hi, Ken. Um, we were just discussing Christmas Day. Yes, yes, I can that. So, Alma's coming to you? Yes, yes, she is. Well, I'm very pleased to hear it. Listen, uh, what I just said, it wasn't meant to be anything personal. No, I know. Here, yeah, right, now we've got that sorted out. Can we please change the subject? Oh, that suits me. Oh, I take it you've seen the graffiti on Jim McDonald's workshop. Oh, yeah, there we are. Ah, Betty, love. Where is she, Annie Road? Eh? Well, Victoria. Oh, washing her hair, she said. Oh. So, uh, what are your plans for today? I mean, if you're going to go off out with Victoria, I'd better get my troops organised, aren't I? Well, that is the $64,000 question, mm. isn't it, Betty? Will she go out with me? How long can she keep this up? It must get to us sooner or later. All the memories, what might have been. All the more reason though, why you should make the most of it, you know, for both your sake. Just thinking, perhaps we share what? before we unloaded. We could, um, hey, hey, well, hey, must hey. be dinner time. No chance. Oh, come on, mate. No, well, all right, when well, we've unloaded this lot, okay, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. How you doing? Not bad, we'd have finished by now, but for me, mate, well, you uh, can get the staff. Hey, you're days. asking for it, you, you know. Where are you off? Just down the precinct, do a bit of shopping. Uh, well, look, um, we're about to knock off for five minutes. Hey, no, we flaming well weren't. I was about to knock off for five minutes. You're all right for a quick drink, aren't you? Oh, yes, oh, come on, Des, will you? Look, you make a start on the small stuff and I'll uh, be with you in five minutes. Yeah. Hey, Des! Five minutes, I promise. Hiya, Tracy. Hey, Mr. Baldwin. How are things? Couldn't be better. Oh? My mum and Dad, they'll both be round at our house for Christmas. I told you it was down to you, didn't I? Yeah, I suppose so. You don't want to undersell yourself, you know. If you want to get on in this world, you've got to make your feelings known. I suppose you're right. You, uh, didn't mention our little chat I'd taken. Um, no. Well, I hope you have a really fabulous Christmas, all three of you. Yeah, and thanks. Don't mention it. 
What are you doing here? Al Roberts is not giving me the sack out, eh? so he won't have to pay a Christmas bonus. <laughs> no, he's giving me half a day off to do my shopping. I think that is my Christmas bonus. Yeah. Literally, we thought we'd treat ourselves to a nice cup of tea and one of your wicked vanilla slices before going back to the real world. Well, I'll put a tea for two and two vanilla slices, is it? Yes, please. Alma. Ah, uh, listen, about Christmas, I just wanted no, to... No, there's no need, really. Well, I just wanted you to know it was Tracy's idea. Yes, I do know. Right, well, I'll bring it out. Oh, Christmas. I'll be glad when it's over. There'll be no pleasure in it for me, I can tell you. Oh? Well, I should have been with my sister-in-law, but she's gone down with bladder trouble again. And, you know, I'm right looking forward to Christmas this year. So what are you going to do? Well, I'll stay in the house on my own. Won't have no other choice ever. You'll be spending Christmas Day on your own. Oh, don't fret. I'll make myself a bit of ash, and if there's any corned beef over, I'll make myself a sandwich for my tea. If not, I've got plenty of dripping. Right, love, let's get going before they find something else they need me for. It doesn't matter if they need you here. Oh, lovey, I'll be needed here till the day they carry me out feet first. They can manage for a couple of hours, and if they can't, they'll have to shut up shop, won't they? I don't think Grandad would be too happy if he heard you talking like that. Mm, Grandad's got a fat lot of room to talk, hasn't he? I'm only talking about taking a couple of hours off, not a couple of months. Well, if you're sure, it doesn't matter. Vicky, you can please yourself whether you come. I'm going out with her without you. I'll go and put my shoes on. Vicky. Yes? There's something I've got to say. And it's not easy, believe me. I know it's not easy for you at this time of the year. And I'm not going to pretend I'm any sort of compensation for you not having your mum and dad. Because I'm not. I'm sorry about what happened. More than I can ever say. But it has. And we've just got to manage with what we've got left. I just want you to know I understand. I'm not trying to patronise you. Or be anything to you that I'm not. Just to let you know I understand. All right. Thanks, Beth. Right. Go and get them shoes on, and you'll have them shops shut. Which might please your granddad, but it'll do now for me, I can promise you. Ah, ah Mr. Aldred. Mr. Sugden, I really must protest. Uh, about what? I have just had a complaint from a customer. A long-standing customer, mind, that you have sent away her little boy with a flea in his ear. A well-made little lad with red hair. Yes, that is the one, yes. He was lucky he went away with just a flea in his ear after the mouthful he gave me. Mr. Sutton, I really must protest because this is not the first time it's happened. And he won't be the last one either if I get any more like ginger nut. That is where you are wrong, Mr. Sutton. You are not being paid to moralise to our customers and their offspring. I see. Well, it's obvious to me the spirit of Christmas means something entirely different to you than it does to me. Yes. That would appear to be the case, but since it happens to be me who is employing you, I think that gives me a say in the way that you carry out your duties. Don't you agree? I see. Well, it leaves me with no choice then, does it? If you're not happy with the way I'm doing my job, I think it'd be better all round you found yourself somebody else. So I'm off. There you are. Do it yourself. <laughs> You got anything lined up after you finish here? Oh, yeah, I've lined up a Paris Concord, Champagne, London. I take it that means no. Then I do. Well, you have now. Hmm? Well, I'm doing that special, you're doing that special. Might as well do it together, right? Oh, that's the best offer I've had all day. Right. We'll have something to eat and we'll uh, take it from there. All right. Excuse me. Yes, right. Uh, give it a scotch, Jack. Make it a large one. Right, good. Again. Oh, yeah? One hot pot, my love. Oh, thanks, Betty. I'll have another pint. Oh, smash it. Tis paid for better. Oh, run it all, love. Ah, oh, take it. You'll be working Christmas Day. <laughs> we all will, that one. We've oh, never worked before. So what oh, are you doing you. with yourself? Well, I'm going to be with uh, Deirdre and Tracy. Oh, really? Yeah. Tracy's idea, actually. Ah, oh, I think that's a very nice thought. Tell my love. Right, thank you. So you'll be playing Happy Families this Christmas, then, will you? I'll be with Deirdre and Tracy, yes. Not that it's any of your business. Granted, but uh, I think Christmas is a time for families. <laughs> oh, yeah? 
And since when have you been an authority on family life? Well, put it like that, I don't suppose either of us have got much to write home about, have we? So, uh, what do you do with yourself on Christmas Day? Got any plans, have you? Oh, yeah. I've got plans, Betty. Mr. Watts, as manager of this store, I tell you what your duties are. You do not tell me. I accept that, Mr. Holmes, but you wouldn't expect me to drive one of our articulated lorries to the Grappenor branch because I would be eminently unsuitable and unqualified to do the job. And the same goes for Santa Claus. Look, Mr. Holdsworth, hmm? somebody has got to do something about that grotto before somebody gets hurt. I mean, the kids are running around like demons and the customers are complaining. Hey, I thought you were supposed to be giving me hammer stuck in them shows. I am, Vera, I am. I'm just telling Mr. Holdsworth, somebody's got to do something about that grotto. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? If Percy Sugden can't do it, we'll have to get somebody else to do it, won't we? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Duckworth. We have come to that conclusion without your help. The only problem seems to be now who that could be. Clearly. You don't even look the part. Yes, well, we don't actually have anybody who does look like the part, Mrs. Duckworth. Well, we didn't have anyone who looked the part of Bacchus, did we? So, you showed us the way? Oh, no, no. And if you think I'm going oh, in that grotto, yeah, you can think Mr. again. Oh, Rose, with you'll be great. I mean, cool is right. I mean, you were great, weren't you? You know, when we had that. Oh, I mean, people yeah. around here, they're still talking about your Bacchus. Really? Yeah. Did you hear that, Mr. Watt? Yes, I did, Mr. Holdsworth, mm -hmm. and I quite agree. I remember thinking at the time, what a pity it is that the carnival only comes round once a year, and there wasn't more opportunity for you to display your obvious talent in that direction. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 it wouldn't work. No, definitely not. No. Oh. Well, somebody's going to have to sum it before they tear the place apart, Mr. Holdsworth. Take a good look, Audrey, eh? You must be pleased with yourself. Listen, if you think I'm going to feel responsible in any way for that, then you couldn't be more wrong. Well, it was you called the police in the first place, Audrey. I mean, you opened up this whole messy can of worms, didn't you? Yeah. And I'd do exactly the same thing again, believe me. and a tea cake, a hotly toast, and I don't eat swimming in butter. I'll stick to Mr. Subtim. All right, thank you. I'll give my order to the organ grinder. What's she doing here, any role? She's off without our girl, so. I might ask you the same question. I thought you were working a better buy. Well, I'm not, am I? Not anymore. Well, they would never give me a sack, not just before Christmas. No, they haven't. I've resigned. <laughs> Seems that what my idea of Christmas was and they were totally different. Now, if you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, poor person. Hey, I thought you made a smashing Santa. Father Christmas, if you don't mind. Hey, I've got some good news that'll cheer you up. You've got no news that to cheer me up, unless you, of course, you're thinking of emigrating. <laughs> I was going to be on my own at Christmas, but I'm not, not anymore, I'm not. So what's that got to do with me? I'm spending Christmas with you, love. Emily Bishop's asked me around. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly seem to know what you want for Christmas, don't you? Yes? Yes, it might have been quicker if you'd written down what you don't want. Oh, 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 oh. Right, here we go. Off you go, then. Have a good Christmas. Jolly, jolly. Uh, oh, toys and games run to the right, madam, for you. Yes. Oh, hello there. Ho, ho, ho. What well, do you find so funny? Funny? No, no, nothing, nothing funny, no. I was merely attempting to be jovial. Well, you'd better make the most of it, May. I'm oh, sorry. I don't understand what you mean. I mean, don't you have a little child with you at all? You are joking. Oh, no. I mean, I know it doesn't say children only, but it is most unusual. Isn't? This is between you and me, Santa. Oh, yes. Well, if you insist. But I think we'll do without the sitting on the knee, if that's all the same with you. <laughs> I'm glad you think it's funny, pal. Because I don't, I promise you. Neither did my missus when she brought my lad in here yesterday, and you went on at her about how demanding you were, how greedy. Set of you did. No. And I don't like that. Yes, yes, I think I'm with you now. No, actually, it wasn't me, it was somebody else. Oh, 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 oh is that right? Well, that's funny, because my missus gave me a fairly good description. Red suit, 
White whiskers. No, no, you don't understand. You've got the wrong person. Really have. You're making a mistake here. Not you as cannot... big a mistake as you made when you insulted my missus yesterday. Now I'm here to tell you. Happen she'll bring our car in again. To make up for yesterday. And I'm warning you. Any more lip from you and you won't live to see Christmas. Have you got that? Yes. I said, got that? Yes. <clears throat> right. And you be sure you don't forget it. Do you know how much stuff we've got till you start moving, do you? I think you say that again, and I'll tell you one thing. Half this stuff ain't gonna see the light <laughs> of day. It's going straight on the tip. Fair enough. How much more? My legs are like jelly. Hey, go on, panic, Des. These are the last two. Right. <laughs> and then we'll start upstairs. This isn't funny. I said I had a van back <laughs> half an hour ago. Hey, well, what are you standing here arguing the sauce for? You cut for that one. I'll take the other. Oh, God, what have you got in here? The kitchen sink. <laughs> what did you get? Right then. That's it, love. Okay then. Well, I'll go in the van with Des. All right. Redo out there. Redo. Carl Redfern with Gaz and Tom. I know who Redo is. So what's he going to be doing out there? Well, me if he gets half the chance. Steve, you've got to go to the police. Just tell them everything you know. You can't go on putting us through this. Dancing. Where the hell have you been all day? All right, Jim, leave it. Oh, my son's turned the family apart and you said just leave it. Uh, it wasn't me who found the police. It wasn't me who grasped me mates up. Yeah, well, it's your name is in the police's wee black book, isn't it? Eh? And it's your name plastered all over my garage doors. And it's your mates are chasing you all around the town. Stop it! I can't take any more of this. I can't. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. Where's it all going to end? <sighs> I wish I knew, love. I wish I knew. I just don't believe it, Mrs. Bishop, how you could be taken in with an old Harry than like Phyllis Pierce. I mean, what sort of a Christmas am I going to have with her on that same roof? Mr. Sugden, as far as I'm concerned, the matter's closed. Mrs. Pierce will be joining us on Christmas Day, and that's an end to the matter. You two look as if you could do with a referee. Well, thanks for the offer, but I think Mr. Sugden's got the message. Oh, keep your nose out, Deirdre. I'm sorry. Shall we sit down? Yeah. In one of those days, believe me, and to cap it all, it seems we're going to lose the charity shop. The charity shop? They had a phone call this afternoon. They got a tenant for it. Have they now? Well, come on, put us out of our misery. What's it going to be? No idea. All I do know is that we've got to vacate the premises by the end of the year. Jacko. Hello. Better round. From the back. Now, will you tell her I'd like a word? Angie, give her a better shout, will you, love? Uh, you never stop me, fellas, do you? Eh? I suppose you've come to give Bet the estimate for whitewashing the backyard. Got it in one. <laughs> oh. Sam again? Yes, please, love, but listen, I want to talk to you. What? About Gail and Martin and kiddies. They'll just about be settled in across the road, they'll not they? No, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say settled in, exactly. No, but they'll be there, won't they? So, why don't we get a bottle and take it across and we'll talk to new house with you? Yeah, I think that's a great idea, yeah. but not tonight. No, I think the last thing they'll want is visitors. There'll be plenty of opportunity to celebrate, don't you, Fred? Oh. No, it's not an open house. Well, not tonight, is it, anyway? In fact, I'm going to lock the door tonight so you're not going to get a tank through it. All right? I'll see you.
time you're picking the kids up. Uh, I don't know. Any time we want. You better start thinking about it. No, hang on, hang on. Oh. First things first, eh? eh? Well, I thought we'd get this place off to a good start. Oh. What do you think? So that's where you'd disappear to while I was struggling with the wardrobe in the back bedroom. Wardrobe? What wardrobe? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Before you start opening that, would you mind telling me what we've got to celebrate? Why? I mean, look at the place. We haven't got a carpet nor a curtain that mm. fits the place. <laughs> and we've taken on a mortgage that makes the national debt look like small change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Young lady, we've got our own place, haven't we? Our own home. <laughs> She's Platt. Mm. Mm. We've got to... Gail. <laughs> We've got Martin. Mm. We've got all the kids. <laughs> and if you don't think that's good enough to drink to, well, I do. Mm. Mm. Hey, watch out, watch out. We'll have all the neighbours talking. Mm. To us. Yes. To us. <laughs> Same again? Oh, no, thanks. I'll have to be getting on my way. Thanks again, Des, for the present. I never expected anything. No opening until Christmas Day, eh? I promise. Merry Christmas. Father Christmas being has it? Yes, he has. Yes. Not that she's got a clue what's going on. I think Kevin's more excited. You look like you're about to do your Father Christmas performance. Well, something like that, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Hello, you too. Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas, Rita. Right, well, you didn't drink all Hello, Rita. Hi. Happy Christmas. Oh, and the same to you. And where are you going to be spending it if it's not too nosy? Oh, here and there. Around and about. Oh, well, I hope you're not on your own anyway. I hope so too. Right. See you, Mike. Uh, you can take one toy to Granny Ivers, and that's it, right? Just one. Aww. Aww. I should have done my computer games. But, all right, you can take two with you, but just two, right? Oh, why not? Then we can take the lot. We can leave all the mess over there. Hey, yeah, what a good idea. In fact, change your plan, kids. You can take any toy you want. In fact, take them all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was only joking. Yeah, well, I'm not. And I'll tell you something else. When we've unpacked, they can have all them packing cases. Oh, to make it look like they were desperate to get rid of them. Oh, yeah, well, let's see if he's still saying that by the end of today. Mm. Mm. Right, come on, let's go. Let's get over come there. On. That's all right. Potatoes. Yeah. Ah, right. What do you want me to do now, love? Uh, right, well, you can start setting the table if you like. Right, well done. Uh, no, you can tell him, because if you don't, he'll only think it's me. So I'll tell him. Well, go on then, yeah. Oh, boy. Christmas. Ah, right on cue. Your mother wants you to set the table. Certainly, Father. Well, go on. Look, Steve thinks I should tell you, eh? But if you go and have a look at your garage door, where it used to say, Steve Mack is a grass. What? It now says, Andy Mack is a grass. Yeah, well, tell him. Yeah, and I did it. I cannot tell a lie. I was the one that crossed out Steve and put Andy there instead. So it weren't me. Well, what the hell are you doing a damn fool thing like that for? Because it's true, isn't it? They're going to be coming after you now, are they? Liz, just you keep out of this, love. No, no, I will not keep out of it. How can I keep out of it when all I hear about is which of my sons is going to get beaten up next? Well, he's all right now, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Look, nobody is going to get beaten up, all right? I don't want to hear another word on the subject, all right? It is Christmas Day. It is a time of peace and goodwill towards all men. And by God, are we going to have some of it in this house? Uh, yeah, a few things. But I tell you what, after last Christmas, all I want from this Christmas is a nice, relaxing time. Feet up. Anyone come to our door, we'll find it locked and bolted. I'd lock and bolt ours if I could find a way of getting our Vera out first. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mr Sugden? Just you and Mrs Bishop, is it? Well, it would have been only Phyllis Pierce had managed to get herself invited. By gum, you'll be in demand there, first You wouldn't want to see her spending it on her own, would you, eh? She deserves to be on her own, that woman. You're now to be having company. Now give over, you'll be playing postman's knock before the day's out. <laughs> hey, up. All yeah, the best. Right. Right. Yeah, I'll have a pint, please. Yeah. Coming up, son. And, um, Kevin? Uh, not for me, thanks. Sorry about that. Gotta go. All the best. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what uh, Des is doing for his Christmas dinner. He'll be on his own, won't he? Well, lots of people are, Mavis. No, no, but I mean, we are neighbours. We could have asked him. I'm just as sympathetic as you, but we can't go turning our house into a, a singles club. Well, you have invited me, so you're doing your bit. Oh, no, Rachel, I don't oh, mean... Oh, what a thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Rita? Oh, 
Wretch. Hello. May I take this opportunity to wish everybody the very best wishes for the festival? Oh, well, thank, thank you, you Reg. And the same to you. Yes. <laughs> now, let me get everybody a drink. What would you uh, like? Well, no, actually, we were just going. Mavis is a bit worried about something burning. Oh, are you going to Mavis? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, are you ready? Uh, uh, yes, I'm yes. ready. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Well, nothing uh, special, actually, Mavis. Mavis. I could come. Oh. Well, bye, then. Bye. Ah, well, Norman, do you want a pint? Oh, that's very civilised of you, yes. Thanks. Another pint, please, Betty. Another pint. I'll okay, go. Okay. Just go and see how Vicky is, Betty. I won't be here too. All right, love. All right, Ray, just Father Christmas bin? No, not yet, no, but I've still got my stocking up. Well, I think he leaves big lads till last. They get the present Christmas night, most of them. So what are you doing this Christmas, then? Oh, I shall be very busy here and there. Yeah? And you? Oh, yeah, much of the same. You know, I thought I might grab a quiet drink while I've got the chance. Absolutely. Because once it starts... There's no stopping. Do no. pan, love. So... Give us a shout if you want out to eat, because we won't be sitting down to our dinner till late. I'm OK, thanks. But then, we're not opening tonight, so we'll have all the time in the world. Will that man be coming? Des? Whatever gave you that idea? I don't know, you just seem very friendly. Yeah, well, I have known him for quite a while. But he'll want to be with his own family on a day like today. Now, are you sure there's not you want? Hi. Hello. Hey, you look terrific. Huh. Very much, kind sir. I don't feel terrific. I feel dead guilty. Why is that? Curly's got a little chicken in there. <laughs> a little Christmas pudding with serves one written all over it. It's just trying to make you feel guilty. That's what that's all about. Yeah, well, it's working. Forget Curly. What do you want to drink? Can't we just go? Yeah, of course we can. I booked this nice little place. It is a traditional Christmas dinner. Ah. Curries, chapatis. <laughs> oh, you can't see another, unless you have to rush off and cook. Uh, no, I think I can uh, manage another ten minutes. Mm. Which is all I can manage. Uh, two pints, please, Jack. All right, yeah. All right, then. Well... Well, I don't know how it is. I just go for a walk, heading nowhere in particular, and I end up here. Do you think there's some kind of strange force attracting you? I think something must be. Hello, love. Is it something you wanted? No, I'll just see what was happening. Is it what you imagined? Very much so, yes. I think we should offer to start packing for him. <laughs> Never mind offering. I think we should just do it. Well, go on, then you start. <laughs> go you on, you get it done. On, right, I'm, come on, we're almost there. <laughs> Help me if you can get kids up to the table. Eh? Yeah, all right, we'll do, all Dom. Right. Come on, kids. Right, they're standing by. That's a real Hey, Dan, hang on a minute. I've been thinking. Oh. What? Listen, you know what we all trouble they've had when they were moving? Well, it's made me realise something. We're happy enough in this little house, aren't we, love? Let's not move. Let's stop where we are. Well, I thought you were dead set on it. Well, I don't think I am now, love, and I don't honestly think you really wanted to move here. Let's tell everybody we've changed his mind and we're stopping here. Look, what? Look, look, we'll talk about it later. Don't say out now. Oh. Let's get this served and we'll talk about it later. Oh, Come on. Right, Marvellous. One of the all-time great Christmas dinners. Nah, you're just not used to home cooking. <laughs> as long as we don't have to listen to that poem again. Listen to that The one poem? that we said Uncle Albert used to be Oh, no, not Christmas Day <laughs> at the workhouse again. No, 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 no poems, I promise you, I promise you. But look, let me make us some coffee. Nobody move, I'm going to make us the coffee. Right. When did Dad last recite that poem? The Christmas before last. Since when, there's been a lot of tears flowed under a lot of bridges. I see, you can still find your way about then. Oh, yeah, I think so. Listen, um, I meant to say, if you want to ring Alma, just go ahead and do it. In fact, I'd be disappointed in you if you didn't. Thanks. I might later. She's not on her own, is she? No, no, she's going round to Alpen Audrey's. You got a choice. Throw me out now or have a drink and then throw me out. I'll throw you out now. Then you'll never know what I've come to tell you. Oh, come on. Look, get a couple life. of glasses and after this you won't have to throw me out because I will leave of my own accord. Well, you'll have to because I'm due at half an Audrey's. So what harm could it do? Ten minutes. Long enough. Well, where is she then? I don't know. <laughs> Well, she does understand she's supposed to be here, doesn't she? I mean, she, she's not got the wrong day out. Oh, fair. Not even Alma could mix up Christmas Day. Nobody could. Oh, well, we'll give her till after the Queen's speech. So we'll start with Alta. We all make mistakes. 
It's just I seem to make them bigger than anyone else. Uh -huh. I'll tell you this. I didn't leave you for Jackie because of the money or the factory. Why then? Well, I thought I loved her. She loved me. But the money had nothing to do with it. All right, it wasn't the money. You do believe that? If you say so. No, it's important you believe it, because if you don't tell me now, and I'll walk out of here. I believe you. Well, then I found out, well, we both found out how wrong we were. Oh, well, um, my life's been hell these last six months. It's not got much better since. Do you know why? Oh, it's not the thought of leaving Jackie. I mean, that's all over and I've forgotten it. It's, it's, it's realising that I still love you. Always have. Always will. Oh, so I... I uh, just, do you mind if I help no, myself? No, no. Um... Hello? Alma? It's Audrey, love it. We're waiting for you. Oh, Audrey. Um, I, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I got delayed. No, it's not me, love, you know, but you know Alfie when it comes to his food. No, uh, just just start without me. No! Yeah, but, yeah, honestly. Uh, you're all right, are you, love? I'm fine. Uh, just tell Alf I'm sorry and I'll, I'll see him later. Yeah, but listen, I... Supposed to be at Audrey's. That's all right. They'll save you some turkey. So what do I do? I mean, it's all I've thought about. I, it's all I've been able to think about. I mean, so I move away. Start a new life somewhere else. Try and forget you. Or is there a chance? The slightest possible chance that we could try again? What a good job now, you know. No drips, no runs, eh? You do realise we must be the only people in the entire country working today. Oh, I understand that, son. Don't think I'm not proud of you now. And you think this is going to solve everything, do you? No, I'll not solve everyone, but I'll get my garage doors back to normal. No, but if you think if we just cover our names up, look, we'll forget who we are. Mm -mm. What I think is that if there's a load of hooligans sneaking around doing this sort of thing, then they'll have got it out of their system and you won't hear from them again. That's what I think. Wrong again, Father. I think of you every time I wear these personal. Well, I don't know why, because that's the first time I've set eyes on them. I bought them on Mr. Sugden's behalf. You know what men are like about shopping. But I didn't And even... talking about shops, soon as Christmas is over, we must find some new premises for the charity shop. You know, I've had a message from Mr. Jones saying we've got to move. Mm. It's a pity about that. No matter where you go, it's not going to be as handy. Well, I know. All these pyjamas. They'll exchange them at the shop if they're not the right size. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir, I got a right look when I said they were for a gentleman friend and I didn't know the size. Well, yes. Yes, sir, it'd be a good idea if you slip these on while I wash up with Emily and then we could have a sneak preview. Well, I suppose we could uh, investigate the other end of Rosamond Street. Yeah, no matter where you go, it's going to be a devil of a job shifting all that stock. Oh, I know. But they wanted to sell me some bed socks to go with them and I said, no, he's got very good circulation. And then I thought, Work. The wonder how I know that. <laughs> it's all right you're walking in here saying it was all a mistake. How, how am I supposed to feel? You know, I loved you, Mike. Yeah, I know. No, I really loved you. I thought, this is it, alas, this is it. And we were going to be together for the rest of our lives. Yeah, I did too. No, you did, not like I did, because if you thought like I did, well, you wouldn't have gone. Yeah, well, I said I made a mistake. Mm, yeah, well, I don't believe you. You didn't make a mistake. You did exactly what you wanted. I mean, oh, you should say it was a mistake now. Of course you are. But no. You just did exactly what you wanted and you left me high and dry. Do you remember last Christmas? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, well, so do I. And since then, I've had one year, one full year to learn to hate you because that was the only way that I could survive it. I had to force myself to hate you. And did you manage it? Sometimes, yes. I wouldn't have thought it would have been that difficult. 
Oh, it was. Oh, yes, it was. And now you come in here and you say all this. Well, how, how am I supposed to feel? I don't know. How do you feel? Well, that's okay. And anyway, you're talking, you're talking if I just stayed the way I was. As though you've been out there and all this has been happening to you and I've just been locked up in these four walls all on my own. But, but nobody else. Well, I haven't. No. I've been out. I've got relationships. Yeah. Ken. Yeah. Do you love him? He's very kind, he's very considerate. But you're not in love with him. I can rely on him and I can talk to him. Yeah, but you're not in love with oh, him. Oh, I just don't know what I am. All I know is I should be at Audrey's having my Christmas dinner. I'm not even doing that. Oh, I just, I just wish I'd set off ten minutes sooner. No. Nah. What? You don't wish you'd set off ten minutes sooner. I'm not keeping you. You can go now if you like. Oh, can I? Look, when I came here, I didn't know how you were going to react. I hadn't a clue. I mean, you might not even have let me in. I don't know why I did. Well, I know. And I'll tell you, shall I? Because you already knew what I was going to say. No! Yeah. How could I? Because it's the same for you as it is for me. Oh, I didn't know that when I got here, but I do now. I think you're still in love with me. Oh, you won't admit it, you're fighting against it, but uh, it's the same for you as it is for me. Hey, what time are you finishing? Any minute now. Hey, they'll have a right nice time, eh? Front of fire. Mm. You haven't been cross with turn. Mm -hmm. Tons of Christmas pod. Plenty of brandy to smell it down with. Hey, and I promise I won't nag you for drinking so much. You know why? Why? Because I'll be drinking so much at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, past couple of years, <laughs> since the white left, I've been going to my sister's. I thought I'd be doing the same this time. <laughs> Suddenly they announced they're off to a hotel. So, uh, all on your own? Oh, I suppose I could go down to the Sally Army, see what they're putting on. Don't they make you sing hymns first? Do they? Mm-hmm. Rules me out. Well, suppose um, you would know um, where a man might find a warm hearth and a bit of company. Uh, we are closing sometime, are we? We are closing this very minute, <laughs> Right. Right, everybody, come on, let's be having you. It's Christmas Day. I've not had a chance to pull me on crackers yet. Well, then, Norman. What's it to be now, then? Is it uh, family and friends? No, not really. I'm going home on my own. Oh, no, you can't be serious. Yeah? No, 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 we can't be having that. You can't be on your own on Christmas Day. It's immoral, is that? I wouldn't be surprised if we can't get done for it. Why, where are you going? Uh, me? Well, actually, I've left my... Oh, I come on, see... Reg, be honest. You're not going anywhere. We're stuck on our own. Well, all right, not anymore. I mean, here we are. Let's make the best of it. After all, we are a sort of a family, aren't we? The better by extended family. Yeah. Well, then. Can't be beyond us to knock up a passable sort of Christmas dinner between us, even at this late date. I've got a chicken, one of those we were selling cheap. Well, there you are. Things are on the up. Chicken already in the oven. We have a feast in the making. It's only a chicken. Only a chicken? <sighs> that speaks the voice of affluence, Norman. Yeah. When I was a lad, if you had a chicken for Christmas dinner, we used to cook it with door open so neighbours could smell it and see how well you were doing. Eh? You did? Yeah. Tell you what, I'll tell you what, tell you what. We'll do this thing properly. We will raid the pantry. What pantry? Well, what pantry do you think? Which shelves groaning with food and drink, to which only you and I have access? What, better buys? Absolutely. <laughs> Might be only chicken, but it will be only chicken with the caviar and champagne, which I will now go and bring, while you look after the domestic side of things. <laughs> right, keys, keys, keys. Have you got the keys to the storeroom with you? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to have to pay for all this stuff. Hey, I've trained you well, haven't I? I have trained you well. Of course we'll pay for it, but not now, later, when we open. You see... One thing you have to learn, Norman, is that we who hold the keys to the kingdom, we're not like other men, no. We are privileged. And on certain occasions, like today, well, we may take advantage of those privileges. Yeah. Can I have your glasses, please? Of course you can, yeah. Betty. And with those glasses, our admiration and affection oh. for the wonderful job you have done. Au revoir, Betty, love. Yeah. Norman. <laughs> Madman or genius, Betty, I just don't know. And I work with him every day. Uh, rather you than me, though, love. <laughs> uh. Hey, you seen what we are family this Christmas, Betsy? Well, I hope to get down to our gardens in the new year, see how my grandchild's getting on. Oh, must be nice. Huh? Yeah. Be nicer if they lived a bit nearer, you know. 
Hey, makes you wonder where we went wrong, doesn't it? What? Well, being on a Zoom when everybody's going back to a full house, you know, the children, the grandchildren. I mean, look at Don and Ivy. I look at Full House there. Well, I, thought we, I thought it was just like me and you, nice and quiet. Well, I guess I've no choice, have I? I mean, look at our Terry. How long is it since we saw him, eh? We sent you a card. No, a card? But it's not a Christmas card I want, is it? It's him, it's my son I want. Well, I thought we was me and you cuddled up by oh, the fire. Oh, nobody. Let's face it, we've nobody. No, I'm sorry, I can't do nothing about that. Oh, can't you? Yeah, I remember you when my mother were alive. You did everything you could, you, to drive her away. And look at yours, you've done the same thing with him. Oh, yes, I see, you see, it's my fault, right, yes. Yeah, it's your fault. You're right, it is your fault. The type of husband you've been, the type of father you've been, you've driven away every relative I've ever had. Have I? Yeah, well, you want to be careful, because you've only got me left. Don't I know, I've only got you left. Oh, well, bear it in mind, because one of these days you'll come home and I'll have gone and all. You'll have driven me away like you've driven away everybody else. Do you want to get off then, Jacko? No, I don't. I want to stay. No, I mean it. You can go. Yeah, so do I. I want to stay. You're going. So what are we going to do with you, eh? Well, if you've got a sandwich, I could eat it in the backyard. Don't. You'll have me in tears. Hang on a minute. You've seen him. You've seen him better, eh? No, because I'm not looking. Yeah. We're not opening tonight, and we know why, don't we? You know Des, who did the decorating? Yeah. Well, he's just turned up in the bar. I know. I saw him. Oh. Well, I wonder if you'd mind if he joined us for dinner. Only he's an old friend and he's all on his own, so... No, it's all right. Oh, great. Yeah, sure, though, aren't you, love? Because if you don't want him to, you've only got to say... I'm sure. Oh, good. I mean, it is Christmas. I didn't want to have to turn him away. I feel a bit sorry for him to tell you the truth. I've already reset the table. Oh, so you have. Thanks. Just let me know if I get in the way. Don't be silly, Vicky. Just when I thought I'd sorted everything out in my life, I mean, just when I thought I'd got over everything. Do you want me to go? No, I told myself, no more complications. I was going to enjoy Christmas, and I was going to go away with Ken. All you've got to do is say so. And then what happens? You come in here and give me all this about still loving me. Because it's true. It might be true. Doesn't mean I want to hear it. Well, why not? Why not? What's so terrible about hearing that I still love you? It's me it should be terrible for. You no need to listen to this. You could tell me to get out. Oh, go on. Tell me. Get out. Hey. Get out. Is... Is that what you really want? Yes, that's what I really want. Because I can't stand any more of this. Oh, you're right. Yes, of course you're right. Of course I still love you. I've tried not to. My God, I've tried not to, but I do. I still do. Oh, Elma, come here. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Last minute shopping, aren't we? Yes, yes, well, a matter of speaking, yes. I was just collecting a few extra things, actually. I'm surprised they're open. Oh, oh no, 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 they're not open. No, no. Oh, really? <laughs> that was a joke, yes, of course. <laughs> no, um, actually, I am the manager. Uh, my name's Holdsworth. Um, look, uh, I've got, uh, sorry, I've got, I've got the keys. I mean, I really wouldn't be the manager, would I, if I, if I didn't have the keys. There they are. <clears throat> Holdsworth? Yes. Then why have these keys got the name Watts attached to them? Ah, well, that is because they're not actually my keys. They, uh, they belong to Mr. Watts. Mr. Watts? Yes, assistant manager. Is he? Yes, and, uh, and he gave me his keys because I didn't have mine, that's what I suppose. I see. Yes. Um, so, um, I, in that case, I will be off. Thank you very much. And may I say, <clears throat> on behalf of Better Buys, thank you for your vigilance. Get in. Pardon? What? I think we'd better sort this at the station. No, 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 no. I, I am who I say. I mean, it's just I don't have any positive identification at the moment. In! Yeah. And bring the evidence with you. Right. I can... Thank you. I 
can explain it. Listen, you didn't want to move, did you, love? Well, it's not a matter of whether I want to, is it? Well, of course it is. I mean, it's probably been more upset for you than me, especially if there's redecorating to be done. Yeah, but you were the one who decided you would uh, be happy somewhere else. Yes, well, now I've decided I wouldn't. <laughs> I have done. Hey, and surely it's better I've changed mine now before we've moved. I mean, what would you be saying then? Yeah, well, I can't deny that, but... Oh, well, yeah. can I go and tell him then? Mm. Yeah, if you want to. Yes, I do want to. Only, just remember that when they bought the house across the street, they did it thinking that we'd be moving. So? So, you might just be a little bit surprised. Oh, because you mean we won't be able to get on carpets and all that stuff, eh? Well, well love, there's plenty of other ways we can help them. I mean, now we're going to be living so close. Well, there'll be loads of ways we can help them out. When are we going home? Oh, oh, oh don't. Just all I don't that mess know. and unpacking. <laughs> Can't we just stop here? Uh, listen, I've um, mm. got something to tell you. It's a little special announcement that me and Don have been keeping secret. Yeah, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You can have a baby. Oh, it's Martin joking. Hey, yeah, you don't know yet. We haven't heard, have we? <laughs> Uh, face. No, it's just that um, Don and me have decided that we're not going to move after all. We're going to stay here where we are in this house. Oh, right. Well, uh, we've postponed it. We're going to wait and see. No, no, we haven't postponed it. This is definite, this. Hey, my, hey, Nicky, Nicky. That means your grandma and I will be going to live across the road from you. Won't that be nice? Yeah, yeah, sure will. <laughs> well, actually, Ivy, we've got so much to do back there. Maybe it's time we got back there. Uh, so yeah. soon? Mm. Yeah, you get back if you like. We understand. Of course we do. Well, um, what do you think about it, girl? You haven't said yet what you think. I just hope you'll be happy wherever you are, Ivy. Thanks, love. Thanks. Well, I'm sure we'll be happiest here. I am. Do you know, I feel as if I've had a ton of weight lifted off my shoulders. So I took her at her word and we've had our dinner. She still hasn't arrived. But she sounded all right. Oh, yes, yes, I mean, I asked her. I said, are you all right? She said, yes, I'm fine. Hmm. Right, well, I'd better try and track her down then. Oh, all right. And listen, Ken, when you do, tell her I've kept her some dinner if she still wants it. Yeah, I will. OK, thanks, Audrey. Bye. Everything all right? Well... Oh. A bit odd, actually. She never turned up. Uh, at Audrey's? Yeah. She rang to say she's going to be delayed, and then uh, no sign of her. Have you tried ringing her flat? No, no. No, I think what I'll do, um, I think I'll have a walk round there. Fresh air doing me good, anyway. Good idea. OK, I'll see you soon. All right. Yeah, bye. Right, bye. Don't you mind that? What? Dad going off like that to see another woman. No. No, I don't. Actually, I think I'm rather pleased. What, cos he won't come round here bothering you anymore? No, no, it's not that. He's a very good man, is your dad. And I'd just like to think he's found somebody who'll make him happy. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, we should both be very pleased he's gone to see Alma, then. Well, he's, er, uh, short, fat and balded. Although he tries to hide it by dragging a few strands across. Short, fat, balding. Yeah, and he's got a face like, uh, like one of them Cabbage Patch dolls. Face like a Cabbage Patch doll? Oh, yes. Oh, and he wears rather a lot of that sweet-smelling aftershave. Too much, really. Someone ought to tell him about it. Yes, they should. What's he say? Oh, yeah, and he's got um, a funny manner about him. He talks like a sergeant major that swallowed a dictionary. Funny manner, yeah, it sounds like it's him, all right. Uh, and he had your permission to use your keys, yes? Yes, yes. He had my full authority. He had your full authority. Full authority? Well, thank you very much for your help, sir. I'm sorry we had to bother you. Oh, that's all right. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> well, David's still asleep. <sighs> Set them two to tidy in the bedrooms. 
suppose, looking on the bright side, it stopped us unpacking this lot. What has? Ivy's decision. What do you mean it stops us unpacking this lot? You don't think we're stopping, do you? Oh, gay up. Oh, no, Martin, everything can stay where it is in the boxes and we put the house up for sale. I don't care where we move, it can be anywhere, just as long as it's not across the street from us. Do you know, I just don't believe this. Martin, we only moved here because we thought she was moving, else we wouldn't have even looked at the place. Yeah, well, I suppose you're right. So now she's changed her mind. No, maybe she always intended to change her mind. Uh, and put it past her. No, you know this is crazy. You're going round the bend. Yeah, do you know do. that? I will do if I have to stop here. Look, they said they were moving long before we even thought about this oh, place. Right, perhaps they were. Well, there's no perhaps about it. Look, I'm not too happy about the situation, but it's no use talking like I'm that. I'm not talking. I mean it. Look, she's entitled to change her mind. Even Ivy's entitled yes, to that. Yes, and I'm entitled to change mine. And I'm telling you, Martin, we do not unpack. We do not start to decorate. We do not lay a finger on this place because we are not stopping. Boarding school? Yes, I just stay here in the holidays. Uh -huh. Which I didn't like at first. But Grandad's been so kind to me. Good. Do you know him? Who? Uh, you? Alec. Well, not as it happens, no. You've never been here when he's been here? No, I haven't. I see. Right. Everything's on course. Barring disasters, we can sit down to eat in about half an hour, if everybody can wait that long. <sighs> sure. Uh, will you get me a, a sherry, please, Des? I'll answer that. So, where do you live, then? Me? Oh, flat on the Ashdale Road estate, but... Uh, I don't suppose you'd know that. And aren't you married? Not anymore. I tried it, but it didn't suit. You can't be good at everything. And did you leave your wife, or did she leave you? <laughs> well, actually, I suppose she left me. I see. Vicky, it's your granddad. He wants to wish you a happy Christmas. Don't worry. I won't say anything about him being here. Hello, Grandad. There you go. Oh, cheers. Smart lady you got there. Oh, she's that all right. You know, this is just like old times. I don't know what it's like, but it's like nothing I planned. Audrey's going to be furious. Audrey? <laughs> I've missed my dinner. <laughs> well, tell her why. I'm sure she'll understand. Oh, yes, I'm sure she will. I'm not going to tell her. I'll never hear the last of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably her now. No. Well, why not? I just think she'd be more likely to ring. Whoa. Who do you think could... Ken? Oh, he said he'd probably call me at orders, and if she told him I wasn't here... Oh, no. It's okay, it's okay. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, what do you want me to do? Go down? No. Has he got a key? No. Well, that's all right. Do what you're doing now. Sit here and wait for him to go away. Oh, this is awful. He's looking up. You should let me go down. Frighten the life out of him. Do what the hell he likes, as far as I'm concerned. What did I say? What did I tell myself? No more complications. And look at me hiding in my own flat on Christmas Day. No, you're being kind to him. Oh, am I? Yeah, delaying the bad news. Delaying, telling him the truth. That's what I'm delaying. Anyway, what's all this talk about Ken? I'm here now, am I? Right? Right? Yeah. So what are you worried about? Who knows? Tell everybody. From now on, there's only one man in your life. And that's me. There you go. Oh, thank you. Here's to us. <laughs> Back where we belong. In bed? No, together. That's where we belong together. And you know it. Well, I knew it when you didn't want to know it. Yeah, but I'm going to spend the rest of my life making that up to you. If you let me. Well, if that's what you want, Mark, if that's what you really want. Alma, will you look at me? I've done some naff things in my life. Made a few mistakes, but I've learned. 
Took me a long time to find out. I gave you a bad time, but I did find out. Glad you did. Are you? You know I am. That's what kept me going. <laughs> That's why I kept coming back into that calf chasing you, annoying you. Because I knew that deep down, you wanted me. Mm. Was it that obvious? No, it wasn't, as a matter of fact. You hit it down well. But I knew that I had to keep going until I got there. And I did in the end, didn't I, eh? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, well, you always were a lucky devil. Trust you to get lucky at Christmas. <laughs> Luck? <laughs> Luck had nothing to do with it, darling. Do you think I'd let you go away for Christmas with a plonker like Barlow if I could stop it? How do you mean? Well, you were going away with Barlow, weren't you? Hmm? Christmas? Yeah. Till young Tracy had the idea that she wanted to spend Christmas with her daddy. Now, who do you think put that idea in her head, eh? Me. So even one's rather should be this fine Christmas. Tracy's with her daddy. And I'm with you. Good, eh? You're making this up. I mean, you no, it's think... clever, isn't it? You've got to admit it. Hey? See what I was telling you? I'd do anything to make sure that we got back together again. Phew. You're glad you're on my side, eh? Terrific, that bet. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Just as well we had a bit of help eating it, eh, Vicky? We'd have not got through this lot otherwise. Now, what about a glass of wine, Vicky? Seeing as it's Christmas. No, thanks. Well, just half a glass, it's no harm. It is a special occasion. Oh, it's not that. I just don't like wine very much. <laughs> I'll not say no. Say no to very little, me. Whoops. <laughs> I think we'll need another one of these. Uh, would you open one, Des? The, there's one down there, the corkscrew is next to it. Yep. <laughs> now then, Vicky, what about uh, a mince pie or a piece of Christmas cake? No, thanks. If you don't mind, I think I'll go out. Out? Where were you thinking of going? The McDonald's house. Oh, I'm not sure, love. They've a lot on their minds right now. Oh, well, Mrs. McDonald said if I felt like going round later, it'd be OK. Oh, well, if Liz said it was OK and it's what you want, but don't be too late, will you, love? Try, love. Not got a lot to say for herself, has she? No. Still, makes a change from a lot of kids these days. She's had different experiences to a lot of kids. But I mustn't start thinking about that right now. Merry Christmas, Des, lad. Same to you, love. You know, it's vile what you do to people. You manipulate them, you just use them. Nah, you're taking this all wrong, Alma. You're manipulating kids now. Playing on Tracy's feelings so she can get rid of Ken. You know, it's dirty, Mike. It's just dirty. And all for what? Just so you can get what you want. Well, it's what you want, too. You said so five minutes ago. Right, well, I've just thought better of it. I can't take any more of you, Mike. You know why you're behaving like this, don't you? Because I told you the 100% truth. I've no need to. All right, so I pulled a few strokes to get us back together again. Well, what's so bad about that? Would you rather I watched you waste yourself than a bloke like Barlow? You know, I just cannot take any more of you. You just make me feel dirty. You use me just the way you use everybody else. No, I love you, Alma. <laughs> Did you leave me alone? No, what does it matter what the method is as long as the results are the same? No, when you go, will you just please go? All right, Alma. You'll get over this. You'll see I'm right. Phone me. Oh, and, uh... Merry Christmas. It was all in fun. I mean, you've got to have a laugh, haven't you, Reg? Well, well, I'm dragged to the police station and accused of breaking into my own supermarket. I don't think that's a fit subject for merriment. Not now, no. But in years to come, you'll look back, you'll be chuckling, splitting your sides. No, no, I will not. Because I'm telling you, Norman, I am going to sit down now and write a letter of complaint to the Chief Constable and it'll be a stinker. Good, I'll help you. I shall excoriate them, Norman. These blodders in uniform, they think they can harass respectable executives. <laughs> well, nobody harries a horse with impunity. Right, we'll give them hell. And don't forget, a letter to head office. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Mind you, what will Brendan Scott make of my letter of complaint to the Chief Constable, eh? Probably say I was spoiling relationships between the better buyers and the bars in blue. Yeah, I never thought of that. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> You've never really forgiven me, have you, Norman, for that little episode on the better buyers float? I sometimes think you'd like to see me impaled upon the shaft of Brendan Scott's mallet. 
Would I do that to you at Christmas time as well? Well, I don't know. Oh, oh. You, you see, when you're at the top, Norman, oh, it, it's hard work up there. Yeah, and in a few years, you realise what I'm saying. When you're at the top, it's lonely with nowhere to look but down. You, you become neurotic. You develop a nose for the slightest whiff of treach. What's that funny smell? It's like burning rubber. That's our Christmas dinner. Hey! Now! Yeah. So Alma didn't say where she was going, instead of coming to you, then. She didn't? No, well, <laughs> great, isn't like her. Oh. Okay, Audrey, thanks. Bye. Oh, by the way, give my best wishes to Alf. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Okay. No, Audrey hasn't got a clue where she might have gone to. Anyway, not to worry. Right, what do you feel like doing then, love? Um, I think I'll just go upstairs and listen to my new music. Well, look, uh, what about a game? Such as? Oh, let's see, um, Scrabble? No, it always feels like school somehow. Oh, well, Monopoly, then. No, most of the pieces are missing. Ah, uh, I'll open that bottle of red wine you brought. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Should be pretty good. Right, I'm going upstairs and listening to my tapes. Well, fine, but uh, why don't you play them down here? I mean, you were all for a family Christmas. Look, do uh, you mind if I make another call? Oh, no, no, help yourself. Fine. I'll just try the flat. I mean, maybe Alma's back from wherever she's been. They really love, but I mean, the Rovers are shut tonight, you know. There are other places to go besides the Rovers, you know. Huh, not the flying horse or the bears, wicked. No, we're not going to a pub. We're going to call on Gail and Martin and then you home. Dead on. I'm right with you. And I shall bring along a small housewarming present. Okay. <sighs> Boys. Vicky, see you later. Hey, and now, Victoria, don't you be taking any cheek off these two lads, eh? <laughs> You know, we should go to sleep till January the 2nd when all these festivities are over. Why don't you go out? I haven't got any money. Any, hey, Dan. Who says? Me. So it's it like back at the Rovers and still bad as ever. Worse. My grandfather's away and Bet's got a boyfriend round. A boyfriend at her age? I know, it's bizarre. I couldn't stand watching them. It's like a couple of hippopotami doing a weird mating dance. Oh! <laughs> You know, I'd totally forgot these. <laughs> you meant to go and pull before you sat down to eat. I don't think Vicky had have gone for much. No, she struck me as being a bit prim and proper. No, oh, she's all right, is Vicky. She's had a bad time. But, like I say, don't let me get started on that. Mm. I'll only end up striking. Here, you get this hat on. Oh, it suits you. Well, I've always looked good in pair. <laughs> right, come on, let's get your thing. Yeah. You know me, never needed any persuading to pull a cracker. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Here we are. Hey. Why does the Prince of Wales wear red, white and blue braces? Do you give in? To keep his trousers up. Oh. I paid for some money for them. <laughs> Here, have some more. <laughs> Do you know, if Alec was here now, we'd have that pub open again. He thinks I should have his opening even while he's away. Beg of that for a game of soldiers. He doesn't appreciate you. He's got his own set of priorities, has Ali. Do you know when he rang up before? He gets the how are you with stuff over really fast. And then it's right into how's trade been. Huh. He sat there on a beach drinking rum out of a coconut shell, wondering how hard I'm working. I tell you, if he's daft enough to leave you all on your own, he doesn't know when he's well off, and I'm not talking about money. Yeah. You've got to talk about money when it comes to Alec. 
Oh, still, you don't have to let it spoil your Christmas. I bet he's not letting it spoil his. See, then there's two of your personal that cuts the working out. No, it doesn't, because you've got twice as much washing up. Well, we're a team, me and you, you know, the perfect couple. None of your pot walled up in anything to go by. Look at that, it's covered in suds. You want to give these a good rinsing. That's another thing about you. I love you because you're so clean, not like other old fellas. I'll go. Oh, Rita, <laughs> come on in. Hello, Emily. I just thought I'd pop across for half an hour. Oh, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I thought you might be. Uh, how are the lovebirds getting on? Lovebirds? Mm. Mrs Pierce sidles along the perch to Mr Sugden and then Mr Sugden pecks at her rather viciously. <laughs> Emily, you are a Christian woman. Not content with having Percy oh, under your roof. You've invited I Phyllis as well. Right. I bet all your pots have got smears all over them. Hey, I'll smear you in a minute. Yeah? I keep hearing you're in trouble with the police. Is it true? Yeah. What's it all about? He's been nicking car radios and was stupid enough to get caught. I didn't nick anything. Well, no, his mates did all the nicking. Well, he thinks they're his mates, and now they're after him. Why? Well, they think that he grassed them up to the police. You do know what that means, grassed? Of course I do. I'm not stupid. So you've absolutely nothing in common with our kid, then? Shut up, Andy. Just shut up. And the sick thing about it is, it wasn't him that grassed them up in the first place. It was me. And you can tell them that as well, brother, because I'm not scared of your thick mates, even if you are. Oh, yeah. Well, you won't be saying that if they get you down a bad game. Oh. She's probably upstairs or something. Mm, she'll be snooping around bedroom with her damp patches and cobwebs. She wakes those kids. Just go like will you? Yeah, well, sooner or later, I'm going to have to mark the card for her, Martin. Oh. Hey, 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 later rather than sooner, please. Oh, Gail, Gail, what can I say? I think your house is lovely. Yeah, I thought so. Till today. What, you're going to have to bed? Oh, listen, you usually do that when you first move in. You see things you haven't noticed. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's smashing, honest. And I hope that you and Martin and kids, I just thought we were very happy. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much, Alfie. Yeah, and don't forget, you've got a babysitter. Uh, now, come on, admit it. That was very nice of her. Listen, I mean it, you've only got to ask. Because, I mean, I only live across the road now, don't I? <coughs> there she goes, rubbing it in. Come on, Gail, just leave it out for tonight, please. Well, we're going to have to say goodnight. Yes, oh, and we'd just like to say welcome to what we think of as the sunny side of the street. Isn't that yes. right, Mavis? You're not going already, are you? Yeah, well, we feel as neighbours and caring ones, we hope there's somebody else we ought to call on at this particular time. Des Barnes. Des Barnes. Yeah, well, he's been on his own, of course. On his own. Well, thanks for coming. I've not got to get a crash at parties. I believe Jim McDonald's here. Oh, yeah, he is. He's just there. You looking Thank for me, Percy? Yes. Yeah. A bit of trouble at your house. Trouble, eh? Really? Oh, 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 no, it's not them. Somebody's put your back window in. <laughs> Wonderful Christmas this has been. Salted in me own grotto. All down to the police station like a common criminal. I mean, do I look like a shoplifter to you, Norman? No, Reg, you do not look like a burglar. Thank you. A bent accountant, maybe, or a golf club steward who's embezzling the green fees. I'm not in the mood for jokes, Norman. No. He was joking. Christmas. What a Christmas dinner. Chickens like leather, no chipolatos, no stuffing, no strips of bacon, and above all, no gravy. I forgot the granules. Well, you don't need gravy granules to make gravy, Norman. Have you got our chicken with giblets included? I did. I think. Yeah, I did. Well, with those giblets, you just go like... You did take them out of the bird, I trust, didn't you? Well, uh... Oh, look, it's not my fault. I've had a lot on my mind, haven't I? I've been worried about Angie. I mean, how can she prefer a philistine like Des Barnes to me, eh? Wait, you're not going? Upstairs, I'll be a minute. All right. Well, Ella, I'll wait here then. Okay. Oh, Derek, Mavis. Uh, 
<laughs> well, we, we just thought we'd call and wish you all the best. Uh, compliments of the season and all that. Yes, well, that is um, nice. That's very nice. Oh, oh it's just a neighbourly gesture. And what are neighbours for, after all? <laughs> yes, well, sometimes you wonder, don't you? But um, that's very nice. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you could have had some champagne if you'd come earlier. Have you got through the full bottle? Well, once you start, there's no point in stopping, is there, Mib? Des, it, it's not good to drink alone, you know. Derek, I am so sorry. I was just going to offer you one, honestly. What would you like? A oh, sherry? No, no. No, no Des, when, when Derek said that about drinking alone, he wasn't asking for a drink himself. Mavis, I am so, so sorry. I'll get you one as well. No, a sherry, all right? No, no, that's not what Derek meant. Well, yes, thank you. A sherry would be very nice. Hi. Angie, baby, what are you drinking? All the champagne's gone. Well, I'll have anything. Having a nice Christmas? Oh, yes, yes. Pleasant, but very quiet. Yes, quiet, but very pleasant. Des, didn't realise you'd got company. No, if we've come at an inopportune moment. At what moment? Uh, inopportune? No, no, Mave. Opportunity knocks as far as I'm oh. concerned. There you go. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Well... Here we were, Angie and myself, all alone. But now, well, quite a party, isn't it? <sighs> this is nice. This is very nice. We aren't going to ring the police, I hope. Yeah, there's no point, Liz. Come on, Jim. Like Andy says, we know who did it. These lads Steve thinks are his pals. Yeah, the pals he's that scared of, he won't even come out of his own home. That's enough for that, son. Now, look, if you know who they are, you've got a citizen's responsibility to report them to the police. Uh, well, it's one thing known, Percy, it's another thing proven. it. Young Steve knows, but he's not saying anything. Oh. Are you going to tell me he's just, he knows who these lads are and he's going to stand by and watch them smash your house up? Well, they've been brought up peculiar then, that's all I can say. Well, if that's all you've got to say, Percy, you may as well shut up. I'll thank you for me talk. She's always well turned no out. Oh, thanks, Ivy. Hey, she's <laughs> one now, you know. We're birthday yesterday. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Christmas Eve yes. last year, I'll never forget that. That's when this little missus <laughs> come into the world in the back of my cab. Oh, that's right, right, yeah. That reminds me, Don. Did you ever get, get that cuff there? I know, Don, I bet you didn't. Did give you? Him, give him. You don't think I put clock on for you. Well, knowing these yeah. you probably didn't get paid. Oh, yeah. Don't you want the paid. clock? Uh, yes, um... <laughs> Yeah, come on. Next, oh, yeah, uh, Rose is time usually, already. Yeah. She's usually in bed at this time, but trust her, you know, she had three and a half hours sleep this afternoon. I don't know what time I'll get her down <laughs> tonight. I shouldn't worry, love. Babies go to sleep <laughs> when they want to, not when you want them yeah, to. Yeah, right. <laughs> Anyway, Don, uh, come on, we'll get off home and let these youngsters have a bit of time on the roof. Ah, all right, a couple of hours slumped in front of the telly, eh? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> bye bye, Gail, and your house is love. Yeah, all the best, love. Yeah, all right then. Well, I'll yeah. see you out then. See you okay? Bye. 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 She behaved herself lovely there, I this thought. This time, yes. It changes nothing, Martin. Oh, what's up? Ivy. You know, she and Don were moving. Mm. Well, now we've moved in across the road. Ah. She's staying put. I don't care what you say, Martin. We're off. This house goes up for sale again next week. In my day, if a lad had done what that Steve MacDonald did, his father had taken his belt off and knocked some sense into him. Yes. Then when the lad grew big and strong enough, he'd have given his father a good hiding and slung his hook. I mean, it wasn't all roses, you oh, know, Oh, you can say what you like. There wasn't half the crime of there is today. A woman can't walk the streets on her own now. That's true. You'll see me on, won't you, Percy Lowe? Eh? Well, I won't be frightened if I'm with you. Oh, you'll be all right. You know, oh, really, Mr Sugden? It's the least you can do. All right, all right. Go and get your coat, then, but I'll tell you this. No linking. Hey. It might be icy, I'll have to link you then. Well, it's not icy. <laughs> Thank you very much for a lovely Christmas dinner. I do appreciate it. Oh, no. After all, it is Christmas, and it does come but once a year. Very good, too, in my opinion. <laughs> well, I must say, I'm glad your husband took himself off to foreign parts, because it brought you and me back in touch again. And that's got to be good. For me, anyway. Well, that's nice, Dad. Yeah. You know, it's like old times. And I tell you what, you are looking better than ever. How your eyes are going? <laughs> Nothing's going. It's all in working order. Oh, uh, they all said that. 
Are you sure you've had enough to eat? Yeah, yeah, plenty. That's smashing. Well, I'm glad we were able to share it with you. Do you know what I fancy after a meal like that? Go on. You. That's what I fancy. Come on, what do you think I am? And after dinner, Mint? <laughs> oh, I think you're a desirable woman. A highly desirable woman. Hey, come on, Des. Be good. Oh, but I am good. Very good. Or had you forgotten? A nice Christmas present this is. Jim, is it worth giving this to the police for fingerprints or anything? No, I doubt it, love. Sorry, there's no great mystery about it through it, is there? One of Steve's pals, or one of the blokes that Steve reckons are his pals, that is. Which one threw it? Well, how do I know? I didn't see him, did I? And anyway, it isn't my fault all this happened. It wasn't me that grasped on him. Grasped? Don't use that sort of talk. It's thieves' talk. You know, I'm sick of everybody picking on me. Picking on you? Are we picking on him, Vicky? You tell him what you think. Well, at school, if somebody tells tales, it's the worst thing you can do. Everybody hates you. Mm. Well, this isn't school, is it? I don't know. Must be quite an education for you, this lot. Your granddad never liked you being friends with Stephen Ander, did he? Looks like he was right. Oh, come on, Bet. Don't go all coy on me. It's not your style, love. Oh, Des, stop it. Don't spoil things. <laughs> Spoil things. This is what it's about, love. Look, you never played bashful in the old days. It's not the old days, Des. And you weren't bashful when you called me on the blower and asked me to come and do your bedroom up. Now, let's go upstairs. No way. Pet, what are you doing to me? Des, I'm saying no. Can't you understand that? I'm a married woman. Oh, don't give me that. I used to be a married man once, remember? A long time ago, Des. <sighs> Look, cut out all this teasing stuff and let's go upstairs. Look, Des. I'm telling you for the last time, I am not going upstairs. All right, and down here, it's all the same to me. You can't start changing your mind now. Get away! <gasps> Get out! All right, I'm going. <laughs> Vicky! Vicky! More toast. Shall I make some more toast? Yeah, if you want to. What do you want, son? What are you asking me for? Eh? You ever listen to anything I say anyway? God, what a mess. Do you think I should work, Andy? I might need to go to the surgery. Yeah, give him another half hour. Hope you're proud of yourself. Well, it would never have happened if he hadn't gone to the police. He didn't. I did. Same thing. Oh, see, so Andy getting beaten up's got nothing to do with you, is that it, eh? Is that what you reckon? I'll tell you one thing, Liz. I'm not finished with this business, not by a long chalk. Well, what are you going to do? Well, for a start, I'm going to teach them lads a lesson they won't forget. Oh, no. Things are bad enough as they are without you going out for revenge. How you doing, son? Do you think you ought to go to the surgery? No, I'm all right, honest. Well, you don't look it. Do you feel up to some breakfast? Shall I fry some bacon? Let's have a look at you, son. I'm all right. Don't fuss. I'll be off to work, then. Yeah. Off you go. Sooner the better. How do I know he's doing now tonight? Because if he's told me once, he's told me... Don't worry, he'll be there. No, no, I won't say a word. Right, Who's that? A friend. Oh, I see. Oh. And not who you think. Oh, very hygienic. So? So, you could get a belly here. So? Get a belly here. I've already got one. In fact, a seasonal dose of food poisoning would be a welcome relief to the misery I'm feeling. You really are boring when you're feeling sorry for yourself. Well, it's easy for you to say so. Listen, so I'm going out with Des. You don't own me, Curly. We share a house, we're mates. Don't let's spoil it, please. All right, I've got the message. And you're free to go out with whoever you like. I'm not standing in your way. Oh, yeah, you want to go out with me? Oh, don't start all that again. Well, Christmas was bad enough. Tonight's going to be even worse. I suppose you're seeing the new year in with Des, Mr. Wonderful Barnes. What if I am? Living it up in some flashy night spots. Wrong. The Rovers, actually. We're meeting a couple of mates. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so there'll be uh, me, Des, you, and uh, Miss A.N. Other. What are you on about? I fixed you up. 
Who with? Who is she? I'm not telling, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, you'd better be. One for you, and one for me. Me? You are Miss Victoria Arden, are you not? Oh, it's from St Vincent. Mm, so's mine. Mind you, the only Vincent I know is definitely no saint. A joke, that, Vicky. It's from Grandad. Good old Grandad. Bit late, but never mind. Two envelopes and all. It's a wonder he didn't save himself a bob or two on postage. Darling Vicky, so sorry I couldn't be with you this Christmas, but looking forward to seeing you soon. All my love, Grandad. Oh, P.S. Keep an eye on Bet for me. Is that a joke, too? <laughs> you know, Alec. Hope you have a good Christmas. I'm counting the days till the rover returns. All my love, Alec. Tell you what, love. We'll give him such a welcome when he comes back, he'll never, ever want to go away again. Did he want to go on this trip? Well, yes and no. Did you want him to go? I did not. I wish he'd have stopped here. Do you? I do, of course I do. Why do you ask? Nothing. Anyway, he'll be back this time next week. A cup of tea and an echo cake, please. Want tea? Want Eccles cake? I hope it is a nettle cake and all, not one of these imitation things. I'll be selling with no currants in next. You know our motto? Your satisfaction is our pleasure. Well, I'm very pleased to hear that because I've been in a slice there last week. It was too flaky. I lost half of it on my plate. I shall let our suppliers know. 65p, please. There we are. I hear you had a merry you type Percy. Oh, yes, and who's been saying that? The Oh, Mrs. B, she's been blabbing us. I'm trying to forget that woman. Hello, person. Oh, no, what are you doing here? Hey, every time I turn round this Christmas, I get that same thing. It's like Marley's ghost. It must be fate. You're following me, woman. Oh, I'd say it was the other way around, person. You're following her. Oh, now, come on, I didn't even know she was here, did I? Hey, I'm standing in for her on my sedgwick. She's gone to Cotswold with Ken, the Senate and Natal together. Good luck to him. Good hey, luck. would you like to take me away, Percy? Take you away? You must be balmy. Send you away more like you want locking up. Oh, don't be such an old spoil sport. You and Phyllis would make a lovely couple. Yes, you tell him, love. He won't listen to me. Have you got a bag? I'll eat this in the park. What about your tea? Oh, you'll owe me one next time I come in when Mrs. Sedgwick's back. Well, is it okay? What's that? What do you mean? This. What is it? It's a spanner. Oh, you recognise it then? What are you on about? Have you used one before, have you? Well, of course I have. Not this morning, you haven't. I could undo this nut with my finger, Stephen. You know what happens if this nut comes undone, do you? It means the brakes fail. You know what happens when the brakes fail, Stephen, do you, hey? Yeah. Well, go on, tell us. Nothing I do is right for you, is it? Fair enough. So you reckon you did a decent job on this this morning, then? Well, on the rest of it, yeah. Oh, well, that's nice to know, eh? Very nice. Customer comes and picks his bike up. Then he gets killed because his brakes fail. But it'll be nice to know that you did a good job on the clutch, won't it? Well, you don't give me much encouragement, do you? I gave you a job. I put money in your pocket. But that's not good enough for you, is it, eh? Oh, no, you've got to be Jack the Lad with a load of stolen radios. You tell me what you've done to please me, Stephen. Everything I say, you twist. Everything you do is wrong, son. I mean, I'm just a bit up to here with you. So what do you want me to do, then? Just keep out of my sight, OK? Cos, listen, as far as I'm concerned, Stephen, you no longer work here, OK? OK. Compliments of the house. Oh, thanks, Bet. Hot job. You all right? Not bored, Rob? Fine. It's all right. You don't have to keep me company. Oh, you're all right. We don't get busy. Well, not for another half an hour, anyway. Hey, there's a fella on the phone from the brewery. Something about last week's spirits order. Back in a sec. So, what do you want for your dinner, love? Shall I save you a hot pot? Um, no, I think I'll get a sandwich, Betty. OK, lovely. Well, I'd better get back to the bar. Hello, Might be a good film on telly this aft. 
Have you looked? Get a video out if you want. I'll tell you what. Why don't you see New Year in, in the Rover's Bar? There might be a sing-song. Have you heard Jack Duckworth sing? Something to look forward to is that. That or Percy Sugden's farmyard impressions. I'm sorry, Bet, but I don't know what I want to do. Don't apologise, love. It's been a rough year, and the sooner it's over and done with, the better. Am I right? Oh, it's, it's just everybody trying to force themselves to be happy, you know, to eat too much, laugh too much, and spend too much. I know. I'll be all right once I'm back at school. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean it like that. I don't know. You've got your own problems anyway. I'll be all right. You know what I would like to do? Except it's too far away. Go on, tell us. I'd like to go for a ride. I haven't seen Saracen for ages. Well, why don't you do it? I have to change buses halfway. By the time I got there, it'd be dark. Take a taxi? No, it's miles. Oh, my treat. If you want to see Saracen, then that's exactly what you will do. Here. And when you've finished, ring from the stables for a taxi to bring you back here and I'll settle up at this end, all right? Right. Are you sure? I'll ring for your cab now. Oh, thanks, Bet. Hey, guess who called round last night? Alma. Oh, yeah. yeah. She seemed a bit down, actually. Mind you, it can't be much fun spending Christmas on your own. I thought she was coming round to yours. Yes, yeah, so did we. I don't think she could face anybody, not after being let down. Are you getting at me? No! It wasn't my idea for Ken to come towards you, know. It was his. Yeah, well, I suppose uh, she's afraid that you and Ken might be going together again. Uh, it's what Tracy wants, but she knows it is out of the question. Don't you mind them going to the Cotswolds? <laughs> they can go to Disneyland if they like. I hope they enjoy it. In fact, I hope they do get it together. Might help Tracy face up to reality. At the moment, she seems to think she can get the pass back just by wishing it. Because it's a stage most kids go through. Oh, not just kids, love. No, oh, that's just what I needed, Betty. My throat's as dry as dust. Oh, mm. oh that's better. Oh, been clearing out, have you? I've got to empty the premises by the end of the week. I'm just having five minutes break. Oh, what a nightmare. Where are you putting it all? Oh, don't ask. It's times like this I wish I had a garage. Mm. Or a skip. Still, I mean, it's very kind of people, isn't it, to give their old clothes to charity. Mm. But I do wish they'd wash them first. Pung a bit, do they? <laughs> do you know, I think I'll have a sherry to fortify myself. Oh, come on, Betty. I've <laughs> been here now. Hang on a minute. Not working, then. Uh, not unless it's an emergency, no. I hope we can afford it. I'll be paying you in washers this week. Oh, I hope not. It's cost me a fortune this Christmas. In that case, I'll treat you. <coughs> yeah? Betty, come on, please, love. Hang on a minute. I'll serve them, Betty. All oh, right. She's decided she wants to go riding. I'm just glad to hear her say she wants to do anything. Well, she does ride. It's not been easy for her. 77 people. Yes, Mike, what can I get you? A uh, large scotch and a pint, please, Ben. Coming up. How was your Christmas? Naughty but nice? <laughs> I'm not complaining. Glad to hear it. Broke a few hearts, did you? Ah, oh, that'd be telling. Yeah. <laughs> She's still in a state of shock, you know, Victoria. I mean, losing her parents and... Well, I mean, it's not been a very merry Christmas for her. I don't think Bet will have spent a lot of time with them. She's been too busy. Yes, she has. <laughs> Did you know about last night? Yeah. How's Andy? He'll live. I suppose you got the blame. Spot on. Who are you? Well, here's my taxi. Why? Where are you going? Other side of Manchester. You coming? What for? Don't ask questions, just get in.
that one. Oh, yeah. Oh. And there's our holiday home. So, if you don't believe me. spoken on by Ashley Courtney. <laughs> Apparently seafood is a speciality of the house, oysters in particular, so I won't be responsible for my actions. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, Mr. Barlow. Hello. Ah, oh, yes, double room on the first floor. Oh, thank heavens for that. I half expected to put us in separate rooms. How do you mean? Well, remember our last mini break in Paris. Eh? Would you like me to reserve you a table for the Hogmanay dinner dance? Most certainly. <laughs> and in the morning, a paper? The Independent. And I don't suppose you'll be requiring an early call tomorrow, will you? You suppose right. <laughs> pineapple rings are like cheese. Uh, pineapple, please. Listen, shall we turn the lights on? No. The house is supposed to be empty. Neighbourhood watch. We'll say somebody sees it at the telly's on. Well, we could shut the curtains when it gets dark. Mm. It must be a bit weird for you living at the Rovers after all this. Is it like living with Bet and Alec? Oh, it's all right, really. When they're both there. Do you not get on with Bet? Yeah, fine. It's just a bit awkward at the moment. It was a relief to get into that taxi and away from all the pretending. What pretending? Nothing. I bet your life's not so wonderful either at the moment. No, anything goes wrong in our house, it's my fault. We've run out of toothpaste, it'll be Steve. There's a tap store running, it'll be Steve. And all this stuff with Andy's just made it ten times worse. He's just on at me all the time. I, I don't want to see him anymore. Who? My mum and dad. I'm sorry, Vicky. I, I didn't mean that about my parents. Oh, it's all right. It's not that. Well, what is it? Tell me. Nothing. What did you mean about pretending? I think Bet's having an affair, and I don't know what to do. Bet? What am I going to say when Grandad gets back? Well, are you sure? Don't say anything. They were having a right old ding-dong the other night. Screaming, shouting a lot. I can't pretend I don't know. It's as if I'm betraying Grandad. I don't want to go back there. Well, don't. I've got to. Stay here. I'll stay with you. You can't. I want to. What about Beck? Phone her. Belinda. Come on, Curly, we're going to be late. I'm not going. Oh, don't be so pathetic. I am pathetic. Stop at all, then. My social life is dependent on the charity of others. Knickers. A blind date on New Year's Eve. I can see it now. Hello, number three. I'm Curly from Weatherfield. I work in a supermarket and I'd like you to fill up my trolley with a lot, a lot of goodies. She's not called Claire, is she? I'm not telling you. It's one of Des Barnes's practical jokes, isn't it? It'll be a fella in drag. Ha <laughs> ha! Very droll. It's on the level. How old is she? Wait and see. Is she good looking? As a matter of fact, she is. Well, that's it then, isn't it? There's bound to be a catch. She's dead keen to see you. Oh, so I know her then? Maybe. It's Vera Duckworth, isn't it? Victoria? Oh, she bumped into this mate of hers at the stables and got herself invited to a party. Oh, stop at night, is she? Well, Belinda's parents are there to keep an eye. Well, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd best be going. I told Martin I'd only be here now. Yeah, me and I was supposed to be working. Uh, Abby might be in later. Tell her I'll come back if I get a chance. Okay. So. okay. Oh, Bet. Listen, I know it's the busiest night of the year, but do you mind if I just pop home for half an hour? Something wrong, is it? Well, Steve's been missing all day and I'm starting to get a bit worried. Oh, you get off. Look, if the worst comes to the worst, I'll get Angie to help out. You sure you don't mind? Is that the phone? Should I answer it? No, I'll get it. Oh, she's not coming, is she? There's plenty of time. Relax. Maybe she's just forgot a Zimmer frame. Yeah, stop him. Well, at least if I've sat on my own, I won't be the laughing stock. I'm off. No, stop, Kelly. Don't move. Stay right where you are. Guess who? Have you missed me? Raquel, what are you doing here? What do you think I'm flipping doing? I'm waiting for you to buy us a drink. 
Oh, thanks, Belinda. The same to you and all, love. Everything going all right, is it? What do you mean she's supposed to be with you, isn't she? Come on, stop winding me up. Put her on so I can wish her all the best. Are you not having a party? And have you not seen her all day? Lagany's changing, love. I can't do it. Look, get Daz on. Daz Greenwood. The phone's right next to the record. Uh huh. Hi, right, mate. Listen, it's Andy. Is Steve there? Well, have you. No, no, I'm not coming round. Have you seen him? No, oh, okay. Any news? Yeah, right. Well, no. has he got his number then? All right. Okay, see ya. Bye bye. He said Jerry might know where he is. Shall I go and get Steve's diary number? Yeah, might be yeah. What exactly did you say to Steve this morning? Nothing much. I just told him to keep out of the way from under me feet, that's all. You know what's happened, don't you? He'll have been too afraid to come home. And then lads will have found him. God knows what state he's in. It will not be as bad as that, love. Could be lying half dead on some waste ground. Jim, phone the police. Tell him he's missing. Look, Liz, quite frankly, I don't think they'll be interested in him. They wouldn't waste their time. Come on, let's have a dance. Go oh, in a minute. Enjoy the meal. Terrific, isn't it? Oh, I'll tell you what. In the morning, late morning, how do you fancy going to stow on the world? It's unbelievably pretty. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine by me. If you'd rather do something else. No, no. You sure you're all right? You just seem a little quiet, that's all. I haven't upset you, have I? Please tell me if I have. No, 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 honestly, it's um, just me. Look, about Christmas, I did it for Tracy, not Deirdre. What have I said? What is it? Nothing. Look, believe me, honestly, I'd rather spend Christmas with you. Oh, if only you had. I wish you had. You know, I really do. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, why don't we just forget about Christmas? I can't. You must. Nothing happened between me and Deirdre. Scout's on it. It's not your Christmas I'm talking about. It's mine. Mike came round. I don't believe it. You didn't invite him? No, no. I didn't ask him, he just came round. Blasted nerve. But he knew where I was. I hate him, Ken. I really hate him. What happened? I'm sorry, just please forgive me. <sighs> you went to bed with him. Why? I don't know. I just just felt vulnerable, that's all. I suppose it's because I was on my own. Oh, so it's my fault. Look, no, look, I, I'm, I'm not blaming you. Look, so where are you going? I just want a few minutes on my own. Before I do or say something I might regret later, I think I'm entitled to that, don't you? Of course you are, but just please, just please forgive me. You won't be long, will you? First footing, see the new year in with us. Stay with us for TV's best New Year's Eve party. We've got the comedians, we've got the fans, we've got the film. Oh. And we've, yeah, well, come on, no, let's not, open it. It's not as easy as that, you know. a long time, actually. Thank you. Hope to see you again, sir. Bye. Happy New Year.